flat to wear. I have a couple of things I've not worn yet. We're well, not round here. What are you wearing? Eh? To the niece's party. Oh, let's see. Well, is Sir Wester possibly a lampshade? I've not put my foot in it, have I? I mean, not taking it for granted. She has invited you. Yeah, she has. Not sure I'm going. Somebody's got to keep pub open. Well, I know, but it probably won't get going till we chuck out. And then again, I'm not sure I'm in the mood for parties anymore. I never thought I'd hear myself saying that. Not so long since I'd bit first in, last out. Carried home on a door like as not. Anyway, we'll be at this, do. Same people I see leaning on my bar most nights a week. Well, you never know. Hey, there might be somebody new. You might meet Mr. Wright. I've met him, Cock. Seven or eight times, if anybody's counting. Well, it's never too late, is it? I mean, in my opinion, it's quite right what they say. You're never too old for romance. I know your heart's in right place, Raquel. So I'm not going to clout you. No, you go to Denise's do. Have a good time. Des going, is he? I couldn't say, really. Don't bother me whether he does or doesn't. You see, if I could still tell lies like that and keep a straight face, I might feel like going. But as it is, I think Denise could do with a few happy smiling faces round her. Whereas me... I think if somebody said a kind word, I'd probably burst into tears. Sorry I'm late. I had a bit of a problem at home That's this okay. morning. OK. I did try and phone you, actually, to tell you I was going to be what late. What time? About eight? Oh, it was you, was it? Yeah. Uh, I was in the bath. Anyway, happy birthday. Thanks. Where are your other cards? Oh, you must have had some. Yeah, I have. I just haven't got round to opening them, yeah? So laid back, you. Can't wait to open anything I get. Well, to be straight with you, Fiona, I can't help wondering if there's something nasty in one of these. From whoever it is who's getting some sort of kick out of it. Yeah, I yeah? never thought of that, sorry. No, it's me. I'm starting to get frightened of my own shadow. Which is just what he wants, I suppose. I think it is a he. It must be, mustn't it? I don't know. It could be a woman, someone who's jealous of you. Well, I don't know. Oh, to hell with it. Come on. Let's open these. Does it seem all right? Mm -hmm. I tell you this, though, Fiona. If I find out who it is who's badgering me, they'll not know what's hit them. Better let me do the talking. All right. Why? Because you'll only get their backs up, that's why. I won't. I promise. Look, that little lad means as much to me as he does to you. You know that. Morning. Hiya, Don. And many of them. Happy birthday and all that, eh? Oh, thanks. And thanks for your card. How did you know it was my birthday today? I don't remember telling you. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I don't know. Uh, I heard that you were having a birthday party tonight, so I suppose I thought, well, today's the day. Oh, I see. And you're coming tonight, I hope? Well, uh... If I'm invited. Good. I'll count you as definite then. Oh, and I invited Ivy, by the way. Are you serious? Yeah. Why not? I've invited all my neighbours. That's your daddy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh. Let's have a look. Let's see who's there. Oh, there's Ivy. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Vera. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. That's good. Hello, Tommy. He's looking well. I can see your granny's taking very good care of you. Do you mind if we come in? There you go, love. Hey, are you going to Denise's party tonight, then? Mind your own business. Oh, why? Has she asked you? I thought she'd ask everybody. You've got visitors round your place, your in-laws. Lee's his mum and dad. I wonder Ta what they want. i better get round there, haven't I? Uh, Bet, I need to nip home for... Can you spare me for ten minutes? Well, I'm going to struggle through without you, Sumbro. Oh, Tyler, I'll be. I bet you're the only chap round here that's had a poem wrote about him. I wouldn't be knowing. Hey, it's a wonderful compliment, Mr Sugden. I'd be thrilled if somebody wrote a poem about me. But then again, you see, to write a poem, I suppose you have to have the, um, the inspiration, do they call it? Inspiration, my eye. I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's only throwing a few words together. That's all a poem is. That's all you know. Could you write a poem about me? Certainly I could. Oh, I'd love to see that. I know you would. That's why I shan't be doing. 
Excuse me. I'm your brother, Granny. And this is your granddad. He is looking well, isn't he, Jeff? Aye, he is. <laughs> now then, Jack. Hi. How are you? We uh, thought we'd pop over and uh, have a look at you. Hey, you have to make yourself comfortable. Sit down. What about a cup of tea, Vera? Oh, no, no, it's all right. Don't go to any trouble. We just wanted to see little Tommy. Ah, uh, well, do you want to hold him for a minute? Oh, please. Mm. You are a bonny lad. <laughs> you know, I see our Lee's in him more and more. <laughs> Aye. Well, uh, we thought we'd come and see you to ask if you'd like to come to us for Christmas. What, what do you mean? Uh, both of us, me and Vera, as well as, well as Tommy. Yes, and you'd be very welcome. We've got the bed, so there's no need to stay in a boarding house this time. Hey, well, I suppose I could get a couple of days off from the Rovers. It'd, it'd be a nice trip, that, yes. Well, thanks, I was saying, but we've made plans, yeah. Yeah, but nothing ironclad, Vera. I mean, it'd be lovely a couple of days out in Blackpool. Look, I know we've sprung it on you, Vera, but it would be a real family Christmas for Tommy, wouldn't it? All his relations together. Aye. Yeah, well, like I say, we, we've already made arrangements, you know, to have a nice family Christmas together. Because I told me his dad's coming home, you see. Oh. I see. Well, I mean, you're hardly likely to invite him over to Blackpool for Christmas, are you? I mean, you didn't even want him in family. Well, I mean, we hadn't thought. I mean, we didn't realise that your Terry would be coming out. Yeah, you can say it. it's all right. Yeah, he comes out on the 20th. You see, we're going to have a lovely family Christmas together. Tommy with his daddy and me and our Jack. <laughs> Come on, Doreen. We did our best. Oh. I mean, you, you can always pop over and, and see the little lad, can't you, can't they, Vera? Well, I don't know, do I? It's up to our terrier when it's Tommy, see? I mean, it is hardly likely to want to mess about with them mm. lot, is it? That called him yeah. trash and rubbish. Doreen! told you what had happened. You were right. It was a waste of time coming. Well, I don't know. They're letting Milado out of prison. Now, that's something we didn't know. I didn't mean to come round here and mourn. I'm sorry, Liz. Hey, you feel free to moan as much as you want. Anyway, look on the bright side. At least Tracy's back home with you. Yeah, I should be glad of that, I suppose. I just wish she hadn't dragged her boyfriend back with her, though. The trouble is, I mean, she's only 16. I just can't think of her as old enough to do whatever she thinks she'll do. And if I start laying the law down, she'll be away with him. I know, it's difficult. Even worse with a daughter, I suppose. I don't know why, really, but... When Steve and Andy started seeing girls, or, oh, to be more accurate, when I realised they were seeing girls, it's a bit of a milestone. We tend to think it's inevitable, really. And you even think, well, the proper lads, you know. <laughs> they grow up quick, Deirdre. Too damn quick. But how can you stop them? If you suddenly come down as the stern mother, you'd get no support. You'd be looked on as if you came from another planet. It's very difficult to keep on fighting when everybody else has surrendered. I just don't want to see her get hurt. I don't want to see her life ruined. Well, she's bound to have boyfriend. I wish she hadn't got this one. More than anything, you know, it's him. He's selfish, he's arrogant, he's a yob. And Tracy thinks he's Mr. Wonderful. And now they're in my house. And it's like sharing a caravan with a honeymoon couple. There you are, Doc. You're getting to be one of our best customers. Glad you're not feeding you. Ah, she's at work. I thought I'd grab her bike and get out on evening shift. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's nice to see you. Mm. Just shout if you want anything. Ah. You get off if you want. Get yourself dolled up for Denise's party. Oh, no, no, you're all right. We won't be getting there early anyway. Do you know, I don't think Ma wants to go, really. Mm. I think she baffles him, you know, that Denise. 
He says, there she is, you know, good-looking woman, got her own business. I mean, how come she hasn't got a fella? That's a very good question. Why hasn't she got a fella? Well, I don't know, do I? I mean, well, maybe there weren't enough to go around. Anyway, I think, uh, I think there was a chap who's after her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, just odd little hints that she's dropped. Only she gave me the impression that he was married, so she's not interested. Apart from which, she doesn't fancy him anyway. <laughs> Anyway, it's not worth talking about it anymore. I think we ought to go home. Jan? Yes, Laura? Uh, do you know what Sally and Kevin are having? Yes, it was me that served them, I. Well, could you, could you do the same again? Yeah, no problem. Now, why are you buying those two a drink? Well, because they haven't got much money to spend and they're in trouble and... Well, because they're nice people. Do you know, I bet Sally's worried sick about that court case. But Kevin is and all. As long as it doesn't interfere with his work at the garage? Oh, do you know... You'd all heart you. Thanks. Hiya. What then for? Oh, well, Mike got me to bring them over. It's just a little thank you for all the good work you've been doing in the garage. Oh, oh we're just going, actually. Got to pick Rosie up. She's had a take, Gail's. Oh, well, Gail won't mind. You know, just take your time. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers, Mr Baldwin. Thank you. Oh, cheers. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, he likes being flash in the pub, doesn't he, eh? Flashing his wallet around. You try getting another pound on your wages. Different story then, innit? Oh, he's not so bad, Kevin. You know, I bet he's already got someone lined up to do my job. If the judge sends me away next time I go to court. Don't talk like that, please. I'm praying, I'm praying every day that everything's going to be all right. Cheers, Ron. Many more of them. Aye, all you wish yourself, look. Yeah, happy birthday. Oh, cheers. cheers. Thank you ever so much. And just help yourself to uh, more drinks where you are. Better still get Jimmy to keep your glasses topped oh. up. Here I, natural barman, mate. <laughs> Where's Al? Oh, I'll give you three glasses. Council Can committee. Me do, me. <laughs> I said, oh, come on, give it to me and come to the knees. Is do have a few laughs, but you know. Oh, oh, hi, 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 come on, then. Then. Happy birthday. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, look, I'm glad to see I'm not first one here. I ain't been first one for arriving in these doors. No, I think you're going to find that you know most of the people who come here tonight. Lovely. What can I get you to drink? Um, Did Don not come with you? No, I've not seen him since this morning. He's not been at all since I got to work. Oh, do you know, that's <laughs> typical, <laughs> isn't it? It's just yeah. like they're my cool. husband. They're, they're only yeah. happy they're when they're working. Yeah. Good night, girls. Good night, boy. Part of it to Jack. Lock the cab up for the night, have you? I have, and I've chucked keys away. So keep air coming till I fall over. <laughs> Raquel, if you want to get off to Denise's do, it's OK, off you go. Oh, thanks, then. Drink up, come on. I'm all ready to be escorted. <coughs> uh, what about me? I mean, you said I could go early yeah, as well. It's OK, love. You get off and all. Oh, me and Jack can cope. Oh, Tarbet, thanks. Uh, so, Des, how do you fancy escorting me as well? Why not? Pretty girl on each arm. Makes me feel like a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? Oh, well, do you have to ask? Beef. <laughs> More like a balm cake, love. <laughs> I just grabbed me curl. Yes, yeah. so will I. Jacko, what's Tracy Barlow drinking? I don't know, boss. I didn't serve that over there. Hello, Tracy, love. What's that you're drinking? It's all a lager. You know better than that, Tracy. I drink it at home all the time. Well, you don't drink it in here. You're underage. It's stupid. I can do everything else. You could lose me my licence. No more, eh? Yeah, we're going anyway. Come to this party with me. Denise, what, man? All right. Are you going over at road later, Denise's do? No, I'm not. Didn't she invite you? She did. She also invited Ivy. Which is why I'm not going. Excuse me. Oh, 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 excuse me. Why not? Because. Well, she might ask me. It's difficult when you're madly attracted and girls fancy you. Oh, sugar. <laughs> you don't think she's attractive, do you? Tanya? Oh, yeah. Not half as attractive as you, though. Oh. Well, if she asks you, I suppose you can dance. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, thank you. Thank do you know, the main reason I came here tonight was to get away from my daughter and her obnoxious boyfriend. And here they are. Well, he doesn't look so bad to me, actually. Oh, maybe he's not. <laughs> 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 Hello, Tanya. Hello, T
know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know, Audrey. Perhaps I'll be taking a dislike to anybody, Tracy. It was crackers over. You know, the last time you and me had a chat and a dance together, ended up in the fight, so did. Oh, I remember. Neil tried to hit you. That's right, Neil. Up hitting Reggie Holds, rotten stairs still. Just shows you. Good can't come from evil, you know. Oh, it seems a long time ago. Where's Neil now, then? Neil is supposed to be in Australia. Well, I'm not so sure. Amen. Right. Oh, the good time. Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't book a taxi. Osborne, Coronation Street. Booked earlier on to go to the hospital. That's what I was told. No, I'm telling you, I never ordered a taxi. Well, somebody did. Do you ever think to yourself, just when you're dropping off to sleep, I'm not much bothered if I never wake up again? Night. Oh, good night, lads. Night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. No, that's not a thought I've ever had. Up to now, thank God. Well, you're lucky then. Oh, oh you've got more guts than I have. Why do you say that? Hmm. It takes guts, doesn't it? Soldiering on, going through emotions, not whimpering about what life's done to you when it's landed you. It's not that bad, Don. I'm not going to say I think life's a bowl of cherries. But what I will say is... life's a damn sight better than the one and only other alternative. Ah, yeah. oh, well, I'd agree with you, but... suddenly it comes home to you. If I weren't here all of a sudden, it wouldn't make a blind bit of difference to anyone. And nobody would be all that bothered. By heck, Don, lad. I thought I were bad. Just as well you're not going to that party. You'd uh, not exactly be in the mood for it, would you? <laughs> oh, do that again, will you, Pat? And uh, have one with me. I will. But these are on me. You know, you're a bit of a puzzle to me. Not so much you on your own, but you and Ivy together. Aye. Uh, well, it's a bit of a puzzle to me, I know. Chalk and cheese, you and her. Mind you, they do say opposites, and it works out all right, don't they? Yeah, well, it might work for some, but not for me and Ivy. We have a sort of deal, me and that. Um, do you mind if I say this uh, in, in confidence, like? If you want to. It won't go no further. Well, we have an arrangement. I don't leave home, and she don't drink herself to death as long as I stay. I see. Do you mind me asking? What the hell does either of you get out of that? <laughs> God knows. Ivy gets. Someone that looks like a marriage to them must live either side of her, and me. Well, at least I don't have Ivy dead drunk it gutter on my conscience. Any more washing up in here? Hey. Oh, Ivy! I wish you just forget the washing up. Enjoy yourself. But I don't mind watching up, and anyway, somebody's got to do it, haven't they? Excuse me. Oh. Anyone washing up? Right, I'm ready for home, you? No, I'm enjoying myself. Anyway, want to dance? Come on. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> you didn't realise I was such a lovely movie. <laughs> Jack, what can I say? I think your dance is nearly as good as your singing. Thanks, thanks. See, all as I need is a flight of stairs and a silver top cane. <laughs> There's no answer to that, love. Get it, eh? No. <laughs> 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 
Like a door's closed, and part of your life's gone forever. That's it. <laughs> Come on, you two. Last time I'm telling, I've got a bed to get to. It's not just you, you know. I've been feeling a bit like that myself today. Ah, oh, no, no, you're too young. Ah, uh, you're still a good-looking woman. Thank you. No. No, straight up, no cardiology. You're all right. But as me, I'm... Uh, I'm damaged, I suppose. Damaged beyond repair. It's all downhill from here to finish. It doesn't have to be like that. You have to fight it. All the way. Whether it makes sense or not. I'll just see these two off. Come on, the pair of you. Now, God bless. Good night. Cheers. See you some more. See you then, Matt. You might not think it, but I've really enjoyed talking to you tonight. Have another drink. Well, I thought you wanted to go to bed. You have to say that to get the ale cans out of here. Scotch suit you? Yeah, yeah, please. Anyway, it's true. I do have a bed to get to. Come on through to the house. Huh? Take your drink with you. way to stop yourself getting angry. All right. All you gotta do is make sure you don't get sober. At least that's what my mother said anyhow. See, if you're just sober up enough to get on with what you're doing then, when you hear that sledgehammer start up in your head, you just tap yourself up. How long did you keep that up for then? Oh, it's years and years. I mean, you're all quite cheerful, you know. A bit unfocused, if you know what I mean. But anyway, you should try it. It's working wonders for me. Like hell. I stopped drinking hours ago. When all the other guests left. And you said you'd stay behind and help me tidy up. Do you remember? Oh! Blimey, you've got it bad, haven't you? Here, I'll get it. Hello? 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 Look, Andy, you're talking too quiet around much drunker than I thought I was. Here, can you hear anything? It must be for you, because I don't live here. 
Who did you want to say nothing to, me or her? Hello? This is Denise. I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to listen. All right? Are you ready? Ah! Is that what you want? With your pizzas and your taxis? Is that what you want? Screaming women? You're going in tomato juice. What? Bloody murder. It'll make you feel better. Raquel. Oh, come on. Let's go to a cabinet full of this stuff. I'll fix you one at my place. Come on. Do you have to do that, Fiona? Well, what do you want me to do, eh? To do it on screw top eggs, you know. Yes, yes, all right, right. You have to be ashamed of yourself, you, all night parties. You're a granddad now, you know. Yes, I know what I feel like, one and all. Anyway, you'd better stop in, you. Here. I'll do shopping. You can yeah. look after Tommy. Oh, I don't know that I'm up for that, love. Oh, you'll have to do. I want to go and buy his Christmas present from his dad. I don't want to spoil a surprise for him. Spoil a surprise? The child had not two yet. He won't know what the hell's going on. Well, you don't know that for certain, do you? And I want to see his little face light up Christmas morning when he sees his dad. Yes, all right. Ta love. Hey, I tell you what I've got. I've got some of this, uh, this sherry. I got it for a Christmas trifle, but here, you can have it. That'll sort your hangover out for you. <laughs> oh, no, you don't want to be messing about with tomato juice and all the rest of that. There's only one cure for a hangover. The Prairie Oyster. Oh, confess a fried breakfast. No, you don't fry it, cock. You sup it raw. Oh, blimey, that is effective. The mere thought of it has cleared my head completely. Oh. Come on. You'll be ready for anything after that. Excuse me. I'm just going to have one of my dizzy spells. Are you sure you don't want it? No, I haven't got an hangover. Tension. We all say that. Yeah, well, I had more trouble last night during the party. Somebody ordered half a fleet of taxis to my door. Oh, no. That sounds like the sort of thing a kid would do. Mm. And then I had this phone call this morning. A nasty one? Just silence. But that was worse, really. Like they were hoping to hear me cracking up. You want to get yourself a whistle, and the next time they try it, blow it down the phone at them. Then I'll be able to tell whoever it was, whoever was holding their ear. But I thought you said it wasn't anybody local. You reckoned it was one of your exes? It could be anybody. Yeah, but I mean, all the neighbours were at the party. Not all of them weren't. Don wasn't, for one. Don Brennan? Mm -hmm. Now, I know I shouldn't be telling you this, but... Things between him and Ivy are not that great. Well, I think I heard something. Yeah, well, I made the mistake of letting him lend me some money, and now he's behaving like he's bought me. You don't mean... Oh, no. Not that. Couldn't be Don Brennan. Maybe. I wish he'd leave me alone, just the same. As if he stood the slightest chance. He's an old man, and if he's not careful, he'll wind up a dirty old man. Why? Why can't people just give up with dignity? I don't know, Cock. You can get fairly desperate, you know. <laughs> Even at my age. Yeah, but not that desperate, eh? <laughs> oh, I know I shouldn't be saying all this. I've got to get through this somehow. <sighs> I am not going to let this get to me. So, we've 
Well, Denise is busy at the moment. Can I help you at all? No, thanks. I can wait. Well, she's busy all morning and most of the afternoon. Well, if it's just a trim... It's got nothing to do with my hair at all, to be honest. <laughs> Look, it's just a business thing. Well, is she expecting you? Because she's packed out and... Well, to be honest, if you're a rep, you're wasting your time. Uh, I'm not a rep. Uh, is there a problem? Is there any way that we can talk? Excuse me? Inland revenue? What do you want? Well, this is embarrassing. Um, it's been suggested that you've not been filling your returns in correctly. Suggested by who? Well, I know how this is going to sound. We've had an anonymous letter. What? Yeah, it often happens. There's very rarely anything in it, but we are obliged to follow it up. An anonymous letter? Yes. It usually turns out to be a neighbour or a employee with a grudge. Look, it's none of my business. I mean, you probably know who your enemies are. No, I don't. But I'm going to make sure I find out. It's time to barbers, you know. There's hardly anything here to cut. Ah, well, they do say it grows thicker, don't they? And I, I want him to look right for when his dad comes home. Oh, his dad's been away, has he? Aye, aye. You know, his grandma will kill me when she sees us. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, no, I think it looks great. I think it looks like a little lad now, you know what I mean? <laughs> you should keep a lock of his hair. Do you know for his baby book? Oh, aye. Yeah, good idea, that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Don't I know you from somewhere, cop? Uh, Sally Webster looks after my son. Oh, aye, that's what it is, eh? First haircut. Uh, <laughs> Joe works for the Inland Revenue. Oh, does he? Great. Uh, right, well, I better go off to work then. But, but when I say work, I mean in the house looking after him. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, ta, ta ta Come on, Tommy, lad. It always has that effect. Hmm. I should think so, too. Thanks. Listen, your books are fine. They're a bit vague, but that shouldn't normally matter. I'm sorry you've had to put up with all this. Mm. So am I. Excuse me. Just one moment. Would you cover your ears, please? <whistles> what was all that about? Uh, that was whoever tipped you off. Oh, right. Well, you've certainly given him something to think about. Yeah, well, they've given me something to think about too, mind you. Like, was it just coincidence that they rang whilst you were here? Or did they know? They've taken over the whole house. I feel like the aged parent in the corner, like Uncle Albert. I don't think you'd ever be like Uncle Albert, Deirdre. No, actually, I wouldn't mind being like Uncle Albert. At least people noticed him. This pair make me feel as if I'm invisible. You know, he once proposed marriage to somebody when he was nearly 80. <laughs> Talk about the triumph of hope. Alice Pickens, the lady was called. I think she was older than he was. Anyway, she said no. Well, good for her. At least I know when to call it a day. What do you mean? Well, I've had enough chances, Kem. I think if I was the sort who was going to make a marriage work, I'd have done it by now. Well, I wouldn't say ours didn't work out exactly. And even if it didn't, it was more my fault than yours. Oh, sorry. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, no, come in. I was just going to make myself some dinner. <sighs> Mind if I join you? Where did you get the front door key? Tracy had it cut for me. A present. You don't mind, do you? Well, actually... Just to make a cup of tea. Anyone want one? Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. You know, I really admire you two. Is that right? Yeah, when my mum and dad split up, they never spoke to each other again. If they needed to communicate, they made us do it for them. You two are so... civilised, you know. That chapter of your life's over and you've just, um, 
moved on, I suppose. You got company, haven't you? I don't want to be in the way or anything. Are you sulking? No, why should I? I don't know. Not your ex, then, is it? Robert, are you joking? He's just someone from work. Would you like to meet him? Uh, well. Great. My ex couldn't stand me having male friends. He used to get dead jealous. Watched me like a hawk. Drove me mad. It's so immature, all that. Don't you think? Definitely, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. And that. I knew it would be different with you. You're more confident, you know? So, how did you know I was here? It's just a guess, really. And uh, why didn't you bring me any flowers? Well, I didn't want you to think I'm smothering you or anything, you know? I heard this great phrase on the TV the other day, serial monogamy. Hardly anyone expects to find themselves in a relationship that's going to last a lifetime anymore. People move on. Oh, is that what you're going to do to Tracy when you finish with her then? Move on. No, no, no. Craig's not speaking personally. He's talking about society as a whole. I mean, the family's held up as a sort of model for society, and the family's cracking up. Well, what are we going to do? You see, I don't think the family ever really existed. Not in that two kids, two parents sort of way. I mean, uh, me and my cousins were practically brought up by my grand. It's a lot looser then. It was even looser when I was a kid. There was always old people around. And if you think about posh families, they send the kids away, don't they? Yeah, yeah, I thought about that. That's very interesting. No, it's not. Look, Craig, I asked Ken back here because there was something I wanted to discuss with him and I'm due back at work in ten minutes. All right. Uh, yeah, I should have thought. Yes, you should. And while I think about it, yes, I do mind you having a key to my front door. All right. Uh, sorry again then. See you soon, Mr. Barley. Please, it's Ken. Well, he was surprisingly bright. I, mean, I wonder why he didn't turn at school when you think of Andy MacDonald. I don't want to talk about Andy MacDonald. I don't want to talk about Craig. I don't even want to talk about Tracy. I just want to talk about me. Just for a minute. I just want to talk as if I still existed, as if I still mattered to somebody. I'm sorry, I should have been a bit more sensitive. Why would you have to be sensitive? Why wouldn't you want to talk to me? Well, I do want to talk to you. I was just surprised by him, that's all. I'm sorry, Ken. I shouldn't be taking it out on you. Why would you want to talk to me anyway? Oh, look, don't do this. Of course I want to talk to you. I wouldn't have come round here if I didn't. Look, I'm sorry, I just handled the whole thing rather badly. I'm probably not used to company, that's all. I shouldn't be crying on your shoulder anyway. <laughs> You're the last person whose shoulder I should cry on. No, that's not true. I told you, I'll always be there for you. No matter who else comes and goes, you'll always have me. Have you seen better, love? Yeah, she's out the back. What were you up to last night? What? I've been putting two and two together. What do you mean? Well, I spend my time none of your business or anybody else's. That depends, doesn't it? Depends on what? What are you talking about? I'm talking about fleets of taxis to people's doors. I'm talking about tax inspectors turning up unannounced and frightening my customers away. What? And you think that... <laughs> Look, what do you take me for? I take you for a bored, frustrated old man. Oh, do you know? Well, that is just where you were wrong. You see, I can have my fun just as much as you can. I can have a good time. In fact, I was having a very good time last night, probably a better time than you were. Oh, hiya. Uh, you rang me? In the back. Now. Oh, you can't leave me here all on my own. This'll not take a minute.
Well, I hope it's your Jack you've got in there, Vera. I know it's late. I'm sorry. It's all my fault, you know. I went Christmas shopping for our Tommy. Anyway, can I leave this behind? Barney can bring it home with him. I don't want to spoil the surprise. As long as you go and get him now. Oh, all right, lovely. Hey, well, can I have a quick drink? Do you know it was murder on that bus? No, you cannot, and that goes for all of you. Towels are on till Jack oh, gets here, OK? Oh, I'm oh. sorry I'm incapable. And you can all stop clinking your glasses. What's the idea of ringing me at home? Do you want Abby to find out or what? I don't want anyone to find out. Anyone at all. Do you hear? What's that supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean Denise. Oh, I. What's she been saying, then? Nothing she hasn't already said to your face. She's straight as Denise, which is more than I can say for you. It's a pack of lies. I hope it is. Look. What happened between us last night? That was a one-off. Yeah, I know that. I thought it was something that happened between two grown-up people. Two lonely people. We both knew where we stood. And neither of us was going to come to any harm. Yeah, well, you were right. No, I wasn't! I don't know where you stand on. I don't think you do yourself, all this Denise business. Oh, she's wrong. Blimey, if you're looking for someone with a grudge against Denise... Oh, I know that! It's not her we're talking about. It's you, Don. You're lost. You don't know where you're going. Don't you think I know that? Look, I know that you've had a bad time recently, but you've got to deal with that. Oh, aye. And how do you reckon I should do that, then, eh? Grow another foot, start life all over but leave Ivy out, or just take a shortcut into the next life and hope it's a better one. Don't talk like that, Don! Well, what would you do then, eh? I don't know that, Cock. But I do know you don't take it out on other people. Not Denise, not Ivy, and most definitely not me. Because if you try it, I'll be back on that phone to Ivy. And this time I won't pretend that all I want's a cab. Come on, Ragnar, look at the No, 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 I've told you, no. Come on, Mr. Baldwin. Hey, Atta, he comes home for Christmas. Oh, great, well, wishing good luck for me. Oh, Tom, but he ain't got a job to go to, you know. Have you got out? I certainly have got something for him. Yeah, yeah, a bit of advice. Tell him not to come bothering me for a job. He'd be well, wasting his time. That's very Christian, isn't it? Eh? My son gets out for good behaviour. I'd like to see you behave yourself in strange ways. You can't even behave yourself on your own doorstep. Large no, Scotch Rackle. Well, you be lucky. No chance. Well, what's that? Nice to see you, Terry. Your mum told us the good news about you being out for Christmas. Congratulations. Look, don't mess me about, Jeff. You haven't been near this place since I got sent down. You're not here to offer your congratulations. No, I'm not. I'm here to put something to you. A deal, if you like. A proposition. Yeah, there we are. Come on, they're paying for your blood over there. <laughs> Hey, I told him it was my fault. And don't forget to bring the present back. Right. Where have you been cutting his hair? Yeah, well, I, I took him for haircuts. I know it's a bit short, but it'll grow back, won't it? I like yeah. it. It mm. makes him look all grown up. You know, that's just what I was thinking. It looks like a proper little lad now, doesn't it? <laughs> What's up, love? Well, it's all grown up. Out to me so much. Oh, I will. I'll be home at Christmas. We'll be a real family again, eh? Yeah, you get to thinking, well... God thinks we're the right pigs here at first time and they've given us our Tommy to give us a second chance. <laughs> Aye. You know your mum and dad's house is no place to bring up a baby. And yours is, I suppose. Well, we've got more space. Big garden. Sea air. There's more to life than money. No, but it can make a difference, all other things being equal. 
could make a big difference to you. How do you mean? Well, you've had a setback, Terry, being shut away in here. When you come out, what you need is an head start, not an handicap. And with the best will in the world, that's what little Tommy would be, ain't it? Now, if you do things my way, I could take that handicap off you and give you an head start in its place. What sort of head start? Well, figures can be negotiated, but a lot of money. An agreed amount to be paid every year till Tommy's 18. It could make a big difference to you. It could make all the difference in the world. It could give you the chance to make yourself into the kind of dad young Tommy would be proud of. there, Craig. I mean, why aren't you at work? Well, it looks like I've got the day off, wouldn't you say so? You tell me. Of course, appearances can be deceptive, but in this case, they're not. And Tracy? Tracy? No, I can't see Tracy. I mean, does she take the day off as well, like last time? Mm, you tell me. I assumed when she went to work that she was uh, going to work. And does she develop a headache at 10 o'clock and come back home again? No, she wouldn't come home because of her headache. She'd take an aspirin or something. I'm going to work now. If that's what you want from life. Are you going to sit there all day? I'll tell you what I want from life, and that's that you should do something for a change. I suggest you kick off by making tonight's tea. Wollstone Hume. W-O-L. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry to bother you, only... I wanted to check that you'd boot me for the, um, Duffield International Christmas function this afternoon. Oh, <laughs> you didn't mind me checking. <laughs> All right. When will that be? Right, well, I'll expect it then. It's very nice of you, Clint. <laughs> Bye now. May I remind you that a minimum standard of behaviour is expected from all staff. A Christmas party is not an excuse for debauchery. He never said that. He already has. And while management hope that staff have an enjoyable party, a very dim view will be taken of unseemly behaviour or excessive drinking. Unseemly behaviour? What does he mean by that? Laughing, dancing, failure to say grace before eating a cheese straw. Oh, your management, you're supposed to be on his side. Who says I'm not? Are we allowed to talk? <laughs> Only if it's about customer relations or checkout operations. In particular, management intends to look carefully at reasons for absenteeism on the morning after the party. We believe it possible to enjoy the party without becoming ill through alcohol. Is it a party, Miss Fenwick, or is it a church service? Oh, very definitely a party. I understand there's going to be ice cream and jelly, and if you're very lucky, you get to play Hunt the Thimble. Hello, Mr Watts. Hello. You've uh, seen me notice then. Oh, yeah, very impressive, that. Good, good. And I hope it'll be acted upon. Might even be spat upon. Pardon? Oh, the staff are very glad you're in such festive spirits, Mr Watts. Oh, and they'd like to know, do they bring their own fruit juice? It's a very good assignment. Duffield International, you know. I am. It's bathroom fittings, plugs, taps, shower rails, lavatory seats. <laughs> International. Oh, hi. That's the nice. biking in my costume this morning. <gasps> well, costume. I should say gown. So, uh, how do you model plugs and taps? Oh, no, it's the Christmas party. The most essing. Seeing guests in, seeing them to the tables, and seeing things run smooth. Only thing I've to find in my own black tights. Right. I'm just so pleased that things are coming together modelling wise. It was old summer, didn't they? What's that? Well, I can't trust the telephone. I've been having old calls. Every time I get a job, you have to phone back and check it's genuine. What sort of hoax calls? Well, I did a job for a major international fashion house. When I got there, we were a fruit and veg shop. Do you know who's doing this? Oh, right, it's Tanya Pooley. Down the bar with me, you know. She's a very funny person, Denise. Is she? Well, I don't know what I've done to it. It's peculiar. 
Really? But, see, I don't like the top. But, um, I'm not sure she's nice. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's one in the eye for this, isn't it? International bathroom function. Oh, and they want me. Oh, dear. Uh, just a sec. Is that you, Mike? No. Who is it? Craig. Craig? It's the t-shirt place. I know you, don't I? I live with Tracy Bart. What do you charge for t-shirts? Well, it depends. On what? On uh, how many t-shirts you want, what um, your designs, and how many colours. A lot of factors involved. Yeah. And we can add to the equation the fact that you'll do them on the side without your boss knowing. Yeah, well, that's for me to know, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's for you to know, Steve. Let's just say you print some T-shirts that your boss knows about. Well, you must make less than when you print T-shirts he doesn't know about. Yeah, well, like I say, it's for me to know, isn't it? Yeah, so, basically, we can assume there's two rates. The rate I get through you and the rate I get through your boss. Now, one rate costs me more and you get less. The other rate costs me less and you get more. Guess which rate we're talking about, Steve? Thank you. He really seems to be thinking very enthusiastically about Christmas. Does he? Mm, he was in not so long ago talking about ordering turkeys and trimming up. Oh, I see. He yeah, was full of it for a change, which was very refreshing, because Mr Sutton can be something of a Jeremiah. But you won't quote me on that, will you, Emily? I'm sure I don't know what you mean, maybe. <laughs> well, people do mellow with age, and well, he seems to be really positively looking forward to the day. Well, perhaps he's had a visit from a long-dead meth sergeant rattling chains and turning into a door knocker. Hello, Vera. Have you got any bin bags? Uh, they have them in rolls, don't they? Yeah, bin liners. Are you clearing some it out? Because you'll need best part of a roll for your jack. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. How much have I? Uh, 85, love, please. Mm. No, I'm just going out my dad. Do you know how to clean flat out? Oh, that's sad for you, Vera. I know. It's a shame he didn't make it to Christmas. It's... It's so often the way. Yeah, could have seen his great grandson and welcomed out to the home out of prison. Never mm -hmm. mind. I'll see ya. See Bye. Ya. Sounds to me as if poor old Josh has timed it just about right. Excuse me. Uh, do you know where there's a print workshop round here? No, not round here, love. No. <laughs> it's on Coronation Street. The print T-shirts. <coughs> oh yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Um, you go out the door and you turn left. And then you'll see a turn off on the other side of the road. It's just there, past the garage. Right. Thanks a lot. OK. It can be an anxious time, can Christmas? Mrs Bishop clearly not put her mind to it. This time? Oh, I don't know. You turn round and it's gone. No, I'm going to get the turkey order. The pudding's been made a month. So if she gets in the stress about it, it won't be my fault. You never cause a stress, dear Percy. Well, if I do, it's not from badness. I mean, we all have rough edges we've got to rub along with. Yeah. Yeah, that's true enough. I mean, look at you. People have to buy drinks from you, but they stay pleasant. <laughs> this looks exciting. Mm. Oh, Raquel. Oh, I know what that is, then. Uh, Darth Vader coming half hour ago. I made a sign for it. I thought my time were up. <laughs> oh, she's so excited about this job. Oh, modelling work? What's she modelling? Bog seats? Excuse me, Jack. I'm just going out for two minutes, all right? I'm only the cellar man, look. Yeah. She seems quite hostile to Raquel. Jealous. What of? Well, they're like that, some women, aren't they? Maybe you haven't noticed. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's lucky yours camels don't have that problem. Mm, yeah. And, uh, on your own all day? Yeah, well, they get to make deliveries and that, you know. You could get up to anything here. Mm, yeah. Do you? Well, not as much as I'd like to. So, uh, do we go out for some dinner? Yeah, we could do, or, uh, get some in now, you know. Hmm. Could do. I mean, it's a good strong lock on the door, isn't it, you know? Yeah. What you got here, then, love? I just wanted to make sure you didn't get lost. See you, then. See you, Steve. Yeah, see you, then. Bye. 
on at number three this Christmas then, eh? You don't mean Mr Sugden? Well, he's been telling me all he's doing for you. For me? Mm, mine turkey's making puddings. I'm getting all this second-hand. Why have I heard twice this morning that he's buying a turkey? Well, he says it doesn't want to cause you any stress. He hasn't thought of moving out. Oof. <laughs> I didn't say that, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but she's only a step-grandma, isn't she? Yeah, but I never thought I'd see the day when Bet Lynch was a grandma. It just doesn't ring true, oh. does it? But you're a grandpa. And likewise. You'd never think I were old enough, would you? No, go on. How old would you say? Be honest. What? Yeah, well, listen, Betty, what I want to know is, what is it that brings Vicky back here every holidays? Is it Bet? Well, partly. But, I mean, we must assume that it's the boyfriend, really. What, Steve, um... Uh, MacDonald. That's it, yeah. Is that still going on? As far as I know, yeah. Rita, Mrs Sullivan. You, you made me jump. Oh, can I get you a drink? No. All right, uh, Mrs Bishop, would you like? No, thank you. All right, well, would you mind if I got one and uh, drank it with you? Well, actually, I'm just on my way back to the shop. All oh, right, well, perhaps I could stroll along with you then. Why? Well, let's just say it could be to your advantage. Look, are you back with this mooring of yours or what? <laughs> yes, I am, yes. Right, so you're not going to be asking me to go out or anything stupid? No, nothing like that, nothing like that at all, no. Right, well, you can walk back with me then. Right. But I'm warning you, any signs of Casanova, I'll shout for police violence. Goodbye. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Nice lunch. About what you would expect. All right, if we go for mine then. Yeah, of course. Who's due? Mrs Antrobus, but she's always late. Put your feet up. I might just... See you later. A Fiona. What? Don't be too long, will you? Do you want me straight back? Of course not, no, it's just... Well, there haven't been more phone calls, have they? Two over the weekend. Ten minutes, I'll get sandwiches. Raquel? Don't, Jack, please don't. Don't what? Hey, come on, we're not really just sneaking off with them showing us your posh ball gown. Please. Oh, now, come on, what's up? I know what it is. You don't like it, do you? Come on, love, this is not like you. You won't laugh. Promise. Why would I laugh? You look a picture. No. A sophisticated ball game with a figure like you've got. You're made for it. That's beautiful, Raquel. Tell me, is that what they wear to balls these days? <laughs> it's what they wear to sit on toadstools. Oh, well, trust you to see it. Trust you. Are oh, you off to Santa's grotto? Hey, do the little kids sit on your knee while you hand out balls? Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know something, Tanya? There's a funny side to you. <laughs> Come on, Jack. You to say anything, you know, if there's anything particularly you fancy. Incidentally, we're having real stuff and not that packet stuff. Yes. I've been hearing how you're shielding me from the rigours of Christmas. Oh, it's no trouble. I'll order a good-sized turkey to last us a week. We haven't talked about Christmas, Mr Sugden. And before you go making your plans and assumptions, we should. Well, I'm not planning for anything. The days is yours. I, I mean, I'm not going to intrude. No, I'll make the food, you know, the old shebang. You can do as you please. I mean, you can have a lie-in, you can go to church, you can watch the Queen, you can have your friend round, you know, whatever suits. You say you're not planning anything, and then you tell me what I'm to do. No, I'm saying I'll make the food, now else. You see? Well, you've got to have your dinner. I won't be here. Eh? This year's going to be very different, Mr Sugden. I'm working with Bernard on his Crisis at Christmas project. What? Through dinner? The crisis doesn't stop for roast turkey, nor even for the Queen's speech, strange to say. I shall be there all day, and what you do with your turkey and stuffing is entirely up to you. Well, I must say, I'm very disappointed. Well, it's nothing personal. You mean to say I've got to have my dinner? On my own. Well, that's up to you. Either invite someone round or order a smaller turkey. Look, I'm sorry, that sounds very harsh, but you have annoyed me, Mr Sugden. What the heck have I done? Well, wherever I go, I hear the plans you've got and all you're doing for me, as if I'm some delicate neurotic who can't manage to buy a box of crackers. 
Oh, thank you to remember, I've survived life alone for many years and there's nothing I'm not capable of doing for myself. Oh, unless I should need to make chips in the desert. In which case, I'll come and ask. This is very nice, Craig. She's surprised. Well, I am. I didn't know you had it in you. Yeah, it's that inverse sexism that says because I'm male, all I can do is open a can of beans. Don't make a big deal out of it. I'm complimenting you. I genuinely like the meal. Thanks. Mm, you've used herbs in the couscous. I always use herbs in the couscous. And this dressing? Yeah, it's a harissa dressing. A shame you won't be here at Christmas. I could use a cook. Who says he won't be? Well, I was just assuming. I mean, his parents. But he might not want to see his parents. What, you mean...? Well, it's a bit unfair to just assume, isn't it, Mum? I mean, what are you going to do? Chuck Craig out on Christmas Eve? Oh, don't be stupid. I, I hadn't even thought about it. What are you going to do, Craig? Shall I tell you something about Christmas? It's crap. Thank you for sharing that with us, Craig. Yeah, it's commercial, exploitative, sentimental. I don't get involved. Fine, but are you going to be spending it in this house? Mum, you're hassling. Well, I need to know, Tracy. Craig, I need an answer. Why? Why do you think? I've got a plan Christmas. So go ahead and plan it. Won't matter if I'm here or not. If I am, I won't get involved. I promise. Sixteen bin bags and five of them were rubbish. There were four bags of clothes, so I'll give them to Oxfam. And there were five bags of bedding, you know, sheets and that. We'll sissy took them. But do you know there were two bags and they were just full of bills and letters? All from Queen and that, were they? I don't mock, Jack. I'm not in the mood. It's been a very sad day. Do you know I'm worn out? I am. Now to value, then? <sighs> well, I kept a couple of things and sissy she took the toaster. But isn't it sad, Jack? Eh? Somebody's all life in 16 bin bags. It's not what you've owned, Vera. It's what you've been. Well, it had unrecognised half of them that Newman didn't know his blood were blue. Sad old man in the end, eh? Yes, yeah. yeah, sad old man. Mm. Do you know I looked through his letters, look, one from Royal. Anyway, I brought this back. Look, this one is mantelpiece. No, oh, I thought a lot about that, did Joss? Yes, it'll weigh down the racing post, that. Hello, I shouldn't wonder. You think it's worth something, do you? Well, Joss did, I know that. Fiona, you, you, didn't, you didn't really think there'd be letters from Royals, did you? I mean, not really. Oh, yeah, cos they have been in touch, you know. Who has? The royal family. Oh. Here, look at this. Hey, but be careful with it. It's an ashtray. I know it's an ashtray, but look at it closely. What does it say? A present from Windsor Castle. Say? Right. Well, time has not been wasted. Oh, my. Do you know, I've been on that cheese counter all day. Maureen, Maureen, I'm trying to tell you. Oh, do you know, I smell of cheese. I smell it when I'm in bed. Do you know, I dream of cheese. Maureen, and... Maureen. What? I have been to see Rita. Well, I hope that's not a confession, Reg. No, of course it's not a confession. Oh. I've been to see her about the house. High Bank Avenue? Yes, the same. And she was very reasonable. And I made my offer, which she accepted. And, uh, well, it's ours as soon as we can get through the paperwork. Reg, does this mean... Ta da Oops. Ding! Oh. <laughs> yes, it does, Maureen, if you'll have me. <sighs> hmm? You know what I'm going to say to you, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. we'll convert the garage, yes, we will. Yes, hmm? and you'll build a ramp for the wheelchair. A ski lift, if you want, you can go and jump. Oh, Reg. Yes, everything, honest, I promise. Come here. Oh, Reg. Hmm? Do you know, suddenly I'm... I'm oceans from that cheese counter. My love, Dom. Sorry I'm a bit late. Dom? Yeah, that's right, love. Where are you off this time of night? I'm not off anywhere, Don. You're joking? No, I'm not joking. 
Oh my god. I'm another hoax, Carl. Don, can you spare a minute? Of course I can, love, yeah. Come up, will you? Of course I will, of course I will, love. So she found your work then? Is she a friend of yours? Well, obviously. A good friend? That's one pound twenty. <laughs> so I believe Vicky will be back for Christmas soon. Yeah. Mm, that'll be nice for you, a bit of company like. Oh, by the way, did you manage to get to lunch or did you have to work right through? Well, you look happy, yeah? <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. It was everything. Smash. It was a kiddies party and it was lovely. Oh, international high flying kids, all the top executives. Do you know, the best part of all is that I don't have to pretend to you. Mm. I'd have said I had a wonderful time, even if I hadn't, cos I couldn't stick you sneering at me. But as it so happens, it's true. And the kids were sweet. They weren't posh or stuck up or out. Oh, they loved it. Oh, well, I loved your sophisticated ball gown. <laughs> well, you can stick sophistication. It were a nice change not to have to look glamorous. That'd be Santa's little helper any day, particularly with the reindeer we had. They were gorgeous, both of them. I'm blitzing to my phone number. <laughs> Do you know, Tanya, if you both dress the same way, trade a double round here. Oh, give up, Jack. Oh, I feel for you. To them, it's just a prank, but to you, it's... I'm trying not to get this out of proportion. You do right. I'll stave one. What does that mean? One? Rattled you. Is that what this is about? What else? Unless it's some kid with a crush. I'd have thought I was a bit old for that, mind. You haven't been to police. I'd be embarrassed. They're such stupid things. Silent phone calls, taxis, pizzas. No, it's got to be a kid. There's nothing sinister, it's just... The repetition, yeah. I almost wish something would happen. Oh, that's stupid. I wish they'd grow up and pack it in. Yeah, you're worried, though. Mm. It's creepy. But the worst thing is, it's not random. They know my phone number. They know where I live. Maybe they know me. Maybe I know them. Maybe you should go to police. <sighs> if something else happens, I might. So which kids were you thinking of? Well, there's kids in the street. You're talking about my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, it's impossible. But four doors down the other way, there's kids. Three of them. Early to mid-teens. Well, they might be worth thinking about. I've even started to suspect people like... Well, Fiona. She's such a good kid. And she's real concerned for me, and I find myself suspecting her. I'm confiding in her while I'm suspecting her. And then it's Tanya over the pub. I heard today she's got a track record for hoax phone calls. So you're not thinking of kids? There's not anybody I haven't wondered about. I hope it is, kids, because if it's an adult... Oh, look, you are, you know. You're properly rattled. Look, I was thinking of knocking off after this. I, you don't want to be alone in this state. I'll keep down on sofa, stay till daylight, and slip out with milk. How's that? And sodomy. Let's have a nightcap. Come on, Rip Van Winkle. Huh? Oh. 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 I'm sorry, I thought I was dreaming. Huh. No dream. Oh. This is harsh reality. Yeah, looks fine to me. Yeah, well, you would say that. You're a gentleman, aren't you? Yeah, and you're a lady. Oh, tea in bed. Listen, I do appreciate you stopping over last night, thanks. Any time. Yeah, well, I'm best going to move on. I have a rinse and set at nine and a perm at ten. It's all these office parties. Well, at least you've got plenty of work on. Oh, too much. I was going to put up my Christmas decorations sometime today, but I don't know when I get round to it. I could come back and do that. And what about the day job? 
Listen, I work for myself, I can do as I like. And uh, I'll be on hand if what else comes up or not. I was just seeing if Craig wanted a cup of tea. And does he? Um, yeah. You'd be lucky to find a clean cup. Look, there's no need for you to tidy up after us. Well, if I left it to you, it'd be here till next week, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. I was going to do it before I went to work. Weren't giving yourself much time then, were you? Look, just leave them and go to work. It'll be done before you get back. OK. What? I thought you said he wanted a cup of tea. Morning. Morning, Dom. Didn't tell me you were on nice. Uh, no, no, they asked me to stop over. Listen, Dom, don't go overdoing it. No, I'm all right. I can pace myself. Listen, why don't you take a bit of time off and go to that better buys do with me tonight? I'm fixed up for tonight, are they? Oh. Well, um, there's bacon in the fridge, if you want some for your breakfast. And listen, if you change your mind, um, I'll be home at the dinner time because it's the afternoon after. Santa's singing on his sleigh. Rudolph's nose shines red. If they fill my stocking up, I'll take them both to... Oh, Rita! Where did that come from? It's off. Okay, we rest of that lot. Mixed novelties. Well, I'm surprised you even allow that to be in the shop, especially at Christmas time. Mavis, when else would you suggest I sell Christmas cards? Well, it's not traditional. That's not got the true Christmas spirit. Mavis, people buy them. They think they're a good laugh. Well, I don't know what things are coming to. I really don't. Well, does that cover everything, Mavis? Or were you being specific? <laughs> you no, know, she's complaining about the verse on one of the Christmas cards. Oh, which one? Oh, no, no, you shouldn't see it. Oh, why not? I am a man of the world, Mavis. Ah, well, here, judge for yourself. <laughs> you see, even Vic is not offended. Well, that's not what I think Christmas is about, I must say. Oh, no, you're quite right. Christmas is about much more than just having a good time, which is um, why we're here, actually. Ah, sounds to me like you're after summer. Well, yes, we are. We wondered if you might act as a collection centre, Rita. It's for crisis at Christmas. We need central places like shops where people can leave gifts for us. And we'd collect regularly so that, uh, you know, whatever's left won't be in the way. Oh, there's no problem. Have you got a poster for me as well? If you wouldn't mind. Well, I think that's a wonderful idea. Now, that does have the true spirit of Christmas. Oh, well, maybe we can enlist your aid as well, Mavis, if you're so keen. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I have my work, but anything else I can do. Well, it's an idea I'm running along with Crisis at Christmas. It, it's nothing new, but um, it is proving very successful. What we're doing is, is um, selecting someone who has no family of their own and placing them with a family who are willing to share their Christmas day. It's a sort of one-day adoption. Oh, you mean like a child? Oh, not a child, Mavis. No, no, we don't have any problem placing children. It's more likely to be an elderly person. An elderly person. Oh, well, who exactly? Well, we're not quite sure yet. I mean, we've placed quite a lot already. Mm. But we could let you know later on today, if you're willing. It really would help us if you could, Mavis. Well, yes, of course, we'd love to. Oh, that's tremendous. Look, I'll search you out as soon as I can and let you know who it is. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Denise, shampoo and set. What? Joke. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I didn't know you were having such a bad morning. Am I having a bad morning? Well, I don't know, love. I'm just trying to make conversation. How about get me a gin and tonic instead? OK. All right, love. Busy. Problem? Maybe. Gift. One gin and tonic. On the house? Thanks. Thank you, Tanya. All right. You didn't need to do that. You look as though you need it. I do. Cheers. So, 
But this thing is driving me mad. I've got to find out who's doing it to me. And you think she might be involved? I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. But after what she did to Raquel... Yeah, Raquel's competition, isn't she? I wouldn't say you were. She says some very funny things. She's not everybody's idea of a comedian, and she can be malicious. But I wouldn't say this was her style. I'm sorry. You must think I'm being neurotic. I don't think anything of the sort, love. You're going through a bad time, and I know that. But I think I know her ladyship over there and all. And I wouldn't say she was your one. Well, you don't know, do you? No, I don't know. But I could try and find out. I just hope I've done the right thing. Well, there's one thing, Mavis. It'll be different. And you never know. You might end up with somebody really interesting. Well, I hope Derek feels like that. Oh, I'm sure Emily and Bernard won't hold you to it if he objects. Well, how can he object? What's it going to look like if we go back on my word? In the beginning was the word, or so the good book says. Oh, Derek, you're at school. Uh, no, Mavis, no. I'm, uh, I'm standing here in front of you in the shop. Ask Rita if you don't believe me. Well, there's no need to be sarcastic. I wasn't. I came to take you out to lunch. Thought I'd surprise you. Life's full of surprises today, isn't it, Mavis? You mean you've got a surprise for me as well? Yes, sort of. Well, come on then. Uh, is it something you can tell me about now? Well, Bernard and Emily are looking for families to share their Christmas day with somebody who hasn't got a family of their own. What a splendid idea. You mean give them Christmas dinner, drop of wine, that sort of thing? Yes, well, I, I have offered our services. I, I've said we'll have somebody. Mavis, I think that's a really positive gesture. Oh, you mean you don't mind? Not a bit. It'll be nice to have someone else around. Someone else we can spoil as well as ourselves. Oh, <laughs> Derek, I do love you. <laughs> <laughs> Card. Yes, love, I've been meaning to ask you for days. You get me a list together. I mean, it'll save you a bit for Christmas, won't it? Hi, Sam. Oh, well, hey, I like your hair. Oh, well, thanks, love. Yeah. Hey, did Denise do that? No, she didn't. I've stopped handing over my harder money to someone with the morals of an alley cat. I thought you'd been glad to give it a trade where she uses your don so much. Yeah, well, don has a living to earn. Yeah, but he gets plenty out of her, doesn't he? I've seen him. He's taxi packed outside her shop loads of times this week. What exactly are you trying to say, Vera? Oh, no, I'm just making an observation, you know. Right, then. Where are you going? I'm just going to put kettle on. Do you want a cup of tea? No, I don't think so, love. Uh, you just get me that list together of stuff you want off discount and I'll get it for you. It's a bit quiet, isn't it? Well, it's early days, yeah. Most won't turn up till after eight. What's the point of starting at seven? Well, you've got to start at some time, haven't you? Will you go easy on that stuff? It's got to go all round, you know. Thank God, you're a real old misery, aren't you? It's a party. We're supposed to be letting our hair down a bit. I just don't want you to show yourself up. You are middle management, remember? Look, if I drink all of this lot, I'll pay for a refill, OK? I don't think it costs much, knowing you. I resent that. And why aren't they dancing, eh? I paid a fortune for this <laughs> DJ. You can't make people dance if they don't want to. Maybe we should have a go, you know, show them the lead. Why would I want to dance with you? Why do you think? To show an example to everyone else. Well, I'm here to enjoy myself like everybody else. Look, people do what they want to do in their own good time. Just relax, will you? Look, I thought if we just show them the way. No way. After what you did to me over that job, you're the last person I want to get close to on a dance floor. I'd never know when the knife was going in again. Hello, Miss Remy. Oh, you look lovely. Ah, mine host. Ah, Reg. Hello, Kelly. Maureen. Right, well, firstly, I'd like to thank you on behalf of my intended and myself for this invitation to the little knees up. And secondly, yes, we will back and ring. Ah, yes, the punch. Uh, uh, no, no, don't offend me with that. Might have been away from the grassroots for a good time, but not that long. Hey, hey. 
I'm going to hat at this game, Norman. Keep your cup price concoction for the minions. I will have a large malt, and Maureen will have a glass of champagne. Champers? Oh, no, no, I I'll have a glass of sparkling white wine. That's nonsense, nonsense. 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 You are my guest. Yeah. I'm top management, and champagne is appropriate. So what are we waiting for, Norman? Shall we proceed before the chill goes off the gothel? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sum it up. You tell me, lady. I don't know what you mean. Don't you? Oh, if it's still that business with Raquel, I have apologised. Not Raquel. Well, what then? Denise. Oh, that, that was just a joke. What was? Oh, what I said. What did you say? I said shampoo and set, and she nearly bit me head off. And is that all? Well, what do you mean, is that all? I'm the one asking the questions. Look, if you've got something to say, then just say it. All right, I will. Have you been playing practical jokes on Denise? What? Somebody seems set on making her life a misery at the moment. I don't know what you mean. I hope you don't, Tanya. Well, I can tell you I don't. What do you take me for? I'm beginning to wonder about that, lady. Look, I played a trick on Raquel. OK, it wasn't appreciated, and so I apologised. But I've got no quarrel with Denise. So, you've not been ordering pizzas for her when she doesn't want them? Or making funny phone calls? <sighs> No, I have not. I believe you. Oh. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. But I am not happy with your attitude, Tanya. Not happy at all. Well, I can't say I'm too thrilled at yours. It's not much fun being accused of something you haven't done. Yes, well, you've brought that on yourself, haven't you? The way you've been behaving, you can't blame anybody for thinking the worst. Is that it? Not quite. I want to see a marked improvement in your behaviour behind that bar in future, Tanya. There's an atmosphere and I don't like it. So think on. There's no staffing level problem now Raquel's back. That's all. Never reaching the end. Letters are written. Never meaning to send. Hey, that's not her husband, you know. Yeah, well, let's uh, just turn a blind eye, eh, Ivy? I mean, at least uh, everyone's dancing. Huh. Hey, hey. Hmm? Girl is well and truly lumbered. I suppose that's all part of the job, is it? Yes. Dancing with the unescorted ladies. That's right. It's a task I remember well from last year. Well, you don't have to bother your head with that anymore. Because you've got me, and I can assure you, I'm going to prove more than a handful for you tonight. Oh, really? <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. Would you like to be more specific? Don't huh? talk. Some Just hold me. This could prove to be your night tonight, Reginald Holdsworth. Oh! I can't understand why he black so daft just before Christmas, you know. They'll only regret it next day. Oh, you've noticed her then, have you? I keep wondering how long she's going to stand up. She's been that punch ball all evening. Oh, oh! Oh, it's my night in white satin. Yes, yes, Miss Fennick. Elaine! I want you to call me Elaine. To call you Curly. <laughs> Excuse me, Ivy. Um, come on, I think you need some air. No, no, I don't. I want to dance. I want to dance with you, Curly Watts. <laughs> but you said I was the last person you wanted to dance with. No, 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 not at all. I want you to hold me really close. People are looking at us, Miss Fenwick. Who cares? And it's Elaine, I've told you. Yes, but we have to be very careful. We have to set standards. <laughs> standards? It's a party! Yes, but it's a very public party. Oh. You'd like something a little more private. No, no, I never said that. I've got a room. 206. If I was to go up there now, 
You could maybe come up in about ten minutes for a nightcap. I'm serious. Mr. Watts. Hey, hey, wow. hey. So much going on there, if I'm not mistaken. Look, he's at it again. Never mind. Mm -hmm. You just come with me, my little bundle. Are okay. <laughs> you watching this? Yeah. <laughs> Davis. Oh, hello, Emily. Come and sit down. Yes, do. Let me get you a drink. No, 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 no. We're not staying. Um, please let me get you one. Uh, no, Rita's just ordering. How is that? So, you see, I'm already in the chair. Now then, what can I get you? Uh, no, no. Uh, Bernard was just explaining. We've just popped in to tell Mavis and Derek about their Christmas guests. Oh, yes. And a jolly good idea it is, too. Oh, I wish everyone was as enthusiastic as you, Derek. Let's make our job a lot easier. Mm. Um, Mavis tells me it's probably somebody elderly. Well, that's right. We have more trouble placing the elderly. Well, the secret is give them plenty to drink and plenty to eat, and they'll sleep the rest of the day. <laughs> no, it's just a joke, Mavis. Start oh. off as you mean to go on, I say. I think a sense of humour's a grand thing, Derek. A necessary thing, Bernard. So, who have you given us? Well, it's someone you already know. Well, that makes a great deal of sense. And it's someone who otherwise would be on their own. Absolutely. That's the whole idea. But look. If you have any doubts at all, you must say so straight away. Doubts? When a Wilton gives his word, there is no retreat. <laughs> hey, maybe? Oh, quiet, Derek. <laughs> so, Bernard, tell us, who's going to be sharing our Christmas turkey with us? Hmm? Mr. Sandal. <laughs> um, Percy. Please do say if that's not acceptable. Oh, no, no, it's perfectly acceptable. Mr. Sugden's a gentleman. A real gentleman. You booked it for the night, did you? Well, fate has thwarted us one way or another so many times, Reg, that... Well, I decided that this time I wouldn't take any chances. Oh, a clever, clever darling comment. There's nothing to stand in our way now, Reg, nothing. Do you know this is why you're the woman for me? Oh. A simple, wow, wonderful gesture. Oh, I love you, Reg. Yes, and I love you, Molly. Oh, no, 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 wait, oh, wait, 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 no, listen. Hmm? There's a robe in the bathroom. Why don't you go and make yourself comfortable? And then when you have, well, you... Well, mm. Right. You came! Mm. Yeah, but um, I don't think we'd better um, stand out here. Wow. No. no. Come in. Lock it. Come here. Don't be frightened. You're not frightened of me, are you? No. Well, come on, then. I'll just, um, you know. Don't be long. <laughs> Don't worry. <clears throat> Come on, Elaine, stop messing about. It's Norman. Great. You 
look lovely, Molly. Come to bed, Reggie. Um, Maureen. Oh, Reggie. No, not just. Oh, not yes, Maureen. Reggie. No. Just one, no, no, wait, listen. Okay, listen. There's one thing what? I have to say what, to Maureen Reggie? before we. Listen, listen. What? Before we finally consummate our relation. Yeah. I'm anxious, darling. Mm, yeah. That there should be nothing between us. Nothing yeah. at all. Yeah. No. no, no secrets. No. No hidden past, no yeah. lies, and no skeletons in their cupboards. So yes. There's, um, I have to, uh, I have to say something. Right. Something which you might find difficult to believe. Oh, Reggie. No, no, listen no. To, listen, listen, listen what? to me. What? What? You see, the pain and frustration yes. brought on by the twists of fear that kept me from you, forced me to lapse and thrust me into the arms of another. Yes. Now, I know I have no excuse for my unfaithfulness, Maureen. And, well, I freely confess to you, and I understand if you ban me from this bedchamber, but in my frustration, I've had carnal knowledge of Brenda Fallon. <clears throat> well, a young lady at that office. Oh, so, Reg. I'm sorry. Oh, Do Reg. you forgive me? Oh, yes, yes, my darling, I forgive you. Oh, thank you. You see, I've not been entirely blameless myself. <laughs> you oh. see, I've not behaved as I should have. I've been a naughty little girl as well. Oh, have you? Yes. Oh, well, I don't believe that. <laughs> Who is it, darling? You can tell me if it makes you feel better. Well, oh. it's Norman, Reggie. Norman? Yes. <laughs> Norman who? Curly. <laughs> you slept with Curly one. Reg? Only one. Oh, I don't believe it. No, Reg. No, no, no. Morning. Risk enough for you. Hey, you. Where are your manners? That's the way it is when you're old. Not even with an owl do. Morning off. No. So why aren't you dressed then? Because eccentric as it may seem, I like to have a shower before I put my clothes on, not after. Look, if that's another dig at Craig, then he's out of the bathroom. Suit you. After nearly 40 minutes. Problem. On a working morning, Craig, when we're all three of us rushing round to get ready, I'd appreciate it if you could hurry things up in there. I'm supposed to be at work in 15 minutes. You know, all this clock watching's not good for you. Try and relax. Meditate. Ground your energy. Oh, Mr. Sutton, oh, I'm glad you've called in. I was wondering if there's anything you particularly don't like. Well, there's a lot of things I don't like. Where do you want me to start? No, I mean, to eat. I mean, I know as you get a bit old, your digestive system isn't always what it was. Well, there's nothing wrong with my digestive system. And what concern is it of yours if there was? So when you come over on Christmas Day, Oh, hasn't Emily told you? The time to be bundled round like a spare package nobody wants. No, she hasn't. No, it's not like that, Mr Sugden. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, so you can pat yourself on the back as having done a good turn. Well, you can forget it. Save your charity for them as needs it. Never mind, Flower. You can read out dirty jokes now, ain't crackers, without fear of offending him. Oh, great. Actually, I was going to ask you, but I didn't think you'd want to be part of a foursome. But if he's not coming, we'd love you to come. Oh, Donald. Oh, come in now. What can I do for you, duck? <laughs> Very droll. I wasn't trying to be funny. For once. Have you, uh, have you thought any more about you know? Oh, yeah. And the more I thought, the more he's in the flame. I should be speaking to the gentleman today. Look, I've got a Birmingham job. I'll come round as soon as I get back. What would I do without you? Enjoy yourself last night, Ivy? Funny enough, I did, yeah. You sound surprised. Well, I'm not much of a party animal these days. Uh, there was a time when me and Don used to, you know, go out. Switch off the football and drag him out, I would. You're in uh, extraordinary good fettle yourself this morning, Miss Fenwick. I mean, unlike some of the walking wounded round here. Yes, sir. Uh, there was one or two drank a couple over the top, you know. Not me. I've seen too many people get legless at these staff do's and do things they regret later. 
Really? A couple of glasses of wine and that's my lot. I know my limit. Oh, of course you do, yes. Morning, ladies. All right, Miss Fenwick. Why wouldn't I be? Well, it's just that you seem uh, remarkably chipper, considering it's the morning after the night before. Oh, which is more than could be said for you and your matching bloodshot eyes. <laughs> Last night, she said they were soulful. Soulful and uh, sexy. We appear to have living proof, as if we needed it, that alcohol does, in fact, rot the brain. And hang on, Elaine. You did say those things last night, and a few other things as well. Suggestions were made. I beg your pardon? Which would have been implemented only. You fell asleep. You know, I think the most sensible thing you can do is go home to bed until you are in full possession of all your faculties. Only if you come with me. Oh! One more remark like that and I'll have you for sexual harassment. What the hell was that for? And he can't vote. Not by Reg. No, Miss Fenwick. Why are they queuing up? Oh. Oh, um. She's seriously sick, that girl, you know. She's got a split personality. Oh. Hey, why Reg? Oh, no. no well, it's just a joke. He left in a bad mood last <sighs> night, you see. Um, he hasn't spoken to you today, has he? No, no, he's gone to Liverpool. Why? No, nothing, nothing. <sighs> Curly. What? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I'm looking at it as we speak, and it's practically illegible. I'm on a word with you. Look, John, I'll phone you back. Something's just erupted. You always burst into people's offices. If you want to play at Rough Sunshine, you can expect the same treatment in return. I wasn't aware we were playing at all. As far as I remember, any game we had going ended when you bought some rather expensive sans Did you really have to take it that far to get your own back? Why don't you just sit down and tell me what all this is about? Funny phone calls made every hour of the day and night. Taxis turning up that I haven't sent for. Pizzas I haven't ordered. Appointments for mysterious clients who never turn up. Sounds unpleasant. Oh, it's been more than unpleasant. It's made my life hell these last few weeks, as you intended it to do. Look, I'm sorry some weirdo's been giving you a hard time. But you've got a damn nurse storming in here and accusing me. You're the only one with a motive. I don't know why I didn't see it sooner. Maybe I did, but I just didn't want to believe it. You sound like some half-baked detective series. So tell me, Inspector Osborne, what exactly was my motive? I hurt your precious pride and you wanted revenge. Look, I was sorry we broke up, but I haven't spent the last few months brooding on it. Looking back, it's a waste of time in my book. You mean it just wasn't that important to you? Not enough to go to those lengths, even if it was my style, which it isn't. But if you're still not convinced, What are these? Honeymoon photos. I got married three weeks ago. I only got back from Mauritius on Tuesday. I see. Congratulations. Oh, did you enjoy yourself last night, Mr. Oliver? A word. Your office, no. I'm sorry, I've got an appointment to interview Your and office, you... no. Enough this stupid thing. What's the matter? I don't know, but I reckon we should cancel next year's party, judging by the mood they're all in today. Why, what's happened? Well, your betrothed has just hauled Curly off, looking as if he's going in front of a firing squad. Oh, my God! Oh, oh. Ooh, am I glad I stuck to that shandy. <laughs> Oh, you look frozen. Oh, I have. It's been doing me van. It's freezing. Oh, I want to be careful you don't catch pneumonia. Well, that's the least of me worries at the moment. Oh, well, at least you've got one nice thing to look forward to. Have I? Well, a little bird tells me that Vicky's coming home today. Yeah. So we're here. Oh. I was only trying to cheer him up. Do you know that's the second knockback you've had today? I think the Cosmos is trying to send you a message. What message? Stop trying to be Mary Poppins. Let them all oh, get on with just it. Just like to see people happy. Oh, which reminds me, you haven't said yet whether you're coming to us on Christmas Day. Uh, hey, Deirdre, how are you, love? What can I do for you? You haven't got any toffees with cyanide in, have you? Oh, oh dear. dear. Young fella, my lad, still playing you up, is he? We don't even speak the same language, Rita. I mean, a normal person you can have a good old slanging match with. 
try telling him you're miffed and he'll probably tell you to chill out to some equally revolting phrase. Does Tracy know how you feel? How I feel is I want him gone. Why don't you be straight with her? Oh, come on, you owe it to yourself. How much longer can you carry on like this? First, I want to make it crystal clear that I know about everything. So there's no use in trying to prevaricate. Where are you going? I was going to get an aspirin. You sit down. You're not going anywhere until I get some sort of explanation. Not that there can be an explanation for such a betrayal. What are you on about, Reg? You and my fiancé. Maury. Well, how many fiancés have I got, Norman? And it is Mrs Naylor to you. Well, what about... Mrs Naylor? You seduced her! There's no point in trying to deny it. Well, in that case, I won't. You took advantage of an unhappy, vulnerable girl. Oh, come on, Reg. That's stretching it a bit, isn't it, girl? To me, she'll always be a girl. The innocent flower of my youth. Unsullied and untarnished. Until you got your lecherous hands on her. She's been married, divorced, engaged twice to you, although she wasn't when we... Yes! Look, she was gutted about you and Debbie Scott. Mm. Well, nothing happened between me and Debbie Scott. She knows that. She didn't know that then, did she? She was upset <laughs> and angry. I needed a friend. Oh, so you jumped on her? No, no, it was the other way... Oh. <laughs> Look, Reg, I'm as upset as you are about this, but it was just a... It was just an isolated moment. We were like two shipwreck survivors clinging to each other for comfort. Oh, right. Well, to continue with your touching little analogy, it is not unknown for survivors of shipwrecks to be faced with an implacable foe. One with the power to chew them up and spit them out. One from which, however hard they swim, they can never escape. Do I make myself understood? Mr. Watts. Perfectly, Mr. Holdsworth. Now, if you've got a secret rendezvous, tell me. I'll nose it from a discreet distance. Oh, actually, I'm sat here trying to drum up a convincing excuse. How does? I've got to visit my poor old Auntie Nellie in Aberystwyth Sound. Not convincing. Especially she knows I haven't got an Auntie Nellie in Aberystwyth or anywhere else. Who's this? Dear old Mrs Wilton. Bless her. She's invited me for a cosy Christmas dinner with her and Derek. So, tell her you've got to visit your poor old Auntie. That's across the road. I came to you last year. I'm a glutton for punishment. Denise. How do you fancy a Lay's Girls reunion on the 25th here at Gangcock? Right now, I don't think I'll make it through till Christmas. Tanya, medical emergency. Gin and tonic on the double. Coming on. Denise, what's so? up? I mean, this morning you seem perkier than you have of late. Oh, I thought I'd track down my bogeyman, but it turns out I was wrong. The question now is, where do I go from here? Police? Just think I'm a typical neurotic woman. Bombarded with pizzas, Miss Osborne. It's hardly an ill interval job, is it? Vicky, love! I wasn't expecting you for another half an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> train was early for a change, and I got the first taxi, so... I'll come in the back and make you some lunch. Well, I just want to get washed and changed first, because I feel foul. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, love. You manage. Hiya. Oh, hi. Oh, she's dead. She'll just have your back. I should think so. I'm not the only one. Where's my gorgeous boyfriend? Steve? Oh, he doesn't come in here a lot these days. Oh, yeah. No, he drinks at his mum's place now, love. You know what, we're living there. In fact, we don't see so much of him dinner time now. Well, he's probably working overtime to pay for his fine. Oh, he's really been through it, poor thing. He writes a lot, then, does he? Well, letters aren't exactly Steve's thing, but I phone him. Oh, I can't wait to see him. <laughs> See you in a bit. See you. I'm jealous, are you? Because she's young and in love. How did you guess? I've been a father to you. A mentor and a friend. 
Which makes your betrayal all the more hurtful. I'll never forgive you for this, you know. Reg, please, just listen to me. I've heard me. enough please. lies for one day, Maureen. No, look, Reg, I... please, just listen to me. Oh. You'd better come in, Maureen. Oh. Sit down. Why? Um, why did you do it? After all the times you've begged me to keep my mouth shut. Well, he asked. Oh, I see. So he came up to you and said, another sausage roll, dear. And by the way, have you and Norman ever been to bed together? No. Well, we were just trying to be honest with each other. I mean, well, you know, when you're about to get married, well, you want to start without any skeletons in the cupboard, don't you? The price of your clear conscience is me watching my whole flaming career go down the pan. No, it won't. Yes, it will. He won't be happy until he's seen me wiped off the better by map he's just told me. Look, Reg isn't vindictive. He is when it comes to you. I'll talk to No! You. That'll just make things worse. Curly. I don't mean to be unkind, you know, but, I mean, I was only responding to your advances. My advances? No, oh, no, it's all right. I won't hold it against you. I'm just sorry for all the trouble I've caused. I don't believe this. I mean, do all women get amnesia after a couple of drinks, or is it only when they're with me? Please forgive me, Curly. Please. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no point in holding any grudges. No. I only hope Reggie can bring himself to feel the same way. You're not the only one. Steve! I came round earlier, but you were out. Yeah, I had a delivery to make in Old Trafford, you know. Right. Don't I get a kiss then? Not in the middle of the street, Vic, you know. Since when have you been shy? Yeah, well, I've got, you know, lots of orders to do and all that. And I don't need Baldwin on me back, do I? Yeah, we must not upset Mr Baldwin, must we? Well, listen, Vic, I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. I don't need the boot as well, do I? Yeah, I'm sorry. I've just missed you, that's all. We'll make up for it later, eh? Yeah, well, anyway, look, um, I've got to go, so... Oh, see you later. I can't wait to get my shoes off. Well, I'm very disappointed in you, Mrs Bishop. In me? Yes, you've always been one of the few around here who've always, well, behaved towards me with some respect. But I do respect you, Mr Sugden. So why, then, are you treating me like a doddering old fool that needs to be farmed out to anybody that'll take him in? I didn't. Oh, Mavis. Uh, yes, well, you needn't bother in future. I'm quite capable of making my own arrangements. Tea, Craig. Only if it's chamomile. You used the last one this morning. I'll get some more tomorrow. I'm going to the health food shop. Right. The stir fry was uh, good. Thank the freezer shop, not me. You can't win, can he? Even when he's nice to you, you've got to make some sarcastic comment. Oh, Tracy, love. After a day on my feet, I, I don't need compliments. I need a bit of help. Offering to make a pot of tea would have been nice. Taking his dirty dishes through would have been nice. Right, I'll do it. I'll make the tea. Anything else? Just a bit of peace and quiet. Oh. I've been thinking about what you said. This from the man who says looking back's a waste of time? If I was abrupt, it was because I was damned angry you thought I could pull a stunt like that. You were the obvious candidate. I didn't know you were canoodling on a sun-drenched beach. I should have sent you a postcard. Saying wish you were here? Haven't lost your Denise-style sense of humour, I'm glad to see. Hanging on in there by the skin of my teeth, boy. I like your hair, by the way. It must have been rough. That's why I want to help. How? These phone calls you've been getting. They're the worst. Especially late at night. Are they obscene? No. They're just silent. In a way, that's even more frightening. I suppose it is. 
Right. You've got two options. One, you can get in touch with a phone company and they can trace all the calls. Fine. I'll do that. Only problem is you'll have to go through the police. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not getting into all that hassle. You'd only have to answer a few questions. You said there was another option. I know someone who might be able to trace all the calls you've had for the last few weeks. And find out who made them. Well, find out where they came from for a start. You'd be in trouble if anyone found out. But then again, the chap owes me a favour. What do you say? I don't want to be under any obligation to you. Oh, Denise, cut the bull. You're in trouble and you need help. Do I contact him? Please. Right. I'll be in touch. Oh, have to make yourself look glamorous. Do you know, I often think that's the best part of a day at me, going red. Rest can be a bit of a letdown. Raquel, have you got a minute? Well, I've only nipped out to spend a penny. You see, all the supermodels said they drink three gallons of water a day, but you're forever running to it flipping, Lou. Oh, I think it's litres. Eh? Not gallons. All right. Litres. What's up? How do you know when a bloke's gone off you? Well, um... The sign's like... Like what? Well, um... When they stop phoning, that usually gives you an inkling. Yeah, but what if they're still with you, but they're not with you, if that doesn't sound daft? Oh, no way, my like that. Half the time we were out together, I felt like I was on my own. But you stayed with him? <sighs> well, I suppose the other half was worth it. You see, it's dead sexy when fellas play out to get. And I'm much more attracted to that sort, me, than the doormats. You see, them are the ones that say they'll pick you up at eight o'clock and eight o'clock on the dot, there they are. And they ring you when they say they will and send you soppy cards all the time. Sounds quite nice. Oh, well, it is. Yeah, Gordon will like that. It's very nice. And dead boring. So, do you think that's maybe what Steve's trying to do? Keep me interested by playing hard to get? Who is he? Well, he doesn't seem exactly thrilled I'm back. Well, that's only because he's got a lot on his mind with this court case. Yeah, but you'd think that'd make him even more pleased to see me. Raquel, have you fallen in that bog or what? I'm coming! I'd just be patient if I were you, Vicky. You see, they're different to us fellas. Still, viva la differenza. Right, Mum, we're off out now. I don't know what time we'll be back. Tracy, will you come in? I need to talk to you. We'll be where? You can spare a couple of minutes and shut the door. We need to clear the air. I won't pretend I like having Craig here because I don't. Oh, surprise, surprise. I'm sorry, I thought we could talk like two adults. OK. Go on. When you first brought him here, you said it was only going to be temporary. It is. So what's he doing about finding somewhere else to go? Look, if you want to chuck him out, then why don't you just say so? All we do is bicker. And I was so pleased when you came back. If you really felt like that, then you'd make me friends feel welcome. I do. I always have. But he's not like all the others. No, he's a grown-up. They were just kids. Since he moved in, I felt like a stranger in my own home. That's because you get so flipping tense all the time. Craig's right, you should lighten up. Well, maybe if he wasn't here, I'd be able to. Oh, Tracy, I don't want to fight with you. I love you. But I, I never expected him to stay permanently. Is it such a big deal to ask him to go? No, that's fine. If that's what you want. And if he goes, I go. It's up to him if he doesn't want to come. I can't pretend I'm not relieved. Oh, that's okay, Derek. Oh, don't tell me you're not just as delighted at being let off the sunken hook. Well, actually, no. I mean, there's a lot of truth in what he says it's about just patting ourselves on the back for being good Samaritans. Well, honestly, maybe it's one minute you're grumbling because he is coming, and the next minute because he isn't. No, but, I mean, he was right. We were just bundling him about, like, past the parcel. He was just being ungracious. We wanted him, 
and he threw our hospitality back in our face. No, Derek. We didn't want to. We were just putting up with him. And he knew it, poor old man. And Eve? Is that you? Who the hell are you? What kind of a pervert are you? Good morning. morning. Thank you. Have you seen my bag anywhere? It's behind there where you left it. Tracy. Look, if this is another of your sermons, you're wasting your breath. I just want you to see things from my point of view. No problem. You can't stand Craig. You never could stand Craig and you want him out. End of conversation. He hasn't left me much choice, has he? I mean, he's practically turned this place into a pigsty. Well, if he wants to live like that, that's up to him. But I don't have to put up with it. This is still my home. You've made that very clear. Morning. Morning, then. I thought I'd catch you for a photo rush. You have. Uh, no Fiona this morning. Dental appointment. Ah, right, right. So, uh, what did he have to say for himself? It wasn't Hanny. <laughs> well, I didn't expect him to admit it. It couldn't have been Hanny. He's been out of the country for three weeks. They do have farms abroad, you know. Yeah, well, he's had better things to do, hasn't he? He's been on his honeymoon. Oh, I see. So he's no reason to want to get back at me, has he? Oh, well, that's that. Another name off list. Back to square one. Not quite. Eh? Huh? What do you mean, not quite? Morning, Mrs. Barber. Morning. Well? Uh, look, I'll catch up with you later, all right? Here, let me take your coat for you. Peter Dawson. Have a good time. Ta-ra. Bye. Well, there goes another one. What's that? Mrs Dawson. She's going away for Christmas. She's going to Madeira with her husband. I don't think I'd like that. Oh, he's not bad by all accounts. Likes his pint on Friday night, but which fella doesn't? I mean going away for Christmas. I think there's a lot to be said for Christmas in your own home with your own friends. Ah. Bye. Got a park in the morning. <laughs> it is, Phyllis. Well, I suppose that's one advantage. What is? I'm going away for Christmas. At least it'll be a bit warmer where Mrs. Dawson's going. Who's Mrs. Dawson when she's at home? Oh, she's a customer, Phyllis. She's going to Madeira for Christmas. Well, she's welcome to that. Well, don't you fancy going abroad, eh? <laughs> where would I get money from to go abroad? I think there's a lot to be said for Christmas in your own home. Ah, even if you do keep yourself company. <laughs> well, that'll be two of you by my rent. Hey, You and your old sparring partner. Percy. Mm. Well, Mr Sutton's got his own plans for Christmas. He was most insistent. Well, that's what he told you. But you know, Percy, I mean, the last thing he wants is anything that smacks of charity. Look, you get him round to your place, I reckon you'd do both of you a big favour. If I could get him round to my place, I could guarantee it. Choose company, no chance. You can make yourself useful, I know. Going to work, aren't you? You can make a start, can't you? Start? Start on what? Tidying this place up. You're going to have to change your ways before our Terry gets home. I don't really think he's coming back to a DOS house. To what he's been used to. This will be five star, believe me. Just think, it'll be the last time I'll be visiting that prison. I hope you're right. <sighs> well, he won't be going back in there, don't you, Fred? You see, he's got a chance, on not he? He's got a purpose in life. Oh, Jack has changed. All he needs is a chance, you know, to get on his feet. And I'm going to make sure he gets that chance. Do you know, I can't wait to have him home. You and me both, darling. <coughs> Reg. Come on, Reg. <sighs> the name is Swat, it's Holdsworth. And I shouldn't have to remind you that I am the area manager, your superior. <clears throat> yes, well, if you're looking for Maureen, she won't be in until la later on. M Mr Holtz, what business would I have with Mrs Naylor? Well, I just thought that, uh, hmm? 
Well, we weren't expecting you this morning. Oh, well, spot check, Norman, Mr Watts. Part of my brief, making sure things are going according to plan, even though the managers aren't expecting me to drop down on them. <laughs> well, I don't think you'll find any room for complaint. <laughs> on the contrary, Mr Watts, I think there's lots of room for complaint. Hey, You have one woman on the checkout. I was just on the way to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Half your shells look like they've been subject to a smash and grab raid. We're short staffed. Your job, Mr. Watts, is to create a warm ambience, inviting the public to spend, not giving the impression they stumbled into a jumble sale by mistake. I've got four girls down. Oh, really? And they're supposed to make allowances for that, are they? I shouldn't have to remind you that we are in a very competitive business. Here, you know. You're taking this a bit far, aren't you? A bit far? Doing my job, doing my duty, for which far wiser men than you have seen fit to appoint me. <laughs> this has got nothing to do with better buys, and you know it. This has got to do with Maureen, all right. If that's the way you want to play it, you play it like that. But some of us have got better things to do with our time. Some of us have grew out of that kind of behaviour, grew out of it when we grew out of short pants. I shouldn't have to remind you, Mr Watts, who you are talking to. Now, if I was you, I'd get about my business before you say something you might regret. Hmm? And think on. That's £22.36, please, Betty. Uh, I'll pick it up after work, if that's all right with you, Lord. Oh, no need for that, love. I'll drop it off. Oh, if you could, it'll save me a struggle. Right, about half past four, then. Yes, I'll be along before that. Twenty, what was it? Twenty-two no. thirty-six, oh, love. Less the pound for me vouchers. Oh, vouchers? Yes, I've got two. I spent over twenty pounds. Uh, hang on a minute. What vouchers, love? Well, the ones that Brendan Scott gave us. A fifty-pence voucher for every ten pound you spent, you know, towards Christmas. It's all right. It was only the pensioners. Yeah, I know we gave them to love, yeah. Look, whatever Brendan Scott did, well, it's got no to do with me. Are you saying you're not going to take them? That's exactly what I'm saying, love. Well, you, you can't do that. I mean, Brendan Scott might not be here, but the shop is. Listen, if you'd made this shop into a chip shop, you wouldn't be in here asking for a quid off your pie and peas, would you? Oh, come on. That'd be different. Not with me, love. No, I'm sorry, love. I think you'll find I'm perfectly within my rights. Right. If that's the way you want it, I'm perfectly within my rights to do my shopping elsewhere. That's exactly what I intend to do. Have a look it. One more week and you're out of here. <laughs> One more week and have your daddy back with you, won't you? Do you know, I'm sure he knows. He definitely knows something's going on. Well, he would, wouldn't he? He's a bright lad. Proper little chip off the old block. Oh, is that all right? Yeah. So, how's my dad? Oh, he's fine. He's looking forward to you coming home. Nailing the paper to the wall, is he? Just in case you take a fancy to it. Don't start that. He's looking forward to you coming home, same as me. Couldn't blame him. I've not exactly been the ideal son, have I? Now, don't start talking like that. What's happened is in the past, it's history. What matters now is the future. Your future and Tommy's. I've got a lot of ground to make up, haven't I? I've not done much for him so far, have I? No, well, it's come to no harm, has it? No. I can see that. Yeah, he's been in good hands. Yeah. Thanks for all you've done for him. I know it's not been easy. Don't be daft. He's his grandson, ain't he? You'll do what's best for him in future. That's all thanks I want. No, oh, I will. Nothing but the best is going to be good enough for our Tommy. And I intend to make sure he gets it. I think we need a bit more stuff on the Christmas tree, don't we? Are you looking for somebody? Me? No, of course not, no. Hey, look at the time. I've got to get back to work. What time are you on? Uh, half one. Well, you better get your skates on if you want a lift. No, you're all right. I've plenty of time and I want to nip home anyway. Ah, uh, suit yourself. Right, uh, see you, see you later. Yeah, see you later. Hey, just a pen lab, obviously. I thought things were going too well this morning. Christmas Day. What about it? How do you fancy a cosy little dinner for two? Mince pies, paper hats, the lot. And if you stay sober, you might get to pull a cracker afterwards. This will be your place, I suppose. Of course, you're on your own. I'm on my own. What gives you the idea I'm going to be on my own? Well, Emily Bishop, she'll be with that. Big a friend of hers, won't she? Feeding them as can't feed themselves. And what makes you think I shan't be helping them out? What, you? Why not, fellow? About time and all. If you don't mind, I'd like to go and have my dinner. Oh, I think I'll join you. Would you get me up? I'll please, Betty. 
Ivy? Oh, Denise. On your own. What's it look like? If you're looking for Don, he's gone to work. Can I get you a drink? No, thank you. I'm leaving as soon as I finish this. Suit yourself. Bottle of cider, please, Jack. Go on, no, Where's Tracy? Trace! Oh, there's no need for this. I told you. If Craig goes, so do I. But you don't have to go. This is your home. My home? Somewhere I can relax, be myself, live my life in my own way. You are joking. This is ridiculous. Well, it's all right for you to carry on in any way that you want to, but for me to have a life of my own, that's different, that isn't it? That is not the problem. That's exactly the problem. If I stayed here for the rest of my life, you'd still be treating me like a 12-year-old. Tracy, will you just listen to me for one minute? I want you to have a life of your own. But when I see you doing things that I know are wrong, I... I worry. Of course I worry, Tracy. Well, you won't have to worry about me anymore, will you? Come on. Where will you go? We've got mates. Yeah, but where? What, what sort of place are you going to? Better than here, that's for sure. At least I'll be able to have a life of my own. Ah, yeah, Tracy, you're going somewhere. Don't try and stop me. Stop you? There's no way we can spend another minute in the house. Are you moving out? We've been chucked out. Oh, now, come on. Right, Craig? Right. Look, I know that things between you and your mother not exactly been easy. Easy? But... They've been impossible. Look, come on, Trace. I've got to go back to work. I'll, uh, I'll talk to your mother. You'd be wasting your time. No way I'm stopping where I'm not wanted. But where are you going? It doesn't matter where we're going, and there's no point trying to follow us because there's no way we're coming back. Tracy. I'll see you, Dad. Tarno. Did you want anything else, love? And they've got a nice bit of homemade rice pudding on today. No, oh, I couldn't think of another thing. Oh, Percy? Oh, no, not for me. I've been here long and I intended as it is. Oh, don't worry about that, love. I mean, we're not known for chucking folks out, you know. Yeah. Without staying the welcome. You no, know, more's the pity, cos some folk have stayed the welcome as soon as they come through the door. Oh, Mr Sugden. Mrs Bishop. Mrs Pierce. Mrs Bishop. All right, well, I'll be off. I'm surprised at you. I really am. Me? You and your vicar friend taking advantage of an old gentleman at Christmas. I'm not with you. Eh? Do you know I shan't see Percy Christmas Day? Cos you've got him helping you. We have. You haven't asked Mr Sugden to give us a hand on Christmas Day, have you? Well, if you don't want me, it's not... Want you, know. you? We'd be delighted to have you. Right, Emily? Well, yes, of course. Now then, do you believe me? <laughs> no choice, have I? I should still be thinking about your Christmas Day, especially when I get to Parsons' nose. So you didn't throw her out? Oh, come on, Ken. Whatever else she is, she's still my daughter. No, it was Craig who had to go. I mean, he practically turned this place into a midden. And Tracy said if he went, she did. Exactly. Well, I'll do what I can, but uh, I can't see it being easy, not this time. She wouldn't even tell me where she was going. I don't care where she's going. Oh, no, I don't, on. Ken. And if that upsets you, I'm sorry. But you haven't had to live with her this last few weeks. Her and that sullen toe rag she's taken up with. Honestly, I have bent over backwards to try and come to terms with that girl. And what thanks do I get? The more I try, the more I just get it chucked back in my face. Well, that's it, as far as I'm concerned. If she wants to spend the rest of her life with Godzilla, that's up to her. She knows where I am if she wants me. From now on, I'm just going to get on with my life. You all right? Yeah. Do you know, I can't wait to get our Tommy some new outfits. Hey. Well, when Atari comes home, I mean, look at this. He's grown out with her. Fear of love, we've done all we can. We can't do any more. How was he, then? Oh, we're great. He looked really well. Do you know, it brought tears to my eyes. What did? Well, seen him together, you know, father and son. Hey, and knowing that next week it'll be for good. 
Do you know he worships that little lad? You can see it in his face. I hope he feels the same way when he gets out. Oh, he will. I know he will. Nothing but the best for our Tommy, that's what he said. And he meant it. He meant every word. Uh, Vera, love, um... I don't suppose he set out about his compensation, did he? You are? Well, he's supposed to think that much about our Tommy. He must be thinking how much he's cost me and you to feed and clothe the lad. So that's what it's all about, eh? Welcome him home with open arms. You couldn't care less about that, do you? It's that compensation you can't get... Fear Wait to get your hands on I it. I am just trying to be practical. Well, don't you think he knows that? Practical. I'll give you practical. You mentioned compensation once more, and it'll be you that'll be claiming compensation. Off me! For grievous bodily harm! Rich! Rich! Listen, listen, now, the woman earth, isn't it? Mr. Holzer, if you don't oh, mind. Don't worry, we can't go on like this. We've got to talk about it. All right, we'll talk about right. it. Just follow me. Follow me. What? Mrs. is Yes? I don't think we have anything to talk about. Rich, you don't know what it's doing to me. Doing to you? Yes! Well, how do you think I, how do you think I feel every time I set foot in this place? Oh. How many eyes are boring into me, Maureen? Oh. Knowing eyes and mocking eyes, eh? Richie, huh? you're wrong. Yes. No one knows about this. Mm. And there's no reason for anybody to know about it, right? Mm. No reason at all. If we can talk about it sensibly, right? You wouldn't. Hiya. Kev. There's a little one. She's at Lisa Croston's birthday party, I've told you. Oh, are you? <laughs> Just as well she is and all. It'll give her a break, I've... I've not been very good company today. Hey, come on. That's enough of that. Kev, I can't help it. This time tomorrow, you could be under lock and key. Look, it's not going to come to that, Sally. Oh, you've changed your tune, haven't you? Yeah, I, well, I know I've said it often enough myself in the past, but, well, that was before the solicitor spelt it out for me, wasn't it? Solicitors can be wrong, you know. Oh, Sally. Steve MacDonald's the one who's got to worry. He's the one it's all down to. But it still doesn't get you off the hook, though, does it? I'm not on true, come on. <sighs> Look, I'll probably end up with a fine maybe, what? Three, four hundred quid, which Steve MacDonald said he'll pay. So come on, eh? Stop worrying. Come on. Don't do I get any tea? Or do I have to go to Lisa Croston's birthday party <laughs> as well? I... I thought I'd lost you, Reg. I thought I was going to have to face life without you. I, I was desperate for consolation, and Mr. Watts just happened to be there and offer it. That's all. <laughs> Mr. Watts was consolation, was it? No, Mr. Watts wasn't anything. He couldn't measure up to you, Reg. Really? He's not half the man you are. All it did was make me realise it. The terrible wrong that I'd done. That, that there could never ever be any man to take your place. Please, please try and understand. All I understand, Maureen, is that when you were confronted with temptation, you succumbed. And who with? With Norman Watts? Oh. As strong as you are, Reg. You've got to be strong enough for both of us. I'm nothing without you. Just look at me. I mean, what have I done with my life? What did I have in my life before you came back on the scene? No future. Where would I be without you? Yes, but that doesn't alter the fact, Maureen. You have humiliated me. I mean, every time I say Norman Watts, I, I think... know, I know, I know you feel anger and you feel hatred because of what it did to me. A, a woman vulnerable, I know. Well, that's a woman's interpretation, but it's different for a man, you see. It's different for a man because it's a, it, it's a matter of honour. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, that's it then, isn't it? Hmm? Right, well, and don't worry, I won't tell anybody the real reason. The real reason? What do you mean, the real reason? Well, for cancelling the wedding. Well, who said I said anything about cancelling the wedding? 
Is the wedding still on then? Oh. I'm not, I'm not a man who can forgive easily, Maureen. Not a man who can forget those responsible either. But if you think for one minute that I'm going to give Norman what's the satisfaction of thinking that he's responsible for blighting our future. Kevin, it's Mr. Ball. No sunshine. Oh, won't take a minute. It's sunshine. about tomorrow. All oh, right. Yeah, I just wanted to wish you luck and uh, hope everything goes okay for you. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Baldwin. It's nice of you to come. And to warn you about what you're going to say. What I'm going to say? Yeah, in court. I've got my reputation to think about. Oh, your reputation? Yeah, there's no way I want my name being dragged into this. Do you understand? Oh, well, you don't have to worry on my account. Oh, good. Make sure McDonald gets the message as well, will you? One wrong word, and there could be repercussions for the pair of you. Huh? How come? It could be bad for business. If that was to happen, it wouldn't be in any of our interests, would it? Think about it. I'll let myself out. Nice to know your boss has your best interests at heart, isn't it? By the way, what time are you back on? Eh? Work. Yeah, uh, eight. Oh, look, that means you could have a bit of something to eat before you go, doesn't it? Well, I'm not bothered. I'll pick some up later if I feel like. Pint of bitter, please, Betty, love. Have a change of heart yet about them vouchers? No, I haven't, and I'm not likely to. Right, get somebody else to serve you. Oh, come on. Jack, yes. customer waiting. Yes, love. Uh, bottle of cider, please, Betty. Right. Betty wants it off. Why is she like that? Why can't she see reason? She's a woman, isn't she? Uh, I just want a quick word with the niece. Uh, why don't you ask her to join well, us? Well, take a minute. Hiya. Dan, I thought you were working late. Well, I've got a couple of hours off. Is that it, love? Uh, Dan? No, no, I'm without this. That's it. OK. Do you want to sit down? Yeah. Saying this morning, you know, about uh, about them phone calls. What do you mean exactly? Look, I don't want this to go any further, because someone could get into trouble, big trouble. But if what Hanif says is right, our hoax's days are numbered. Why? But uh, how can he be so sure if he's got nothing to do with it? Look, if I wasn't totally convinced about Hanif at first, I certainly am now. He's hardly likely to put himself in the firing line, is he? Firing line? Hanif has a friend, and he reckons it's possible to trace every call made to my phone. Going back quite far, too. Oh, come on. What he reckons? We can't... We can't do that. I didn't say it was legal, but it seems it is possible. Do you realise what you're getting into here? You could be the one in big trouble. I don't care. I don't care if they lock me up and chuck away the key. If we can nail the nutter who's been plaguing my life, it'll be worth it. Light tail, please, Betty. Love. Okay, my love. Hello, fellas. Hello. Right, are we having another? Uh, no, I'm all right, Couch. You plan on getting done for drunk and disorderly and top of everyone else, Steve? Well, we only have to stand there, don't we? We don't have to say it, huh? Doesn't matter. So, listen, you plan on open up later or what? No, it's not worth it, Jim. That's fine by me. And it's the only day you know Baldwin won't be coming round, isn't it? Well, yeah. right. Never mind standing by your workforce. He'll be standing as far away as he can get. Mm. Right, I'm off. Getting changed. Yeah, see you. Hey, see you later. Later. We'll make sure they just don't start without me, won't we? <laughs> Fat chance. Steve, wait! Look, I know you said you didn't want me to come, but I really want to. Please. Well, it's only sentencing, Vicky. It's not some great courtroom battle. I know it isn't, but I just want to be there. 
Yeah, go on. Vouchers? Yes, that 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 Brendan Scott dished out, you know, in the Tadda Corner shop before he went and died. Oh, I remember him. Van oh, vouchers. Yes, he gave out Christmas vouchers. Yeah. I wanted to take mine in, but I mean, I've obviously want to know about it. You'll have to take them. I've got a bag full of you. That's what chuck them away, love, for all the good they're going to do you. Yeah? Look. I'm going to court to see Steve. Oh, great. I'll keep my fingers crossed for me, love. Yeah. If we lock him up for ten years, she'd still be waiting. Yeah, well, she might be till the first visiting day when she finds out she's not the only one. Oh. Funny thing is, I don't feel helpless anymore. I suppose it's because I'm actually doing something, fighting back. Yeah, but what happens if you find out where all these calls have been made from? Yeah. And they're all phone boxes? Well, then you'd be no nearer, would you? I just don't think that's going to happen. They didn't sound like they're all from phone boxes. I just wondered if you could tell me what would happen if someone were getting, you know, uh, nuisance phone calls and they wanted them tracing. Is that something you could do? Rosie, OK? Yeah. Vera said we can keep her there as long as we like. OK, yeah, well, as long as you don't try and explain to her everything what's going on. Yeah, well, Rosie's too young to understand, even if she did. Uh, right, I'll do a look. You look like a smashing husband and a father and the last man in the world who should be sent to prison. Hey, I'm not going to prison. Yeah, well, you better not. Uh, Steve McDonald's the one who's got to worry about prison, innit? Don't forget, this is his second offence. And he's going to stand there saying it was all his fault. Well, it was! Yeah, I know, but it's not everyone who'll stand up in court and say that, is it? Which is what he'll be doing. Have you been drinking? No. So we'll go drinking before I'm due in court. Yeah, well, I should hope not. Yeah, I would be on my way to prison now, wouldn't I? Eh? As it is, £400 fine maximum, which Steve McDonald says he's still going to pay. Well, I think you should let him, Kev. I do, honest. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Rolf. Hey, have a bone to pick with your boss. Where is he? Alf! Hey, you've turned 60. No, I have not. Well, it won't be so far off, will it? And when you do, remember this. It's folks like me that have fought your battles. What battles? About these here vouchers. Oh, no, no. Look, those vouchers have got no to do with me. Oh, yes, they have. I got them from the shop. Yeah, but not from me. From Brendan Scott. Yes, but surely, Alf, if you took over Brendan Scott's business, you took over his responsibilities She's as well. She's right. She is not right. And if you don't mind my saying so, Ivy, this has got no to do with you, hasn't this? I've got a right to my own opinion. <laughs> yes, she has. Look, Brendan Scott issued those vouchers. Now, if you want them redeeming, don't come in here. Take him down to cemetery. He's not in the cemetery. He was cremated. Yeah, well, they should have thrown those blessed vouchers in after him. I'm not arguing anyway. If you want to buy anything in this shop, you pay coin of the realm. <laughs> I'm not interested in glorified cloakroom tickets. How much are they worth, these tickets, then, anyway? 50p each. Well, it's not as if there's a fortune at stake, is there? Eh, many the time I've been gonna clean my purse out and throw these away. But not now. Ooh, definitely not. I feel more scared than if it was me being sentenced. Oh, Salak. Stop worrying about Kev. He's gonna be fine, all right? Is that big buck agent of a son of mine they're gonna come down on like a ton of bricks, believe me? Not, are they? Well, I mean, what I mean is if they were going to. But they're probably not. Oh, no, don't take it from me. I'm no legal expert, OK? If, if Steve does go to prison, though, which one will he go to? Look, let's not, let's not speculate on that, OK? Let's just hope he's going to go home with his mother, all right? Who will? Steve. I'm just telling Vicky to look on the bright side, you know? Oh, yeah. Hi, Sal. Hi, Liz. So where are they? Have they taken them in already? No, not yet. No, they've gone to see the solicitors and the barristers. Yeah, have a bit of a consultation, you know. So that's right, who's going to say what when they get in there? Oh, here they are. All right, man. Yeah. Well, they still think the same. Well, at least mine does anyway. What, a fine? Yeah, I don't even know yet. Why? What did they say? Not a lot. So it might be a fine community service or even jail. Hey, right, now just hold on a minute, all right? Hold your horses. You're just guessing here the same as the rest of us, right? There's only one person whose opinion counts, right? And that's your man sat in the middle with a wig on. You understand me? Well, what I don't get is why they need the barristers again. They've already done their bit. Well, we don't. It's them that needs the money, innit? Oh, don't be clever, Steve. This is really serious. Apparently, they're just going to say a few words before the judge passes sentence, you know, try and make him go easy. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any word from Tracy? Nope. Oh, dear. But I'll tell you something I wouldn't tell anybody else. You remember the state I was in last time she went, practically on the points of collapse? Well, no different from any other caring mother. Well, thanks for the reference, but I think you might want to tear it up when I tell you that this time, although I hope I'm still caring, I'm certainly not despairing the way I were. <laughs> I get it. She went away once and managed to survive. I'm sure she can do it again. I'm sure she can. Ah, Ken, yes. ah, now you'll know. Does that? Read right. Uh, well, it uh, it makes the point. Yeah, but there's yeah. no spelling mistakes, no punctuation. Oh, well, not that I can see. No. Well, if you can't see it, nobody else who comes in here will. <laughs> right. Well, uh, let me know if there's anything I can do. You could come to tea if you like. Only if you want to. It doesn't matter. Oh, I do. No, oh, that'll be very nice. Thank you. It won't be anything special. Just whatever I manage to conjure up. All oh, right. Well, what time do you want me? About six. Terrific. Bye. Bye. Right. I think that's clear enough. It is. Yeah, well, let's hope it stops some moaning. What I would ask the court to accept is that this was not a conspiracy in the dictionary sense of the term, something entered into willingly and knowingly. What it was was the desperate attempts of two young men to extricate themselves from a difficult situation. Not conspiring so much as panicking. Mr Webster is a family man of good character. He bitterly regrets his involvement in this, and I would urge Your Honour to treat him with leniency. Your Honour, unless I can be of any further assistance. Thank you, Mr Hawkins. Your Honour has <coughs> already ruled on the traffic charges facing my client. Therefore, in my submission, we need concern ourselves only with the charge of conspiracy. The result of panicking rather than conspiring? Well, perhaps, yes. Understandable panic on the part of Mr. McDonald, who was then only 17 and had just crashed an expensive motor car. But Mr. Webster, however, was in a more difficult position, being some 10 years his senior, and what's more, Mr. McDonald's employer, his boss, the man from whom he took orders. Just as Mr. McDonald took orders from Mr. Webster where the garage was concerned, no doubt he took orders from him in this business as well. It was in Mr. Webster's interests to keep his nose clean with the garage owner, whose car it was that had got damaged. And anyway, as the older man, in a position of authority, surely he has to carry the greater responsibility for what happened. Not the traffic offences, no, of course not. But they're dealing now with the charges of conspiracy, the lying to the police. Your Honour, I submit that in this, Mr. Webster was the prime mover, and Mr. MacDonald no more than the accessory. Too frightened of losing his job to question what he was being told to do by the older man. Your Honour. Hello, hello, hello. And who's this here? It's Rosie. You know who it is. Hey, I know. Oh, come and see your boyfriend, hey. love you, Rosie. Hey. She's come while her mother goes to see her dad in court. Ah, uh, doing the rose at dinner time, huh? And do we not mind? Hey. How do you be? Well, we don't want our Tommy mixing with the daughter of some criminal, do we? How can you say that when our Tom Joke, was... Vera, just a joke. Yeah, well, it wasn't very good, was it? No, well, it's hanging on to a sense of humour, eh? It's one of the few things we've got left. Poor Sally, she, you know, she was scared to death, wondering what he'd get. Yeah. Well, he won't get sent to prison. I can promise you that, not Kevin. Blokes like our Terry that get sent to prison. Uh, so he can tell Rosie her dad won't be going to prison because he's your daddy that's already in there. Don't be saying that to him. Oh, he knows anyway. We've had some long talks, me and him, so what are you known out about? And don't be saying up to Sally either when she comes to collect her. No, yeah, well, darling. No There's well. no joke, you know. She thinks it's end at will, just been in court. Never mind what sentence could be. I have listened to the arguments on both sides, and the first thing I must remind this court is that conspiracy to pervert the course of justice may sound like a technicality in fact. It is a very serious charge, which often carries a prison sentence. Though I feel that would not be appropriate for either defendant on this occasion. Stephen MacDonald, it has been pointed out to me that you are considerably younger than your co-conspirator and that you were, at the time, dependent on him for your employment. Be that as it may, it was you who drove the car without a license and who then lied to the police officer who attended the scene of the accident. This can hardly be put at Webster's door. Taking your recent 
record into account, I sentence you to 200 hours community service. Kevin Webster, you may feel that you were drawn into this against your will. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you were certainly older than Stephen MacDonald and in a position of authority over him. You must therefore bear considerable responsibility for what happened. For this reason, I have decided to fine you 800 pounds. to get it from, eh? Just make it up, did I? Uh, all right, all right. Maybe I said something about our ages. Well, I didn't know he was going to blow it out of proportion, did I? Anyway, what does it matter yeah, now? Look, exactly. You're both going home. That's what matters. Yeah. Look, you said you'd take all the blame. That when we got to court, you'd say it was all your doing. Yes, you did. Well, I tried to, <laughs> didn't I? Funny. I didn't hear that. All I heard was that it was all my fault, cos I'm older. I'm the boss. Oh, and it was me that told him to say that then, was it? Well, someone did. Yes, but look, look, look listen, listen. Look, he didn't take any notice, all right? Well, I'm sorry, Jim, because he did. He said it himself at the end. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but it didn't affect their sentence, did it? Look, Kev has only got a five, right? What do you mean, just? How much does he have to pay, eh? I've got community service. Yeah. Anyway, I'll pay you fine. I no, said I will. you won't, Steve. Because I don't want anything to do with you ever again, all right? Come on, Kev. No. Steve, I'll pay me own fine. I just don't want out else to do with you. Kevin! Sally. So? Sally. So. Hey, Stephen. Well, what can I do? I mean, I've offered to pay, haven't I? You can't do anything. Look, just leave him be, right? Let him um, cool off or something, yeah? Uh, right, look, what about, a, what about a cup of coffee, eh, by way of a celebration or something? Come on, come on, bye. Hi, do you want a coffee? Uh, no, chat, I just want a quick word about this telephone business. Oh, you don't. Uh, I love it. Uh... Come through back. What about it? I rang the operator. Now, I didn't let on who I was talking about. I just asked in general terms how they trace calls. And? They say you've got to go through police. Look, Don, I told you. Hanif has got this pal who works where they've got the computer in Manchester and he's doing it as a favour. Yeah, supposing he gets found out? He won't be. Uh, look, when what last call he got? A couple of days. So maybe... He's got fed up. Or she has. He, she, they've got fed up. So, maybe it's better to let sleeping dogs lie. Because what you're doing, you're asking for all kinds of trouble. From police, from telephone company, everybody. Don, I don't know whether you can understand this, but just the knowledge that I'm going after them instead of them coming after me is wonderful. Yeah, but supposing it all goes wrong? It won't. Just got this feeling that whoever's behind this, we're very close to flushing them out. Very close. They've been playing ever so nicely. Oh. Oh. Out the jar. Oh, I love I. Hey, hey, listen, love, you want a cup of tea? Um, no, thanks, Vera. I'll just take Rosie home. So, what happened in court then? Um, well, Kevin got a fine and Steve got community service. Yeah. Community yeah. service? Oh, no, yeah. I don't really know what it is. So, so neither of them got prison life. No. Oh, do you know, we're really glad for you, love. Cos we know what prison involves, don't we, Jack? Oh. We won't wish it on anybody. Well, the fine was more than Kevin expected. In fact, he's gone back to work. He said he wouldn't. He said he was going to take the rest of the afternoon off, but... Oh, look, she's so upset. <laughs> Why did you go and have to ask her? Cos I wanted to know. Do you want to go in for a room, love? It's more private in there. No, thanks, Vera. I'll just take Rosie home. Come on, darling. Oh. Hey, well, listen, love, if there's all else we can do, you know, you've only got to ask. Yeah, thanks, Vera. Thanks again. Mm. We're really glad for him. You know, your hair doesn't look that much different from this morning. Why should it? Well, it's just that I happened to notice you coming out of that hairdresser's this afternoon. Oh, I did, right. 
Which I suppose you'll say is none of my business. I called to see that hairdresser, as you call her, because she's been getting funny phone calls. Somebody ringing up and then not speaking. Uh huh? Which may seem not to you, but to a woman like that on her own, it can be very upsetting. And just where do you come into all this? Well, I've been finding out what she can do about it. You see, she's trying to trace these calls, find out who's making them. And once she's managed that, what's she going to do? Oh, well, that could be very serious. Whoever's behind it could be prosecuted. Well, it'd only be her word against theirs, wouldn't it? Uh, did she take all her clothes, or...? Oh, no, there's a load still upstairs. Mm. All the stuff she didn't want. Oh, no, last year's fashions. <laughs> last week's. Still, I suppose you'd be glad to be without Craig. That is the silver lining, a Craig-free house. Funny lad, isn't he? I mean, you can't really get through to him. Cool, laid back. For which read self-centred and pig ignorant. Mm. No, sorry, shouldn't have said that. That's not really fair. Oh, why do we have to be fair? He's the enemy. He's taken our daughter away. And is that why we hate him? Yes. Well, Healthy reaction, I suppose. I don't know. I... But I... I just hope she's happy, that's all. Yeah, so do I. And if he can make her happy... Oh, then well... I'll instantly revise my opinion. He'd be my hero, the finest young man of his generation. He'd be my hero as well. <laughs> right, let's see about eating, shall we? Right. Say hello. love. Offer visit, please. Uh, have you got your trimmings up yet? No, I don't think we shall this year. No, Mrs. Bishop got too much on her plate. Far too much, if you ask me. Here, just the man. Oh, what is it now? Have you told Percy what that Alf Roberts has been up to? I haven't, no. Well, I've just been in this street to me exactly the same as he treated you. I suppose I should be pleased it were not personal. Uh, well, I'll get these and I'll have a lie too. I can pay for my own, thank you. I might as well pay for hers as well. Oh, thank you. You're a gentleman, isn't he, Betty? A gentleman, that's what we need to be our champion, a gentleman. No, well, well I'm just sorry, Kevin, just, you know, upset about it, but I mean, I'll tell you what, I don't think it was Stephen's fault at all, right? Yeah. It's just his barrister doing what he was paid for and he's doing it better than the other better, man did yeah. his job, you know what I mean? So is Steve completely off the hook, then? Mm -hmm. No, he's not at all. He's got 200 hours community service, so he has. What's that, like, like picking up litter and that? No, no, I gather it could be all kinds of things. Well, it's not sewing mailbags in prison, though, is it? Yes, no. it's not sewing mail. Hello, love. Oh, uh, well, can I have a gin and tonic, please, yeah. and uh, a pint for Ginger? Oh, cut yourself on. You don't have to be getting me. No, go on, I'd like to. a pint. I'll take a yeah. pint, then, I. So, um, how did Steve get on, then? Well, I'm just telling these two here, he got 200 hours community service, and, well, Kevin got an 800 pound fine, so he did. Oh, well, I suppose it uh, could have been worse. It could have been a hell of a lot worse, I'll tell you this. I was relieved, so it was. Yeah, well, I'm sure Mike will be too. He wanted to be there, actually, but uh, he got a bit caught up busy, with business. Busy man, I. Yes, but I'm, I'm sure he'd be glad to hear it wasn't any worse, anyway. Well, you might think it was when he hears the full story. Why? Well, he got, he got the 200 hours community service for the conspiracy charge, right? Mm -hmm. But he also he had the traffic offences as well, didn't he? Oh, aye. So he got a £200 fine and he got a six-month loss of his licence. Does that mean he can't drive? It certainly does. He cannot drive. Well, that's going to play havoc with his love life, isn't it? That's 274 to... Well, it's not actually his love life I'm concerned with. It's whether or not this lady's husband will want to employ him again. Oh, yes, I'm sure. I'm, uh, I, I, I'm sure Matt will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't commit yourself to that. Not until you've spoken to him anyway, all right? Hey, I don't. I'm surprised that Councillor Roberts taking up this sort of attitude with long-standing customers as well. Mm. Ah, well, we're pensioners and he thinks he can push us about. He must know. When he took over that business, when he bought the business, he got the assets and the liabilities, and you two ladies are part of the liabilities. Oh, well, thank you very much. I mean, by the way, of these vouchers, that's all. Does that mean you're going in there to sort him out for us, love? Well, I wouldn't mind saying a few words on your behalf, if that's what you're asking. Oh, thank you, Percy, lad. So, is there nobody um, significant in your life at the moment? No. I reckon I'm too old. Past it. Oh, come on. If you're too old, where does that leave me? Is there anybody in your life? No. Nope. There you are. We're both past it. Maybe we should be asking Tracy for advice instead of condemning her for going wrong. Back to her again, are we? It is difficult not to worry a bit, isn't it? I mean, 16. You like to think they're going to manage 18 before they're up and away. Would you like a drink? No. no I mustn't. Really, this has been absolutely marvellous, but I've got a stack of reports. OK. 
Anyway, let me help clear this up. Oh, no, if you're going to go, just go. Don't think you can clear your conscience by helping to clear a few dishes away. <laughs> OK, but thanks. And next time, at my place, I'll OK? I look forward to that. Bye. Bye, love. I mean, Ken. Funny how some habits never quite fade away. Nice, though. Can't drive me car. I've got to pay my own fine. And on top of all that, I've got to pay Kev's fine as well. Oh, he said he'd pay that himself. Well, he did say he didn't want anything from you ever again. Yeah, well, that's not you meant it, then. Eh? Still got 200 hours community service, though, you know. I'd just rather they send me to jail. Oh, yeah. We well, can just sit around in there, can't you? I mean, I've got to work weekends, evenings, probably lose me job, no money. Steve! Right, I won't be a minute. <sighs> See you in a bit. Alison. All right, yeah. Only, I think you could decide just do it as you're going out with. You might not mind two-timing Vicky, but I mind when I'm having to lie to her and all. Yeah, yeah. Hiya, it's me. Eh? Well, the good news is I'm not getting deported to Australia or anything, but... Oh, it's really getting to him. What with losing his licence and everything. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, who's he got to blame? Himself, I know. Still, you can't help but feel sorry for him, can you? I might have dried up a bit because I had to keep it warm. All right. I'm not hungry. Kevin, you've got to eat something. I mean, why you had to go back to work at all, I'll never know. Because we need the money. That's why I went to work. And that's why I'll be working for the rest of my life, because we need the money. Why you don't just... What? I don't just what? Let Steve pay it. <sighs> Sorry. I'm not letting Steve pay. Don't you understand anything? I mean, it was you who taught me into helping Steve in the first place. And when I did and got myself landed in court, what did you want then, eh? I want another baby. I mean, don't you think I work hard enough? I mean, do you want me to go over there and open up now? In fact, I'll do that. I mean, I'll go over there and open up now. Because what's the point in me being here when I could be working, eh? No! I must be a soft touch employing criminal. I'm not a criminal, Michael. Oh, no, I don't mean you and me. No, we're the only ones with clean sheets around here. I'm talking about Kevin and that son of yours. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Kevin not in, then? No, not yet. I should imagine he'll be here in a minute. I reckon he got off light. Sally must be as chuffed as I am. 800 quid, late. I tell you what, that'll take some finding. Never we carry the feed and clothe, you know. Played a blinder, that son of yours, by all accounts. Look, if you're suggesting that Stephen got together with his solicitor to stitch up Kevin, you've another thing coming. I'm just saying he dropped me in it. Your name wasn't mentioned. I should think not. Look, he got a £200 fine and a bucket load of community service. If you ask me, he stitched himself up, OK? Community service? What's that? Showing old ladies across the road? Don't need a driving licence for that, do you? Yeah, all right. Look, why don't you go and ask Steve? I, I... will. Like I said, he played a blinder. Eat this before you go. No time. Oh, Kevin, you're being childish. Am I? And unfair. I mean, blame me if you like, but that's not going to help anybody, is it? No, it's not. I can't see what your problem is. Steve MacDonald has offered to pay you fine. Huh. He drops me in it and then offers to pay me out, and that's all right, is it? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah, well, I've a right. My life's going nowhere. I'm a rubbing rag. A doormat people step on. Does that include me? Listen to your dinner. Like a flaming bird. Well, no more, because I'm flaming sick of it. Ah, yeah. Well, I'm sick of it and all. I'm sick of your moaning and your whinging and leaving your flaming breakfast. Do you think I want to live like this? Do you think I want to find eight hundred pounds that we haven't got? Morning, kid. 
Could have been worse, Kevin. You could have been sewing mailbags this morning. Get stuff. Yeah, nice fellow, now you sit down there. Yeah. Be a good girl. Do some oh. colouring for your mum. There you go, love. Good girl. Oh, Come on. Another pen. Yeah. Oh, you want to talk about it? No. <laughs> Kevin got fined. It's just upset, that's all. I see. Look, um, Jonathan's had this idea. He wants to take Rosie out and celebrate her birthday. Well, that's not till next week. Yeah, we won't be here next week, will we? So why don't we celebrate her birthday today? Hey? Hey, how does burger and chips grab you, eh? Yeah! yeah. I can't, Joe. Oh, well, come on, Sally. Owe me a couple of days. It'll only take a quick call. Well, you can't say no now. You'd be depriving the kids of a party. You're not in the mood. Well, not now, you know, but we intend to change all that, don't we? Yeah. Muriel? Yeah, it's Joe Broughton. Uh, listen, love, I'm not going to be in work today. No, no. Uh, something important's come up. I'm needed elsewhere. Oh! Oh, oh Ivy! Are you going to work? No, I'm going to town. I've got a few more Christmas presents to sort out. Oh, I just wanted a quick word with John. You know, I wanted to book him for Monday, you know, to bring our Terry home. But, well, he's not there, love, at the moment, but I can tell him for you. Hey, it won't be busy, will it? Cos it'll be early, about 8 o'clock. No, I'm sure that'll be OK. Oh. That's if he's not across there helping her. Oh? Denise, she's forever asking to help her out. Well, she's between fellas, isn't she? If she had a fella of her own, she wouldn't be borrowing other people's. Who else is she borrowing besides Don? Well, I've seen her chatting Jim MacDonald up, you know. Mind you, he's not a soft touch, is he? Like you're Don. Vera, Don is soft with everybody except me. Anyway, I'll tell him you want him money, and if there's any snags, I'll let you know, all right? Oh, tell love. Do you know, I can't wait to see our Terry with that little lad. Oh, well, they've a lot of lost time to make up, haven't they? Do you know, I've looked forward to the Christmas as much as this for ages. See ya. See ya, love. Do you want to tell Kevin where we're going? No. Bag on my bed. Some tight people in my time, Alf Roberts, but you make a fish's bum look like Mersey Tunnel. Look, you can insult me as much as you like, Mrs Pierce, but those vouchers are not my responsibility. They're as dead as the man who issued them. I shouldn't be too hasty, Councillor. I've collected these from pensioners all over this area, including Mrs Pierce and Mrs Turpin, and I think you'll agree they are valued customers. So now you're threatening with a boycott, are you? I'm threatening you with nothing. I am. I'd spit in his eye. <sighs> now, look, just imagine that these vouchers are raffle tickets. But they're not the food vouchers. No, 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 I said imagine. Now, the fellow who sends you these raffle tickets, he disappears, right? He dies, he goes away. Now, you wouldn't expect the raffle to go on now, would you? Depends how many tickets you bought. That's irrelevant. It wouldn't be if you won. Well, how could it go ahead if those... Which side are you on, anyway? Come on, Mrs Pierce, we're obviously wasting our time. Well, it's plan B now, and don't say I didn't warn you. What's plan B, do you think? I couldn't care less. I'm not responsible in vouchers, and they know it. So where would he get the money to pay the fine? Oh, I don't know. It's not just the money, it's... Well, it's the way things have been going for Kevin. He feels let down. His life's not going anywhere. Well, he doesn't know when he's well off, does he? I mean, he's still got you and Rosie. Yeah, well, you never look at what you've got, do you? You look forward to getting something else, something better, even though you don't even know what it is. What about Sally? What does she want? Well, I thought I got all I wanted. It's not a lot, I know, but... Well, it's better than I had. My life was a mess before I met Kevin. My mum did her best, but... Well, my dad used to drink a lot. We had more houses than you could count. More schools and all. Or when I ever bothered going. <laughs> and I swore then that... If I ever had children of my own, I wouldn't put them through what me and my sister had gone through. But then this morning happened and I, I found myself screaming at Kevin. Just like my mum used to scream at my dad. Well, you know my feelings, Sally, so I'm not going to risk upsetting you by repeating them, but... Well, let's just say that, unlike your mother, you do have an alternative. Move in with me. 
I love him, Joe. Do you? I, I know you think you do. And that's understandable. I mean, Kevin rescued you, didn't he? He rode into your little life and carried you off to something better. But it isn't better, is it? Look, I suppose what I'm trying to say is that... Well, it's probably not love that you feel for him. It's gratitude. A lot better quality than the stuff you sell me for the band. Yeah, well, it's reflected in the price, you see, Craig. I mean, you got them cheap because they are cheap. Just don't wear them under strong lights or something. Yeah, fancy doing us a few on approval, would you? Where now, pay later. No, 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 no. no profit in that, I'm afraid. Be a great advert for you. Be a lot of top people in my game. Yeah, well, advertising doesn't pay in my game, I'm afraid, mate. Not the way I work. Suit yourself. Be in touch. He looks familiar. Where have I seen him before? That's um, Tracy Barlow's boyfriend. So what can I do for you, Mr Baldwin? Not a lot. That's what I come to see you about. This driving ban that the judges slapped on you. Yeah, only got six months. Yeah, I know. Yeah, half a year. Not much good to us, is it? Not with you. All right, well, I'll rephrase myself. You are not much good to me. Are you with me now? Yeah, well, I can't make deliveries yet. No, no, So If you want to give in your notice, I, uh, I won't stand in your way. You're sacking me. It's a bit unfair, isn't it? Oh, come on. Who said anything about sacking? I never kick a man when he's down, son. No, no. You just stand on his fingers. All right, bit. don't get cheeky. Tell you what, you can stay if you like, but not at the present rate. I suggest 25% uh, cutting your wages. Take it or leave it. Right, like I said, I won't stand in your way. I'll take it. You are? Well, like I just said, I'll take it. Thanks very much, Mrs. Shellcross. Have a good one if I don't see you before. Right, I'll go get a bit of dinner now, then. Back about two. What are you doing about Christmas puddings? Well, I've had to order some more, haven't I? To be here this afternoon. Do you know, I've never sold so many as this year. It is amazing. You reckon the economy's looking up, do you? Well, mine is. <laughs> Councillor Roberts? Yes. Are you the uh, Christmas puddings? No, Mark Travers, actually, Weatherfield Gazette. Eh? Hey? We've had word that you're refusing to honour some OAP discount vouchers. I wonder if you'd care to give us your side. Plan B. So there couldn't have been any prior agreement between you and this Brendan bloke about you honouring the vouchers? Well, how could there be? I told you he snuffed it. He died on the job. I mean, here in the shop. Sounds like a bit of a non-tail to me. Well, I'm glad you think so. Normally, wouldn't give it light of day, but... Well, I can see which way my editor will jump. Well, that's supposed to mean? Well, it's Christmas, isn't it? So? Rich folk ripping off poor folk, charity being the loser. The Scrooge scenario, Mr Roberts. Always good copy. Like I say, normally wouldn't publish, Now, but... look. There's laws of libel in this country, lad. Sounds as though things are getting heated. With the best will in the world, I can't see it being Alf's fault. I mean, it was Brendan Scott who started all this. Try telling that to Percy and Phyllis. <laughs> Anyway, keep me posted. Right, I will. Bye. Bye. Now, I've given you the facts. If there's a victim, it's me. Keep your shirt on, Mr Roberts. This is just an exploratory interview. We don't just jump into these things willy-nilly, you know. We check things out, do a bit of research. Probably won't even see light of day, all this. See ya. Bye. Mm. You better not. I'm telling you. <sighs> Be honest, Deirdre. Am I being unreasonable? No, no, you're not. I Alf. mean, if I was going to cheat anybody, it wouldn't be old age pensioners. No, it wouldn't. I mean, my reputation depends on it. My business depends on it. Relax, Alf. I mean, like that reporter said, it probably won't go any further. Anyway. Hold the vouchers up so we can see them. That's it. Hey, what's going on here? Contingency plan, Mr Roberts. Just in case we publish, that's all. Now, if you could stand in between Mrs Pierce. I'm not standing nowhere, and neither is this lot. Come on, shift. Hey, I did warn you, you know. It's a public highway, this council. I said shift on your bikes. About time. I expected you earlier. Sorry, I've got a business to run. Come through. Have you got it? Yeah. But before I give it to you, you've got to promise. To say nothing to nobody, I know. I mean it, Denise. This isn't a case of someone losing their job. Someone can end up in court. OK. I promise. Names, dates, times and numbers. 
Well, you haven't got an address. It's a public call box. When you found what you're looking for, I want it back. I knew. I bloody knew. So, you're back? Yes, I'm back. Well, so where's Rosie? She's in bed. She's tired. So where did they take you? Park? Holiday cottage? A burger bar, actually. Now, will you please plug that in? I've got work to do. So what was you doing? Crying on his shoulder, telling him what a pain in the backside I am? No. I bet. We talked about the children, if you must know. Jonathan won't be here next week when Rosie's birthday, so we celebrated it today, OK? So why didn't you mention it to me? I'm only across the street. You're a lot further away than that, Kevin. Yeah. Not far enough. Right, I'll get back now, I know you're safe. Have you had any dinner? Hey, a pie at Alf's. Would you want a sandwich before you go? Well, just keep it, eh? And keep tea as well. I'll go to the Rovers. Suit yourself! Ooh. Oh, it's you. If you want to see Don, he's at work. It's you I want to speak to, Ivy. Oh, do come in. Close the door if you don't want your neighbours to hear. What is it? You don't know? I found out, love. I found out who's been making my life a misery these past few weeks. So what's he going to do then, you old Terry? Try and find a job round here? I'm trying being a soul, I do we doing it at your place? Oh, no. No, no, we're very slack after Christmas, Jack. And if you remember, Better Buys was the scene of his uh, unfortunate incident. What was that? He was arrested by the police when he was on the run. Oh, I remember. I, I, I. Bear Grudge is your place, doesn't it? No, no, it does might complicate the application form. Oh, I see. Yeah. But, you see, if there's anybody who can do anything for him, Curly, it's you, lad. I mean, you and our Terry, you, you go back a long time, don't you? Jack, I can't get him a job. I appreciate that, of course I do. How do you feel about the banner, then? What banner? For Monday morning. From your bedroom window to ours, across the wall. Welcome home, Terry. Vera did mention it to you, didn't you? Yes, Con, what was it, banner bit? What's happening to Tracy at Christmas? No idea. I haven't heard from her. Mind, I'm hardly likely to after what went on. Ah, she's all right, Ken. Still selling her flowers. Yeah, I know. I drove past the shop this afternoon, glimpsed her through the window. I saw Craig, too, today. At the shop? No, he was going to that T-shirt place across the road. I think he was doing business at Baldwin. Oh, Steve more like on the fiddle. Well, if, uh, if Tracy isn't coming at Christmas, then you're at a loose end. Oh, loose end. I tell you, after Craig and Tracy, a loose end would be a relief. Well, uh, I said if. Um, we could book Christmas dinner somewhere, save on the plates and cutlery. I was thinking of going to my mum's, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I forget I spoke. It was only a suggestion. Probably be too late now, anyway. Everywhere will be booked up. Yeah, yeah. Mind you, you could always try ringing round. I will, if you like. No strings, I swear. No ulterior motive. As long as I don't have to pull a wishbone. <laughs> You've no right coming into my house accusing me of things like this. I'm missing, damn you! I've got proof! Proof? Proof? What? Show me a proof. Date, times, and this phone number. Show me. Or better still show the police. Go on, ring them. Because if you won't, I will, lady. You've got a nerve. I'll say that for you, Ivy. Or are you so eaten away by jealousy? You're sick. Not sick enough to hide behind silence as far as you're concerned. You. <laughs> You'd set your cap at anything in trousers, wouldn't you? That's it, isn't it? You think I'm after your husband? My God! Well, I hope it's made you feel better, Ivy, because you've put me through hell, you are! And it's not that you want! It's me, Denise. I did it. What? Don, you don't know what you're saying. I don't want you here for this, Ivy. I can't be you. You help me. Don, Listen, Denise, don't, don't listen to what he says. Look, Don, if you're just saying this to protect her. I'm not protecting her. I'm admitting it, OK? It was me. And it's over. Don't, she says you lent her money. I told you to go, Ivy. No! Why? 
I want to know why. You wouldn't understand. Try me. It was you, Denise. While it was happening, you needed me, didn't you? I had to make it happen. I've got no choice. Well, you were my friend, for God's sake. Friend, yeah. I couldn't be more, though, could I? You're mad. No. I'm what you made me, Denise. You're not making sense! I never did, did I? Because you never understood. You couldn't see. First it was Neil, then Aniff. How many more before you noticed me? Eh? I can't believe I'm hearing this. Try not to hate me. I hate myself enough already. You terrorised me. I'm sorry. It was just a means to an end. Are you saying that you did this to me because you loved me? That's to stay close to you any way I could. Just try and make the best of it. I, I tried to kill myself once, not left to live for so I thought. And then, like a fool, I found something. Oh, my God. I can't forgive you. No. Do what you've got to do. Call the police. Oh. No, Denise. Denise. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not been well. He's not been well. Oh, oh. Hello, How are you? I'm fine. I'm doing for ages. Oh, busy. busy. What's it like? A bit cold in the middle. Good old dude. Oh, I'm sorry, son. Ten years late. Raquel's gone to the pictures, we bet. I'll give it another circuit of the microwave if you want. No, you're all right, Jack. Yeah, good lad. How many of these vouchers are there? Well, there could be thousands. Don't exaggerate, Al. Well, Percy had 70. Might be in your best interest to pay up. Well, give way to blackmail. Hey, you should have seen those Desmond. Percy won't stab on me, I'm told. Oh, get it for him, Phyllis. Pride of place. Oh, that being stabbed in the back. I won't forget this, you know. I hope you're not blaming me. It was Mr Sugden who called in the press. Oh, yeah? Where's he at this time? On news at 10. At church with Bernard. Planning the great food distribution. Could be jumping the gun. According to Alf, there isn't going to be one. Too right. <laughs> Hold on, we might be front page news on Monday. Yeah, that's if they're published, but I've warned them. They put out bad about me, I'm suing. Give over, I bet he looks right lovely on those pictures. I must admit he does dress smart. <laughs> you know, I told Steve I was cutting his money and he didn't turn a hair. Strange, that, isn't it? Well, don't you feel a bit responsible? About what? Well, for not stepping in when Kevin pretended to be Steve. I mean, it was all done for your convenience, you know. I'm an employer, not a nursemaid. Well, it's that young man I feel sorry for. I mean, how are Sally and Kevin going to find 800 quid? Well, it doesn't stop him eating out, does it? Hmm? You're all right. Well, I mean, police can trace anonymous phone calls now, can't they? She didn't call in the police. Reckon she knows who it is. Oh. I ain't got a clue, but I do know that she came in tonight and dead upset. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe she saw him. Oh, it's a terrible business, especially for a woman on her own. You avoiding me, or what? You surprised? Oh, come on, Kev. If I knew he was going to say that, I'd have stopped him, wouldn't I? Yeah, but you didn't. No. Anyway, listen, boarding's cut me wages, so it's going to be a bit... Look, tight. Steve, I don't want you paying me fine, even if you want the pools. They get stuffed, eh? <laughs> well, Kev's in a right mood, isn't he? I keep telling him it's not my fault, but he won't accept it. It's your mood that puzzles me, son. Yeah. Oh, he's young. Money's not important to him. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy you a drink. Jack, um, can I have a scotch for Mr Baldwin? Uh, whatever Mrs Baldwin wants, and I'll have a pint, please. Tell love, you can't go condemning yourself. She set you on. She encouraged you. I know things here haven't been right, but... I'm not surprised that she took you... Don't make excuses for me. I knew what I was doing. No, that's just it, Dan. You didn't. I did. Understand that, Ivy. I did. 
It was the money, Dan. She took you on for the money, that's what it was. She said you said you loved her. But you couldn't love her, Dan. You're a married man. You can't just keep going round, going off with other... Dan. Dan, love. Talk to me. Talk to me. I've got a right. Dan. You can't love her. You can't love her, Don. I'm your wife. Don! Don! You can't love her! You can't love her! You can't love her, Don! I'm your wife! I am your wife! I'm your wife! I'm your wife! I'm your... Can I get you any breakfast? Are you feeding me now? Last night you were off for killing me. I shouldn't have done that, I'm sorry. Look, Don, I, I've been thinking... Um, I think you need to get help, love. I'm past help. Same way as I'm past everything no, else. No, you're not, Don. Look, look, love, sit down, I'll get something for you. A couple of fried eggs oh, or something. Oh, come on, Ivy, don't solve anything going through motions. Breakfast, tea, dinner. Come out, go in, go to bed, get up. There's just... There's just no point after what I've come to. Well, I think there is a point in it, Dom. Going through the motions, picking up the pieces, because whatever you've done, life's still got to go on. Why? Well, because it has. You can't just... Oh, my God, how did we get into this mess? Two years ago, three years ago, we were all right. You thought we were. I'm sure we were. What happened to us, Don? Maybe we're poisoned to each other. I bring out the worst in you, you bring out the worst in me. Now, listen here, you know I don't understand that sort of language. It... Don, I'm sorry. Look, go on, you, you, you talk. Talk as much as you want, love. And I'll listen. And, and I promise you, I, I will try and understand. No, you're, you're right. It doesn't mean anything. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I never meant to put you through this, Ivy. I should have made a better job of piling up the car. I made a mess of killing myself, just like I made a mess of everything else. See, what it is, you see, I'm... I'm fed up of being me. I can't stand myself anymore. I want it straight. You won't get it dead straight, go bloody park here. But up your end a bit. Up, I say. Can we get this finished, please? Oh, how do you sweat you? I want it right. I would just like to point out, Vera, that most of the time these days, you're not even talking to me because of the, uh, shall we call it, the incident at Better Buys. But when it comes to the use of my bedroom window, it's a different story. Oh, stop moaning. I am not moaning. Oh. But seeing as at this moment in time we are talking to one another, can we please carry it on? Now, look, hold your end up just a bit. I mean, in fact, I mean, I think we both should put the past behind us. I'd like to see you shopping at Better Buys regularly again. Oh, I don't know about that. We'll have to see about it. Hey, that's right. Hold it like that. Now, look, fasten that back now. Oh, morning. 
Hayata is coming home today. Yes, I gathered that. Mm. I dare say you'd be pleased to see him and all. <laughs> oh, well, it takes a mother to love some folk. What do you mean by that? I, I'm talking to you. Leave it, Vera. Anyway, it's time you were going. Oh, I don't. Brennan's ruin is there. I better give him a shout. Morning, love. Hey, Atter, he comes home today. I don't think you know him, do you? What's that with her, snotty cow? It's me, eh? We're all ready. I'm sorry, Vera. I, I don't know what you mean. Well, Dan is driving me to prison to be carteriot when he comes out. It's all arranged. What do you mean? Well, I booked him. It's all settled. But he's ill, Vera. He can't do anything today, love. No, he's, he's, he's poorly. Oh, don't say that. Look, I'm going to be late. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Vera. And so's done. But look, love, you're going to have to get another taxi. Sorry. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks for nothing. Dan? Dan? There's a cheque here. Come through the door. Signed Denise Osborne. Two thousand two hundred pounds. Is that what you lent her? It's what I still owe it. Well, she's giving it you back. Right. Well, she wouldn't touch my money now, would she? Don't want anything to do with me. Neither would you if it got any sense. Leetie you must see this look. It's off Robert's all over the paper. Picture of him and everything. Right. I wonder what you were touching yes, at. Look, angry OAP, slam shopkeeper Scrooge. Shopkeeper Scrooge, I'll tell you what, your man's going to love that, isn't he? Eh? Oh, mm. Councillor Roberts has trodden on our dreams, lashed one pensioner last night. War veteran, Mr. Perry Sogden. Perry? <laughs> <laughs> Got his name wrong. Ah, well, it suits him, and he gives him a bit of class, doesn't it? You know, like Perry Mason. Or Como. <laughs> the way he said, he's not just letting down the pension, he's undermining a charity effort. People will go hungry this Christmas thanks to his mean action. Mm. Well, if I was Perry Sogden, I'd keep my hair down, because when oh, Alfie hang is. Hang on. Say no. Oh. We're off. Bye, it's a grand morning. Oh, you think so, do you, Al? Yeah, well, it's bright and crisp. Yes. Well, the joys, then, are you, Alfie? Yeah, well, you've got to be, haven't you? You can't be miserable all the time, can oh, you? <laughs> certainly. I mean, it's a world full of troubles. You've only got to look at the papers, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, well, they put bad news in there. Do you know, I never read the paper till I get home at night. Oh, well, you've something to look forward to, then, haven't you? Anyway, what can I do for you? Give us a quarter of your mint humbugs. I feel like humbug this morning. There is. Over here, lad. Get in. Fancy some breakfast? The proper breakfast. Yeah. Right. Hello, Terry. How are you? I'm all right. But I'll be better. I've got a lot of catching up to do, you know? Right, well, we're waiting for Sunday. It shouldn't take long. Ain't not long now, Tommy, love. Have your daddy back, you and me, eh?
Hey. Morning, Des. I don't believe what I'm seeing here, Curly. Welcome home, Terry, and it's hanging outside your front window. Well, well, Vera asked me. I mean, what could I say? No, that's what you could have said. I thought you were a friend of Lisa's. I was thinking of Vera's feelings. She doesn't see Terry in the same way that you do. She's his mother. Yeah, but well, that's her hard luck. I put it down on paper, what we talked about. I thought it would be best. Then we all know what we're agreeing. You mean you don't trust me? No, I'm not saying that. I just think it's best that we all know where we stand. I mean, it's for Tommy's benefit, isn't it? He needs to be settled. We don't want any arguments about... Leave this to about... me, Doreen. The point being, as Tommy's dad, you're entitled to say where he should be and who's looking after him on your behalf. You don't need to go through all this rigmarole as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, there's a copy for you and a copy for us. Right. Where do we sign it? Look, you need to read it. You need to know what's in it. I mean, then you can't say that you didn't know what you were signing, OK? Now, what it is, well, it tells you. An agreement concerning the care and upbringing of Thomas Duckworth between Geoffrey Horton and Doreen Horton and Terence Duckworth. Yeah. OK. Now, you'll see that I've put your address down as our house. That'll be your sort of base, you see, if anyone's asking. Same address as little Tom. You'll be right with us, Terry. I'm sure you know that. And... And it... It is what Lisa would have wanted. Hmm. What the plain earth? This should be out by this time. Listen, I'm gonna go see what's happening. Come on, Tommy, love. We want your daddy back, don't we? And in earnest good faith, Mr and Mrs Horton agreed to pay Terence Duckworth £5,000. I thought we said six. We said five. That's it, Terry. I'm not haggling at this stage. That's a final offer. Five. OK, OK. To be followed by further payments to Terence Duckworth of £2,000 each year to be paid on Thomas Duckworth's birthday, up to and including his 16th birthday, so long as Thomas resides with and in the care of Geoffrey and Doreen Horton, his grandparents. Now, me and Doreen have already signed, so if you could uh, put your name to it. Right. And the other one. Like I say, Terry, it is the best thing. Yeah. Right, uh, where's the money? It's there. Don't you worry. You keep telling me it's there, but I haven't seen it yet. And we haven't got little Tommy yet. When you hand him over, you'll get your five grand. Well, I need a couple of days to get things organised. Until then, I'm skint. I need a bit of uh, walking about money. There's one more thing, Terry. Your mother. She's got to be told about this. She's got to know that it's what you want for little Tommy. Because I don't want her hammering on our front door, shouting the odds and demanding him back. No. I haven't been thinking about that. I've thought of it for you. So you better take care of that. Yeah. And well, like I say, uh, I need a couple of days. Right. Here's 100 quid to be going on with. You'll get the rest when we get Tommy. And I'm sure you can manage your coffee. Fiona, make us some coffees, would you, love? Yep. Yeah. OK, please. Uh, could I talk to you? Uh, I don't think there's anything to say, Ivy. Yes, I know you must be feeling, but look, uh, could I just have a word with you? Make it quick, then. I'll be back. All right. Um, you put the cheque through the door this morning. I've paid the rest back in monthly instalments. That makes us straight. Yes, well, you don't have to pay it back, not just now, not if it's inconvenient. Oh, yeah, I do. I wouldn't touch your husband's money with a ten-foot barge pole. I know how terrible it was, and I know how you must be feeling, knowing it was him. Oh, you could say that again. Well, 
Just think a bit about me, then, because I'm married to him. You don't have to be. And if you take my advice, you'll get shot of him quick. I can't do that. I mean, marriage vows, sacred marriage vows. For better or for worse. And he's ill. He needs put in right again. Are you asking me to feel sorry for him after what he did to me? No. No, I'm not asking you to feel sorry for him. I was just hoping that you might feel a bit of something for me. What do you want? What are you asking me for? Well, like I said, he's, he's not right, and I'm going to get him proper help, the best I can do. But if folk round here get to know about all this, well, there'd be no chance it'd be hopeless. So I'm asking... I'm begging. Please don't say anything to anybody. Why the hell should I do him any favours after what he put me through? It's for me. Because if he can't walk round here with holding his head up high, neither can I. You've got some nerve, Ivy. I'll say that for you. All right. It's not something I want to talk about anyway. I just as soon forget it myself. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And you will. And I don't want any of that rubbish. Mrs. Brennan want a coffee as well? No. Mrs. Brennan's just going. Dan, listen, I spoke to Denise and she's promised not to say anything to anybody but... What are you doing? I'm going away for a bit. Going away where? My daughter's. You're back, it's but done. I rang her just now. She says I'll be welcome for a few days. See Christmas over. Well, I don't think that's a good idea, Dan. I think you should spend Christmas here with your own people. Look, I've spoken to Denise and she's promised not to say anything. Love. We can come through this. If you try. I can't do things your way, Ivy. Now, surely you know that by now. I, and I know you're doing your best, but I've got to get my head straight. And I can't do that, walking up and down this street, in and out of this house. I've got to get away for a bit. Don't listen to me, please, will It's you? for the best. I'll see you when I see you. Oh, come on, Vera. You know how I tell you. Something's happened to him. I know it has. Oh, give over. He'll be in a boozer. I bet he's come out same time as some other fellow this morning and they've gone for a skin. Well, I'd do the same myself, wouldn't I? Well, you would, you. You're an animal. It's done Brennan's fault, is this? If he hadn't let me down, I'd have been there on time. Somebody to see you. Me? Hey, ma'am. Sorry. Sorry, lad. Oh, I'm... Do you know, I've been worried sick about you. No need for that. I'm here now. Everything's OK. I went to prison, you know. I wanted to be there for you. But you'd gone. I mean, where have you been? Why didn't you come straight home? Well, I... I had a bit of uh, business to sort out, that's all. Anyway, I'm home now, aren't I? Yeah, you're home now. And home for good, I hope. Aye, aye. No more bother, Terry, lad, eh? Hey, fresh start, that's the thing, innit? Yeah. That's what I want, me. Fresh start. New life. Good lad. Good lad. Uh, where's the nipper? Ah. Oh, I put him down, bless him, he was tired. I'll go get him. Oh, that's OK. As long as he's all right, uh, let the kid have his kip. Uh, he'll wake up when he's good and ready. Oh, hey, isn't that <laughs> thoughtful, eh? <laughs> I told you, thinks world of him, don't you? I bet you're hungry, aren't you? I could do a plateful. Huh? But I'll tell you what I really fancy. I could do with me old Peter taking me down the road for a pint. Well, there's no need to go to Rovers. I mean, I mean it's my night off because I knew you were due out. I mean, we can go anywhere you want. Anyway. Rovers will suit me. What's up, Dad? You're not ashamed of me, are you? <laughs> of course he's not ashamed, he, uh, He's proud of you, same as I am. <laughs> Here you go. You jammy devil. Give over, it's pure skill, that. Anyway, come on, show your hands. 
two pints, please, Betty, when you're ready. I don't know. Hello, Terry. Bet. Good to see you out and about again. Your mum's miss you. Even if nobody else has? I didn't say that. That's not what I meant, either. Two pints, please, boss. These are on me. Your mum's played a blinder this past year, looking after little Tommy. I hope you know that. It's not been easy for her. You think I've been having a cushy time all summer? Aye, act lad, you're touchy. No, I don't think you've had it cushy. But I think you might have known what you were getting into. Whereas your mum didn't have any choice. Like I said, these are on me and so are the next two. You're home, Terry, lad. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing on the slate. OK. All right, Terry. All right, Terry. Hello, lads. Not frightened to be seen talking to me, then? Come on, Terry. I've had a lot of time to think these past 15 months. Time to figure out who's on your side and who isn't. Come on, son, don't start anything. Me? Who's starting anything? You have to decide where you stand, who your pals are. And if you're a pal of Des Barnes, which is what I think you are, then you can't be a pal of mine. Well, that's where you're wrong, Terry. As a matter of fact, Des Barnes is a mate of mine, as well as a lot of other people around here. Now, I don't want to fall out with you. I just hope that you see sense. Let the past go. I don't want to see you in any more trouble. The lad's talking sense, Terry. You would say that, wouldn't you? Fancy a game of arrows, Martin? Uh, yeah, all right. What else could I say to him? Try it, Curly lad. I'll be telling him the same as you just did. G and T, please, Bet. Right, love. Any more nasty phone calls? No. And I shan't be getting any more of them. It's all over. Something's happened, hasn't it? I can't tell you, Bet. Not near, really. Come on through to the house. Betty, you're what? in charge. Right. Master, no, I've got me uses. I tell you, Percy, you're driving Alf Roberts wild with all this stuff in the papers. Serves him right. But, possibly, but it's me who gets all the backlash. Moan, moan, moan about old folk are being rotten to him. The man's a fool. He could have done himself a power of good if he'd have honoured those vouchers. He'd have had bags of goodwill. Do you know, for once, Mr Sugden, you're absolutely right. I know I'm right. What do you mean, for once? So, have you found out who's been doing it? The taxes, the phone calls, all the stuff you were supposed to have ordered? Yeah. Who was it? It doesn't matter. What do you mean? Of course it matters. The main thing is, it's over. And he won't be doing it again. That I'm sure of. He? So it was a man? Somebody I know? Yeah. But don't ask me. Oh, come on, Denise. The man's sick. Well, we knew that. And his wife. She begged me to keep it quiet, and I said I would. For her sake, more than anything. Don Brennan. It was him, wasn't it? It's got to go no further, Bet. Don Brennan. I need a drink. He loves his teddy, do you? He loves your teddy. Eh? Give him a love. Oh, your daddy's here. You know your daddy, don't you? No, he doesn't. They don't at that age, do they? You know whoever feeds him, and that's about it. No, he definitely does. I've shown him your photograph. I've talked to him about you loads of times here. Go to your daddy. There you go. Hello there. Listen, I've got some best steak in the oven. It'll only be two minutes, so you grab yourself a uh, again. Yeah. Take your coat off. Get comfy. Sit down. <laughs> oh, what's that? It's mine. Uh, it's a bit of business, that's all. <laughs> well, uh, cheers. Bye. Cheers, lad. Really glad to have you home, and I, and I mean that. Oh, it this wonderful, eh? Uh... We're a family again. Mm. We'll have a lovely Christmas. And our Tommy you couldn't have the best Christmas ever, aren't you? You've got your daddy back again. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. There you are, Teddy. Oh, 
it just doesn't seem like a, a very better buyers thing to do, that sort of. Which is precisely why we're doing it, to confound the sceptics, prove once and for all that better buys has a heart. Oh, it's a publicity stunt. That is a very cynical view, Andy. It's a good job you left university when you did. But obviously, if the word of our good deeds gets to the Weatherfield reporter, that's very good. But first and foremost, it's a gesture to the needy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm deeply moved. Right, what have I got to do with all these handbills? I'll leave them around where people can see them. You know, Jim's calf, the cabin, the rovers, and then do exactly the same down Viaduct Street. Well, I mean, can't, there's an easier way of getting word passed around than that, surely? Preferably one that doesn't involve me traipsing around in the freezing cold. You've been handpicked for this assignment due to the fact that you're in the fast management lane. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very flattered, girly, but, um... Yeah, and listen, and make sure you get back to the branch, cos we'll be packed out by lunchtime. Uh, Mr Sugden, can I give you one of these? No, you cannot. I'm sick to the back teeth of people pushing leaflets through this door. No, I can't. Just put it straight in the bin. Save me the bother. Uh, well, y you don't understand. It's from Better Buys. Look, I don't care if your frozen turkeys are tripping a pound cheaper than a fella down the road. As far as I'm concerned, you're all robber barons out for what you can get. And don't go shoving one of these through the door when I've gone in either. Well, no, like I say, you don't understand. It's about Brendan Scott's vouchers, you know. Well, this leaflet basically explains how you can redeem at better buys. Well, they never are. Yeah, it's, um, it's a gesture of goodwill, it being Christmas and all. Well, I'll take it all back, what I've just said. Would you like a cup of tea with me and Mrs Bishop? Um, no thanks, Mr Sugden. Well, I've got hundreds of these to deliver. What, all by yourself? Yeah, afraid so. Well, could you use another pair of hands? Cos I've got nothing I can't leave that should be done this morning. Um, well... Only if you're sure. Oh, don't worry. Just hang on, I'll get my coat. Only three more days, Tommy, lad, eh? Oh, you've got a stinky nappy. Eh? Shall we ask your daddy to change it, shall we, eh? Um, do you mind doing it, ma'am? Uh, taxi's due here any minute and I'm not finished getting dressed yet. Taxi? Oh, yeah, take me over to the solicitors. I'm due over there at nine. Cracking fry up, by the way, ma'am. Oh, Tarlo. Not exactly the doting father, is he? What do you mean? Well, he's hardly been near the lad since he's been out. He's got to adjust, hasn't he? To be in the outside world again. Do you know, to hear you talk, anybody would think he'd been held hostage in the Middle East to prison he's just got out of. Oh, typically you, that. Have you got no feelings for what the lad's going through? Mild elation, I shouldn't wonder. The amount of compensation is due. Oh, give up. The lad's traumatised. Is it any wonder coming back to a street where his wife died? And a baby hardly knows. It'll take months for him to come to terms with it. Look, you and me have got him to give him some support to get back on his feet, not criticise. Oh. Taxi, love! On my way. Let's see. Ah, that's gorgeous. How much was it, if you don't mind me asking? I promise you won't tell Bet. I promise. 250 quid. How much? Well, they cost 300 in the shops. Oh. It's just that a friend at school got a discount because her brother's a jeweller. Don't you think it's worth it? Oh, yeah, yeah, love. It's worth it, all right, but... Is he worth it? What's that supposed to mean? When I was your age... I had half a dozen blokes on the go at once, but none of them ever got a fancy watch for Christmas. You sound like Bet. Well, she's always going on about me and Steve not getting serious. We already are serious. I really do care about him. Yeah. And I'm sure he really cares about you, too. Good morning, Mrs. Bretherick. Be with you in five minutes, OK, Audrey? Yeah. Take your time, love. <laughs> Morning, Emily. Suit yourself. Am I hearing this right? 
Have you and Derek been getting all hot and bothered under collar about cruelty to Christmas trees? Well, don't you find it depressing when you see all those trees dumped by the wayside every January? I know I do. I get annoyed when all needles keep falling off and you have to hoover every day. As for the fate of the tree itself, they do plant more, you know. Well, planting more doesn't save those that have already died. Mavis, if you really want to get involved in a worthy cause, why don't you get in touch with Emily and Percy? I knew you wouldn't understand. And anyway, how are you going to stop this annual slaughter? Pick it all garden centres. As a matter of fact, Derek's going to a plantation after school. He's going to pick up a living tree with roots. One that'll give us pleasure year after year without causing unnecessary suffering. Hi, oh, well. girls. Hello, love. Just a fruit and nut, please. Oh, Rita. thanks, love. <sighs> Hey, son, shouldn't you be at work or something? Um, well, I am, unfortunately. I've been promoted to nice. seducing pensioners. I beg your pardon. Um, can I have a word? Yeah? I just, uh, well, I just wonder what you were doing Christmas Day, that's all. <sighs> yeah, I wondered when that subject would uh, crop up. Look, if you're thinking of going around the Queens and spending the day with your mother, I don't mind, you know? Well, actually, I, uh, well, I thought we all could have something to eat at our house, you know? In case you hadn't noticed, Andre, your mother and I are separated, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, Dad, but we're still a family, aren't we? Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, can't we behave like one, then? Please, just for one day. No, now, no, see! Come on, come... what good is it doing you? Look, now, the place is dead. You've hardly shifted any of your Christmas stock. Rubbish! How many customers have you served this morning? Well, it has been a bit quiet, I must admit. Well, it's always quiet on a Wednesday. Not three days before Christmas. The place should be heaving. It would be if it wasn't being boycotted. Actually, I even heard somebody in the hairdressers referring to that nice Mr. Scott. Listen, I couldn't care less what people say, and I will not be blackmailed by the like of Percy Flipping Sugden and his mob. Now, give me the car! No! What are you that's suffering, you know? I have been snubbed twice this morning. Good. Already. That's too less for you to stand yattering to. Now, I'll be reasonable. I am being reasonable. I'm always being reasonable. Look, give me the card. No, I'm going to burn it. You'll do note of the sort. Here, you chuck us some matches. I'm just the referee. Hey, hey, no, hey! No, you're not. Know, I'm going to get off the piece oh, of silly. Honestly. Oh! <laughs> you look like one of them sumo wrestlers. I'll give it. <laughs> oh, go on, then, before you burst a blood vessel. Of course, you know who's going to come out of this smelling of roses, don't you, Curly what? How do you make that out? Apparently, better buys have agreed to take Brendan's vouchers. In fact, they're laying on a complimentary minibus to ferry folk to the store for free. Give over. No, it's true. They've even had leaflets printed up to advertise it. I saw a whole pile in Denise's salon. I must say, Norman, this is an extremely kind gesture. Extremely kind. My pleasure, Mrs Bishop. Now, if you'd like to get on board. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Of course, Brendan Scott was a, a valued member of the Better Buy team for over 30 years. So naturally, when Mr Sugden here pointed out the plight of the Weatherfield pensioners, we thought it was right and proper that we should step into the breach. Thank you, Mr Watts. Although, having said that, the prices at Better Buys are so low, we're practically giving the stuff away. <laughs> you can quote me on that if you want there. All right, let's get one of the bus moving Watts. away. What? What? What's going on here? Uh, Alf. Yeah, you're taking a leaf, leaf out of Reg Holdsworth's book, haven't you? Put a mini coach on to port my customers. Oh, come on, Alf. Fair's fair. You're the one that refused to accept Brendan's vouchers. That doesn't give you the right to accept them. You didn't issue them in the first place. That's not the point, is it? The pensioners of Weatherfield thought they had a grievance, so we acted as a charity. Oh, will you listen to this? I don't know how you have the nerve to show your face. Look, you keep out of it, Percy Sugden. Don't point at me. That's assault. Oh. Gentlemen, gentlemen, there's no point in anyone losing a temper. Look, it's got nothing to do with charity, this show. It's just a ploy to get people to the better by his door. I categorically refute that. You can refute what you like. It's a fact. It's all oh, shut up a lot of you. Get out of my way, will you? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Are you all right? Hey, you can't take a picture of that. That was an accident. Hey! <laughs> On board, ladies, please. <laughs> As long as you bring the money, I'll bring Tommy. Uh, don't know, um, mid afternoon, about three o'clock. 
No, no, don't come round here. There'll be all hell to pay. Uh, meet me, meet me at the main entrance to Albert Park. Uh, three o'clock then. All right, Jeff. Uh, Ta-da. Get you, been splashing out, have you? Well, I might as well while well, I got it. Yeah? Oh. Hey, you look just like a film star. Isn't your daddy answer me? And you're gonna grow up just like him. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that too loud around here if I were you. Oh, I don't care. Don't care what people think. Hey, listen, do you know I've been thinking, why don't we move? Move? Well, yeah. Now you've got compensation, and before long you'll have a job, and then we'll have two. We're just coming in so we can afford it. Suppose we would, I. Ah, oh, dear, I've always fancied a house with bay windows. You know, and a little garden for our Tommy to play in. Let's just see what happens there first. Right, uh, I'm off. Hey, well, listen, I've got chops in. I thought we could have a sit down meal, you know, family together, like. Ma'am, I've had enough nights in to last me a lifetime, if you don't mind. Oh, of course you have, love. I'm sorry. Yeah, you go out and enjoy yourself. I'll look after Tommy. Sure you don't mind? No, oh, of course I don't. Hey, go in town, are you? Uh, just the Rovers. Uh, someone I'm hoping to run into. to the root, do we? No. Uh, yeah, gently down. Here. Here. Oh, That's right. You catch There, got it. Oh, right. Oh. Now, you start putting some compost in the tub and I'll unwrap it. More magic trees, eh, Derek? What? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Who'd have believed it? A classy looking bloke in Weatherfield. <coughs> Tucks after his father, doesn't he? Is that your Terry? Can you not see the resemblance? High cheekbones, dark, sexy eyes. Give over, he must be adopted. <coughs> yes, and what do you want? I'd uh, prefer it if she served me. Tough. What do you want? Pint. Yeah. See, you've got your money, then. I certainly did. Good. And I hope some of it's coming me and your mother's way after what we've done for that lad of yours. And there was me, thinking you were doing it out of the goodness of your heart. Of course we did, of course we did. It's not cheap bringing up a baby, you know. Nigh on 12 months, I know. Don't you worry. I see you and me, ma'am, right. Here. You can start by keeping a change out of that. It's hardly much. One for one lemon. Cheers, thank you very much. Right, um, You opening the Queen's Christmas Day? Only lunchtime, 12 till 2. Oh, good. So you'll be finished in time to join me and Steve and me dad for Christmas dinner? Oh, well, to tell you the truth, Andy, I was thinking of going out somewhere with the staff. You know, we've booked a hotel. Suit yourself. I just thought you might want to be with your family, that's all. I don't think that's very fair. Besides, can you see me and your dad sitting at the uh, He's table? very keen on it. Is he? Yeah. I've already spoken to him. He said you were both mature adults, and, well, whatever's gone on between you this year, you should be able to forget your differences and sit down to a meal together. Is that what he said? I suppose I could always cancel. His daughters? Yeah, well, just for a few days, love, you know. Well, will he be back in time for Christmas? I don't think you will, Gail, no. I bet. We need a minute, love. Tanya, love. Never interrupt the manageress when she's earwigging on a customer's conversation. How true. Oh, sorry, it'll wait. Don normally loves Christmas. And Martin and the kids love having him over. It's not as if they're that close. Well, to be true, Paul Gail, he's not very well. Oh, well, what's wrong? Well, well, he has these bouts of depression every so often, as you know. I mean, the doctors warned him he would when he came out of hospital. It was 18 months ago, Ivy. I thought he'd come to terms with that. Oh, no, I don't think he'll ever come to terms with it, no. I mean, well, you can't expect him to, can you? See? 
Hiya, Kev, mate. Lucky in flush. Might have to let you buy me a pint. Pleasure, Kev. Pleasure, mate. Pint for Kevin, Dad. Coming on, son. You still working at the garage? Yep. Still with Sally? Just about. Oh, I don't know. A bright lad like you. You could have made something with your life. Like you, you mean, eh? Yeah. Well, now I've got a bit of brass behind me. Sky's the limit. I'll tell you something. I certainly won't be hanging around this dump for very long. Oops! Sorry, love. Nearly tripped on your ball and chain there. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see the headlines now. Weatherfield councillor pushes 72 Oh, don't, old... Rita. There's nobody knows better than me how papers can twist these things. I wouldn't mind I was only there to give another point of view. It was all perfectly legitimate. If those vultures hadn't Alf, been... Alf, take a bit of advice from an old friend. Back down while you still chance to salvage your reputation. I can't, love. Too late. Damage is done now. Not necessarily. It is, love. It is. Folk round here bear grudges for years. Not if you do something to win them back. <laughs> what am I going to do? Well, Ebenezer Scrooge managed to find a happy ending, didn't he? And the boss always said, if you see an empty glass, fill it. Don't wait to be asked. Hey, it's on the house. Oh, thank you. And don't worry. He'll be here soon. Yeah. Bet, we've got a minute. Not now, love. A couple of pints, please, Jack. There's a lot I think it might be better if you go and have a drink in the Queen's tonight uh, and tomorrow night, in fact, you know. Not barring me, are you, Jack? No, nothing like that. No, indeed, just because... Hold it there, Jacko. If anybody's doing any barring round here, it's me. Pint, was it, Des? Please bet, yeah. Here, I'll get this. No, thanks. Come on. I'm offering to buy you a drink. I said no, thanks. Come on. I'm offering the olive branch. You and me fighting ain't gonna bring Lisa back. Yeah. Well, I don't need you to tell me that. So, come on. Season of goodwill in that. Besides, she didn't die for now. All right. And how do you work that out? I went to the solicitors this morning. Collected several grand in compensation. Ignore it, Des. Just walk away. Come on, then. Come on! Walk away, Des. Des? Did you have to do that? You might as well have that, Kev. Are no, you all right? Got to go. Seems you drink it on your own, son. I'm right back to square one, Kelly. Right back to square one. No, you're not. Forget about Teddy Duckworth. He's nothing. All these months of trying to get over it. When I finally start to feel like I'm coming to terms with it, he turns up and... But you might as well be in the middle of the street. I know how you feel, Des. You don't know how I feel, Kelly. You don't know how I feel. Look, I, I know that, uh, that Angie didn't die. But she might as well have. The way she just left. And every day I think about her, and every day it hurts. And in a way, that's good. Because the more it hurts, the more it proves that you cared in the first place. You'll never get over, Lisa. Never. And what's more, you shouldn't. Come on, let's go, eh? Come on, eh? Why didn't you phone? Well, I didn't want to make myself even more late by wasting time for a phone box. They're not that hard to find. 
If you don't believe me, there's no point talking to you, then, is it? Steve, wait. Bet. I know why he's late. One twenty, please, love. What's that supposed to mean? I've been trying to find the time to tell you all day. Look, the other day, I saw him with somebody else. And why are you telling me? Well, because, believe it or not, it riles me to see a girl like Vicky messed around by an idiot like Steve McDonald. Really? Are you sure it's not because you get some kind of perverse pleasure out of telling me? No. Anyway, if you think I'm so daft I can't put two and two together, we've got another thing. Come in. Now serve. Thank you. You could at least use a plate. Trying to get there, away by Bruce. Only though for now, Quinn. Now Mike Sheeran. Held it up well. I, I don't know why you just don't come on for your tea. Or at least say you were boozing. Jack! What are you on about? Well, that's what I'm going to call you from now on. Jack, and you can call me Vin. Are you just being stupid? Well, that's what we're turning into, Kevin. You come home, half cut, barely two words for yourself, you plonk yourself on the settee, and that's it. Well, I'm not having it, Kevin. Not all over Christmas. It's not fair on Rosie. Well, go! Go on, then, sling your hook. I won't stop you. You want to be careful, Kevin. Because one of these days, I might just do that. Oh, Derek, is this really necessary? Yes, it is. I want you to experience the full effect of a living tree cascading with light. <laughs> Now, but there's a step, oh, that's it. That's it. Right? Now, I want you to stand here. Oh. Uh, uh, now, don't, don't look until I tell you. No, right. I won't. Now, don't peep. No. Are you ready? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Ta-da! What have you done? Well, I just switched the lights on. Well, the whole street's gone dark. What? Surely I haven't overloaded the national grid with a few outdoor fairy lights. Oh, Terry. You suppose Des Barnes is behind this? They can't serve you. The tills are electric, aren't they? All right, everybody, keep your air on. I've got the candles. All right. All right. Is there a penis in the house? Yeah. Get it together, Sally. Like for God's sake. Melt it. Melt right. the end. Melt the end. Not easy to get going, is it? Come on, son. Now then, what are you going to play? Do you know, wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. No, what about the lights when they're in yeah. Massachusetts? Yeah. I'm going back to Massachusetts. Flaming power coat. Hey, it's lucky I got these in, isn't it? Yes. Hey, I'm just saying it's lucky I got these in. I thought they'd look nice on the table Christmas Day, you know. Oh. So we're not in bed then? Oh, I couldn't get him down. I think it's because you're home. You got all excited, you know. I mean, you can try getting him down if you like. Give him here then. Yeah, I'll go to your daddy then. Hey, yes. Good lad. I was, uh, I was thinking, I might take him out tomorrow afternoon, you know, uh, just over Albert Park. Ah, oh, did you hear that, darling? Your daddy's going to take you out tomorrow in fact, all of his face, you all excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has he gone down? He would have talked to himself for a few minutes, you know, before he goes down. <laughs> You'll miss worse, you know. For six months, he was to cry his eyes out when you put him to bed. Uh, listen, you haven't forgotten I said I'd take him out for a walk this afternoon, have you? Oh, no, I could do with him out of way for a bit, you know, while I do my shopping. Uh, what will he need? Um, is it a bottle? Bottle? What you like, you? You haven't had a bottle for six months. Look, nobody expects it to happen just like that, you know, but you will get used to him, Artie. <laughs> I know whose birthday it is. Nice! It is Nine. yours, little bit. It is yours, yes. Because I'm taking you and David to the park, aren't so I? Your mummy gets your party, right? Oh, do you eh? not mind, David? No, love, not at all. I've done my presents and all that sort of stuff, and uh, I'm not working till New Year. Oh, are you doing anything exciting? 
Don, Don's taking us to mass, and then it's uh, Christmas dinner at Gale's. All oh, right. Yeah. Well, you and Don are very welcome to pop round here for a drink if you fancy it. Thank you, love. And the same to you. Thanks very right, much. Right, come on, chicken. Mm, see you later. Yeah, bye, Rosie. Bye. We'll bye. see these ducks with the coats on. <laughs> eh? Hey? Uh, what we'll, is We'll go on a big boat, shall we? Yeah. 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 See you, bread. Ivy? Yes. Oh. Is Don back from mass? <laughs> Uh, no. Then why did you tell Sally? Look, Don's my business, Gail. I don't see any reason to broadcast it, do you? No. Of course you need one. Treading the streets of Manchester on a Christmas night. I'd want a bottle of this and a Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> you put us all to shame. Oh, I don't apologise for that. It's necessary sometimes to get people to realise the situation. Now, I mean, some of it's rubbish. Some of it's too small, but most of it's warm. And that's meant to be the idea, isn't it, Emily? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Bet. Oh, it's it's good quality clothing. It'll be well appreciated tonight. Uh, Sherry and a jumble, why don't you give us a shout? It's clothes for the homeless, Jack. I thought it best not to involve you. They try to hang on to a bit of dignity. Hey, that'll do for our Vera. Mitts no. off! Give me a couple of shillings for it, Emily. Oh, no, that's not really the principle. They're not for sale, they're for distribution. Oi! Hit that bar, step toe. Move it! Go! I mean, the last thing I need is their Vera coming in here wearing one of my cast-offs because it was too small. <laughs> Cheers, Emily. Crisis at Christmas. Thank you, Ben. What am I looking at this for? It's purses. Oh. Better buyers, 30 quid rest. Just letting you know how much this pension didn't spend in your shop. It's just a thought, Councillor. He wants putting on gas mark five, that one. What a rotten Christmas oh. this is. I can't send anything back. It's all going from bad to worse. I know you don't want to think about it now, but we're going to have to decide what to do with the fruit and veg before you shut oh. shop tonight. Well, I don't care what you do. You can chuck ten quid notes at everybody with varicose veins. I don't care, but you've got to get somewhat sorted out because it is driving me spur. Mm. Come on, Deirdre, let's go and spend your Christmas bowl. Look, she's had her lunch break. No, I think I'll stay here and help Alf. Oh, help Alf? With what? Folks would rather starve than come and shop at Mr Humbug's. Can I make a suggestion? Oh, let's wrap him up, keep him nice and warm, eh? Listen, if you keep him out about an hour, and then I've got a chance to do my ironing and wrap his Christmas presents up. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take my time. All right, love. See you, darling. It's a oh. dirty, you know, no. Come on. It'll quieten down. Come on, Satars. Come on. <laughs> oh, bless him. <sighs> Ivy, are you all right? Fine. Fine. Look, uh, did you bring any more trays from cafe? Yeah, they're down there. Do you know, I just can't understand why Don... Ivy, please, will you talk to me? You've got me worried. You know he's friendly with this hairdresser? Denise? Yes. They get on very well, apparently. She brews up for him when business is slack, and he obviously preferred that to coming home. You're not saying... No. No, not like that. You know she's been getting nuisance phone calls? Yeah, it was Don that told me about them. They really freaked her out. It was Don that was making them, Gail. What? Yes, she was going to report him to police if he hadn't admitted it. I've asked her to forgive him. But half of me hopes that she... So, you see, he's better away, isn't he? See? You did ask me, Gail. Hey, everybody's started arriving, so... Um... 
Uh, what am I getting you, Rita? Oh, um, a bottle of sparkling wine, three glasses, two hot pots, and the salad sandwich, please. Stop out it. <laughs> well, I was going to look a shower, but maybe Scott Giddy just put in a coat on. Oh, Dad, lad, what do you do for you? Um, I'll have a pint, please, Jack, and one for yourself. Oh, thanks very much, nice you. Look, Jack, I don't want to start anything, but, um... Well, this is a present for little Tommy. I didn't want to take it round your house. Don't have to make a big fuss about where it came from. I'll make sure he gets to him, son. Round the final ready, of the musical ready, chairs! Ready, and we go! Go on, go on, Come on, Come on, all of you. Come on, let me sit down. Come on, Vera, we've had to start, love. I know, I tell you, said he'd be back within the hour, but, well, he hasn't had much chance time without Tommy, has he? So I'm not complaining. Do you know, Harvey, this Christmas means more to me than rest put together. Yes, I know it does, love. Will you tell Sally I'm sorry? Yes. We'll just have to barge in halfway through. Anyway, here, take this for me. Yeah. Blimey well, I mean, out, Vera, them's never off your tummy, have they? Oh, hey. Okay. This is for Raj, yeah? He remembered me for once. Oh. Here, have a sniff of that. Vera, it's leaking. <laughs> no, I broke it. Hey? I don't want to smell like a tart, do I? Anyway, I'll tell him it's thought that counts. <laughs> <laughs> Crafty. I'm just having some mates back tonight. You know, a few quiet drinks after we've short. So you want someone for catering? Oi. Well, don't be so cynical, you. Tanya's helping me with all that. No, it's it's like a little thank you for the yeah. staff, really. Only Rita's coming and Alf and Audrey. Deirdre and Ken. Mm -hmm. Together. Oh. And Vicky's bringing Ronald MacDonald after the meal out. No, Steve's got to be back at his mum's place for about ten, so he's going to drop me off here after the meal. Is that right? Come on, Betty. Stop all the money. <laughs> Look, I don't have to cook, do I? I'll even make the coffee. Bet your breakfast in there. Ooh. Hey, you better go on for me nighty first. <laughs> <laughs> Good lass. <laughs> Is that what you've bought, lover boy? Well, he said it's what he wanted. I just hope he likes it. It better. I brought you some nappies. Oh, I've got nappies. Lord. Much harder for me than it is for you, you know. Just drop us at Rosamond Street. Have you talked with Vera? They don't know anything. It's no good to us. What am I supposed to tell them? You say what we agreed. That you believe my daughter's child is better off with us. Look, it is You not... have to tell them. If you break the agreement, Terry, Jeff can have that check stopped. I won't have Vera thinking we snatched Tommy without anybody's permission. I want to know she knows. We'd better get that lad settled at the hotel. He'll be wondering what the hell's going on.
Listen to me, Vera. Just listen. Did he know that our Tommy was supposed to be going to this party? Yes. Did he know what time the party was? Yes, I told him. Yeah, well, maybe it was... Oh. Oh, sorry, I was just beginning to... Mum, listen to me. Vera? Jack! Ma'am, can we talk about this inside? What the hell's going on here? He's safe. He's with Doreen. Oh, Jack, my God! Oh, God, Jack! What is it? It's food. What's it look like? Fresh? Of course. Yes. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. Uh, yes, Emily. Well, I wonder if uh, if this would do for your crisis at Christmas. Not my crisis, Alf. You know what he means, Emily. There's no need to make a meal of it. You better come in. Well, well, well. Oh, well up for you. The only lesson you off the hook, you know, because he's friendly with the vicar. What am I supposed to do with a kid that doesn't even know me, Mum? You can't just tear a kid out of here because he doesn't suit you to look after him. Don't you think I've thought about all that? Don't you think he matters to me? Look at you both. You're knackered. You're too old to look after him. I don't believe it, Jack. Seriously, Mum. Just think about it. It costs money. I'd have to work to keep it going. But that's what the compensation money's for. We don't want it. You keep it to bring Tommy up. A few lousy grand. We've managed on a damn sight less, lad. To last how long, eh? One year, two years. Then I'm relying on you to look after him while I go out to work. But I don't mind. And what are you going to live on? Mum, just think about it. I've got a lot less to give him than you make out. Look, I know it doesn't sound very fair, but at least we've got Shut them... Shut trap, you. Shut up. How much is he giving you, Teddy? How much money is this joker giving you for all this? It's not about money! Who do you think you're talking to? I have watched you rob your neighbours. I've seen you take what you want. I've watched your damaged folk and never give a damn. And you're trying to tell me that you are doing all this for somebody else's benefit. Well, I hope the lie chokes you. Oh! oh! Hey, this is getting out of hand. You'll only do that no one stat. I don't want you calling me that no more, you. Tell him, tell him, tell him to bring out Tommy back. He won't, Vera, because there's nothing in it for him. Look, you cost Doreen and me a lot of... Get out of my house, you! Out! Uh, no! Out! Oh, Terry, Terry. Hey, bye-bye, thanks for coming. Terry, I'm begging you, stop this now! Please! I don't care about the money! Keep the money! I just want it back! Just let me up! Let me in! Vera, go away! You'll only hurt yourself! Get out! Vera! Vera! Why did you do that? I'll just get this lot down into the night safe. Then I'm coming back and I'm having a nice bath. You all right locking up? Oh, yes, of course we are. Oh, and a Merry Christmas, Rita. Mm. Do you know, I've said it that often and not meant it, I forgot. Maeve is come here. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> and Derek. Yes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Right, if I don't see you across the road later, I'll definitely see you at Bet's party. Party? 
Hey, did you know Jack's not turned up yet? Well, who's changed bitter then? Me and Tanya, we have to. Go on, shovel him out, Betsy. Oh, Kevin's wrapping presents and Martin's having a bath. Ah. Rose is sleeping at our house tonight, so they can all wake up to Christmas together. You'll be lucky if you get them to sleep before midnight. <laughs> not our problem. Yeah. I am. Uh, <laughs> hey, does anyone know what's going on at the Duckworths? Oh, I was going to go round later when it's all calmed down. They've not been round yet. Here, I was banking on a big train. Oh, thank you very much. Shall I have a gin and tonic? Hey, uh, Deirdre, Sorry. this gentleman would like to buy us a drink. Oh, uh, no thanks, I've just got one. So have I. Go on, it's a financial <laughs> Yeah, you shall have a gin and tonic, please. Of course he knew what he was doing his no for months. Oh, I've changed the number, why have they? How the hell should I know? Maybe they're just not answering the phone. Don't, don't you shout at me! Yeah, well, don't shout at me. I didn't do this to you, Vader. Oh, I don't believe it. Jack, I can't believe it. Come, <laughs> come here. It's all right. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, come here. Oh. Oh. Maggie, it's Ivy. Oh, I'm fine, love. Yes, fine. I just thought I'd uh, bring up and wish you Merry Christmas, you know. And the same to you, love. Look, um, could I have a word with Don? Jim, thank you. Hi, hey, sir. Hey, no problem. We've got three pints better on the pump. We won't be able to suck until after we're closed, will you? I'm having a bit of a party in back after time. Oh, here, even better. Listen, this Jack, or is he, uh, is he ill or is he skiving or what? No, he's not skiving. Gail, love. Gail, it's for you. Gail. Oh, you'll be having a crisis. Oh. Well, <laughs> no. Thanks. What's up? Can't you cope? Ivy, what's wrong? Right, who's next then? Oh, thank you, Jim. I love that. What do you want, love? Prepared. Half a bit. Just wanted to wish you Merry Christmas. And the same to you two, cockers. Looking forward to putting your feet up after last orders. Off to the Queen's, then? Yeah, I'm uh, helping me mum with last orders, you know, clean up and that. Did you want to say something, Ben? Yes, I did, love. I think I wanted to say, personally, I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. And a little bird tells me that you've got another little bird on the side. Now, you don't have to say whether I'm well informed. I'll warn you. If you damage that little bird's wings, I shall pluck you, stuff you, and roast you. Give your man my love. <sighs> uh, well, if you're general, please, mate. It's the uh, staff bar. Sure it was all right to bring a guest. Listen, Jim, you saved my skin tonight. You could have fetched a rugby team for all I care. <laughs> you don't know a rugby team, do you? Oh, I'll have a look. 
to go out on their own at Christmas. They're not my women. You just make me yourself. Well, it's all the dogs, isn't it? I mean, they crawl out of the woodwork at this time of the year because they're absolutely petrified of turning up the party single. So, as I say, come November, I get a lot more picking. Excuse me. I'll have to be given the option. <laughs> you know, she's over-salted, these volivants. At least I get that right at my age. <laughs> Oh, Tarkin, listen, are you all right for drinks? Uh, yes, but uh, we've got a casual thing. Ow. Hey. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Can you come with us, Jim? Oh, oh no. Ow. Come on, how many, how many drinks have you had? Uh, rather, how many, I mean, drinks have that pepper pour down you? Oh, 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 oh I Deep breaths, now, come, come on. on. Deep breaths. Oh, oh, Tanya. Put that oh, coffee on. Wait on your feet. Oh, Audrey, oh, Audrey, I've had that carpet right. clean. You'll remember, oh, won't you? Right. Betty! Oh. Ivy, just calm down. You don't know that anything's wrong. He said he was going to Maggie's game. And Maggie's not heard from him. Oh. Well, come on, Ivy. I mean, wherever Don is, he can look after himself. Oh, yes. He can look after himself. And that's what I'm frightened of, Gail. He thought he was looking after himself when he drove that car off the road. He thought he was never going to come out of that at all, you know. I'd better ring Martin, haven't I? Yes, please, love. Oh, I can't see where I'm walking. I can't see oh, where I'm walking. All right, all right, all right. Come and sit down. Come on. Made a pot of tea, but I've uh, I must have left milk out of the fridge last night. Yeah, that looks like tea. Yeah, okay, Sarah. Well, I'll uh, I'll uh, nip to the shop and get some more then. Uh, no, don't bother, Martin. Look, uh, just take me upstairs and look on top of my wardrobe. It's a uh, little treat I've been saving specially for kids. Oh, okay. What did we say? Save special? You'll have to wait, won't you? Uh, is there anything else you want from the shop? Uh, no, love, I think I've got everything I want. Have you had breakfast? No. I'm not hungry, Gail. OK. Oh! Somebody does know how to use a teapot, then. I'm trying to get her on her feet. She's meant to be coming to its sales, when they? I don't know that I can be bothered, Raquel. You promised. Oh, it's a mug's game, sales. Just cos they shove a red sticker on things, don't make them any cheaper, you know. No, there's a law. Sales goods have to be less than retail previously. Where? Harrods? That's the way it strikes me, the shops are going. Well, I wouldn't know, would I? Don't use shops, you go in. Hello. It's Emily. Morning, Bet. I know it's your busy period. Oh, I do you fancy a cup of tea, love? No, I won't. I just came to thank you for the clothes no. and the money you've donated for crisis at Christmas. Oh, our pleasure, lovely. I wanted to report personally. It all got used to very good effect. Glad to hear it, love. Managed to distribute clothes and blankets and buy some food. I think it just marked the day for a few people who wouldn't otherwise have had one. Ah, oh, good for you, lovely. Thanks again. I'll leave you to get on with your brunch. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Bye, Bye Emily. Ta-ta, love. love. Ah, my luck's in just the woman I was looking for. Me? Well, nearly. Alma, really. Um, do you know she's keen on renting out that cafe flat upstairs? Uh, well, she's down the cafe, ask her yourself. Well, I hardly know her. I was wondering if you could put in a word for me. Well, I only know you as well as Alma does. Oh, well, I'm sorry I spoke. What money?
money. Eh? Thanks for the clothes and the money, Emily said. Well, just a few, Bob. So? Well, nobody told me she were expecting cash. I just chucked a few old clothes in her bag. Well, I just give her my share of the Christmas tips. Oh, I mean, thanks. Emily works very, very hard for her charities. I just like to give it to folks who I know needs it. Excuse me, lover. Well, you see, I'm seeing it more as an investment, me. Because if ever I'm made homeless, and believe you me, I've cut a very fine line in my time, I want the Emily Bishops on my side. I thought you were saving up for that jacket. I were. So you're still coming shopping with me? I'm still coming looking. Oh, right, thanks. Relax, you only shut the shop for one day. Ah, yes, but a very special day. A day for reflection. Lots of people never think about that side of Christmas. I will no offence, Alfie, but I'll be glad to be getting back to work so well, I'll tell you. You're all as bad as each other. He's opening on a bank holiday. You can't wait to get your overalls on. Yes, but the difference is I need the money. <laughs> yeah, well, if you've earned your crust by lunchtime, let me buy you a drink. Oh, well, I'll take you up on that so well. See you later. Bye, I'll yeah. tell Deirdre I'll see you later. I will, yes, yes. Just these, Al. Do you know, I feel as if I'm an old coward. I mean, there's him and Deirdre, there's you and Jim McDonald. Me and Jim McDonald what? Well, you know, I clocked you on Christmas Eve at Betts, you know, and I thought, aye, aye. <laughs> now you're buying him drinks, eh? That's uh, £2.20, please. Love. Do you know, if I counted the number of fellows who bought your Audrey a drink over Christmas, it wouldn't be on one hand. What's that supposed to mean? Well, actually, it means nothing. But were I to assume the opposite, I could make it sound like major gossip at an hairdresser's. I think you're overreacting. Yeah, well, it's tricky, isn't it, a woman living on her own? She's either uptight and boring or just waiting to nick somebody's husband. Yeah. Hey, now, I never said that. I know, but there are one or two round here who don't have your balanced view of women, Al. How's it going, Jack? I've just sent out of here. It's a bed, lovey. Have I... Have I gathered right? You've lost a child? Yeah. How the hell's that happened? Because our Terry couldn't be bothered to make the effort. Do you remember that old joke about... Sold his granny for tuppence? Well, he sold that kid up for a damn sight more than tuppence at all. <sighs> yeah, kid. She wages. There's a fiver in there from the tips box. Give us ten minutes, love. I'll have a wash and a shave and hey, I'll, I'll be around. Forget it. Forget it. Get yourself sorted first. Yeah, all I could just do with getting out. Hey, listen, I've been thinking. Hello, Vera. Oh, hello. If we could find a number of that pub, you know, around the corner from Orton's. That one we went to that afternoon. It's that local, isn't it? I can't even remember the name of it, Vera. <sighs> hello? Uh, it's a Blackpool number. It's a pub called Red Lion. It's in a district called Roxham Park. Vera, what good is that going to be if they're not of their own number? They're hardly going to be at the local. Yeah, but somebody might know where they've gone. Don't rush in, Jack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Red Lion. Thank you. Vera, and what, uh, why don't you call around later for a drink? Yeah, we're going to be too busy. Uh, right, love. Code number. Right. <laughs> What about you, son? Um, listen, me, uh, my grandma's just found. My mum? Yeah, um, they're having a surprise party for Auntie Eileen over in Belfast. Oh. I don't know if you can make it. Well, I need that just about as much as I need a hole in the head. What about you? Uh, well, no, not if I can avoid it, but, well, she wants an answer today. Well, I suppose I better go and ring from home. Kev, give us ten minutes, mate, will you? Listen, if you're hanging around here, I'll put the kettle on, will you? Well, another grabber, eh? Don't you believe in bank holidays or what? Yeah. I'd love to spend time with my family, but thanks to you, Steve, I can't afford to. I've got a fine to pay. I thought he was paying it for you. Well, oh, told him to get stuffed, didn't I? Well, where's your problem, then? Well, if it was me, I would have insisted. Oh, well, yeah. Mind you, our Steve's not that subtle, I'm afraid. You're not dealing with a model genius there, you know. Yeah, I'll say that again. I've said a word for Baldwin today, love. It's just a couple of hours lunchtime and a couple of hours tonight, Jim. Yeah, I guess Kev could use all the overtime he can get. I'll tell you what, I'll do it. See you later. Thanks, Jim. Bye. I meant what I said, you know. You hurt Vicky, I hurt you. You've been warned. Alex, are you coming? I want to be out late. All right, Raquel. You only want a new skirt. Don't make it sound like a flaming mercy dash. You know that woman Dom was seeing? Do you think? No. 
It might be worth a try, Ivy. I've already phoned her. She's not heard from him since accident. Right. Me and Martin think you should tell the police. You've tried everything else, Ivy. What can they tell me? I don't know. Where can they look that I haven't looked already? I don't know, but... Except in a ditch somewhere. You need to know, Ivy. Not that I don't. You know, girl, I lied awake last night. And I was thinking about, you know, these tales they tell when family go missing and about sensing whether they're alive or not. Well, we've lived here like a pair of lodgers, only talking to each other when it's necessary. We don't go to bed together, you know. And then one night he brought some fish and chips in and I thought, oh, that's new. That's a development. And I just... I just for a minute... I began to feel that I might mean something to him. And then I found out he'd been making those nasty phone calls to her. I can't sense him, Gail. The police are trained for this, Ivy. That's not the point. What do you think could go with this? Well, a bathing cap, you'll never get that on. So, well, it's meant to be tight. Excuse me, that's tight. Tight. Tight on a flaming rock python. And excuse me as well. I wondered if you'd know where they were staying over Christmas. Well, I'm family, you know. In laws. See, I need to get in touch. Are you trying to put me into overdraft or what? Well, you bought the shoes, nobody forced you. Yeah. I just wanted a bag of my own to carry to stop me feeling like you're lacking. Like Raquel! That used to be mine, that coat. Well, I can tell you now it won't lose its colour because it weren't cheap, weren't that? She don't look really sick, she? Oh, Raquel, for heaven's sake. I'm very sorry. Mum, what have I done? How do you think that made her feel? No, no. Oh, no, of course you didn't. I worry about you, Raquel. Sometimes I don't think they're a full chilling. Never mind. Please? Yes, I'd... Uh, I'd like to report a missing person. Tell me where Fawcett Road is. No, I can't. Fawcett Road? Um, well, I think that's down there, isn't it, Matt? Is it hell? Where? I'm oh, sure it is. It's down there, isn't it? It's near an industrial estate. Well, there's an industrial estate near us, definitely. In fact, if you give us a lift, we'll show you. Go on, then. Oi! 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 You don't know where Fawcett Road is. That's A. B, I don't accept lifts from strangers. And C, I couldn't get up in that thing if I tried. Of course you can, what's up with you? For I knew that it would keep me all the way to Caroline. But now I'm here, I'm not so sure what I'd like to do. Oh, this is marbles. This ain't no place for a country boy when he's got the blue. This city life ain't no place for a country boy like me Where you can't watch the river flow or see the tallest tree It's better than a taxi, is this? I miss that old home cooking and the walk stand by I don't think your mum's so convinced. This city sure ain't no place for a country boy. 
So that's one medium sherry. Uh, no, two medium sherries and a pint of bitter and um, one hot pot, one tuna salad and... Um, oh, oh, yeah, go on, another hot pot then. Um, Have you got all that? I heard it, but I haven't got it. It's just cold sandwiches. Oh, oh. Well, I was building up an appetite for that absurdity. Well, I didn't want to be cooking on over Christmas, you know. Cold no. sandwich is fine. Okay. Should we sit down? No. Alf doesn't mean anything. Oh, yes, he does. He stands in that shop like Russell Grant, cracking on he knows what everybody's up to. Alf always gets it wrong, but everybody knows that, therefore it never amounts to anything. No, I'm sorry, Betty, but it says over there, it says hot pot, chicken curry and cock That was last week's menu, love. Well, it's not my problem, is it? I mean, I think I've every right... Derek. No hot food. Betty said cold sandwiches, right? That's corned beef, turkey and salad, OK? Two corned beef and one salad, please. Who took this message? Um, Dad just mentioned Alison had found that soul. And before you start, I'm not getting dragged into any lies with Vicky. I don't want to be dragged just into it. Just where did he say she rang from? Uh, well, he didn't. She just said she'd meet you here. No way! I've got to meet her at the Queen's. Ah, oh, and what have you told Vicky? Oh, you've got to help me out. <laughs> no way. Oh, come on. No you chance. You don't have to lie. No. Wait. No. Oh. Hiya. I've, I've been looking for you all day. Yeah, well, you're supposed to meet me about half an hour ago. I know. I've got to just hold on to it. Oi! Where, where are you going to be? That's my business. You two been rowing? No, he's just playing the prat, you know. So what time's the film start? What? The film. Oh, uh, 2, two ten. Well, we've got 20 minutes to get there. I don't, look, Vicky, I, I don't feel too good, you know. I, I know you've got dressed up and everything, but I don't think I could sit through a film. Why, what's wrong? I don't know. I, I think it might be something I ate at the Queen's. Wait, come in anyway. OK. Have you Yes. Detective Constable Shedden, WPC Davis. Oh, you better come in. So I just carry on down there and turn right? Um, yeah, well, it's, um, summer down there, yeah. Living up Bob, eh? Can't be bad. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm going to keep the favourite quiet, you know. Best chance of that. Well, see you around. Yeah. Take care. Have I Sure, tight. Give or take 20 years. Oh, hello, love. Listen, I've got your name from Eddie. You know, at Red Lion. Yeah, well, I'm looking for Jeff and Doreen Orton. I, I need to get in touch and we're going to answer him phone. Uh, well, he said you'd know where they'd gone. Well, look, can I give you my number? If they get in touch, you'll give me a ring. It's not. What are you doing, you? Get down, Vera. Come away. No, she said she'd be able to help us. What then? Look, I could try and make them understand that our Terry's made a mistake. Vera, they planned it, timed it, and for all I know, our Terry's with them wherever they are. Yeah, and it'd still be here if you want to chuck him out. No, he wouldn't. Look, I could have had a chance to talk to he him. Wouldn't. I could have listened to me. No, stop it, Vera! Stop it! He wouldn't have listened to you. The only chance you would have had a talk to that brat is if you had more money than the Ortons. They have got him in their pocket and we don't stand a chance. Those bastards you shall I just want to add something back. I want him back. I know. I know. I know. You know, it's not doing us any good with all these presents about, you know. Well, I'm not getting rid of them. No, no, I'm not saying that. 
could put them upstairs in your little room. They'd be safe there. Yeah. Well, they can say what they like. It's definitely worth opening. I'm sorry, Alf. I wasn't implying No, do, do you know, I've taken a bunch of days, I normally do. And I've got one or two new customers as well, because their local's closed. It pays off, you see. They'll come back, you mark my word. Well, yeah. Hey, what's that Curly Watts been up to? Sorry? There's a police car outside his house. Uh, come on, Sarah, let's go and uh, choose some cereals. Hey, that'll eh? be better buys, you see. <sighs> That's another thing, you see, about leaving your premises empty over the holiday period. People get tanked up and they empty your shelves. Oh, I'm sorry, I've, I've got yes. to get back. Hey? Oh. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, Will you go talk to the police? Oh, Gail, me? Yeah, well, they, um, they want to talk to as many people as possible. You all right, Gail? All right. Yeah, smashing. <sighs> you? Oh, yes, fine. Hey, they complain about me opening a bank holiday. Do you know what you've taken today? No, don't worry about me. I've got plenty of work to be getting on with. Why don't you just go down and take it off? Oh, oh that's a lovely rack, Gail. What? Oh, this, yeah. Mm. Thanks. Can you start them mixers for us, Raquel? Look. Uh, get us a four pack of bitter, will you? Oh, hey, there's some stuff here that your Vera never picked up, you know. There's a leg of pork, it won't keep forever. Yeah. Christmas pudding, she never called for it. Yeah, well, we've been busy, Alf. Mm. Alf. Jack, what's now going on? Now is a bad time, Des. Well, where's Tommy? I saw your Terry and Lisa's well, dad. What do you think's going on? Look, I'm really sorry, Jack. Don't suppose he got me present, then? No, he didn't get ours, neither. That help. How much help? Just five pounds, please. Well, it's right. Thank you. Here, Jack. Des, no offence, lad. You're going to have to wait your turn. I've got our Vera to see, too. You can imagine, can you? Eh? Edgehill's cross, forced down and then cleared by Hopkins. Ah, I thought you beat Curly. Uh, well, me and Dad are going for a curry as soon as he's finished with the Rovers. Great stuff. Vicky tells me you're uh, in bad poorly. <sighs> yeah, well, I didn't plan it that way. I've been trying to get hold of Alison all day, but I've forgotten her mum's phone number. Well, what time's she coming? 15 minutes. Yeah? Hey? Well, I'm off. Going for a shower, mate. And I'll try and make it last 20, all right? I'm not the one, Ken. No, I don't think so, thanks, Betty. I'm just waiting for Deirdre. We're going out for a meal. Oh, great. Hiya, Vicky. You're looking a wee bit fed up, so you're. Every time I try and do some work, I can just smell the floor polish from school. I thought you were going out with Steve tonight. No, he reckons he's got food poisoning, so he's gone back to the Queen's to sleep it off. Oh, does he? Sorry, love, he never tells me. Huh? Oh, I hate this bit just before I go back. Listen, don't you be in a big rush to go leave in school, you know, because you'll spend the rest of your life wishing you were back there. Believe me, mm. I have. People always say that when they've forgotten what it's really like. Aye, yeah, maybe they do. Listen, I've left Andy back at the house watching a video. The pair of us are going for a curry later on. Do you fancy coming? Can I? Of course you can. Mind you, we're going to be a wee bit late. Well, would you ask Bet for me? Because she's more likely to let me if you ask her. Yeah, of course I will. Right, lads, that's um, £2.40, please. Aye, aye. Who says you can't pull a pint in our pint pot? <laughs> Your well, let's face it, kid, you can hardly breathe then, that. Have you got no figures? Don't be so cheeky, nobody cracks jokes about your blue hair. No, because it's purple. Yeah, well, so's our toilet seat cover. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know him? Yes. He drives the biggest taxi I've ever been in. Raquel, I think you've got some explaining to do. Oh, hello. Did you find it, then? Fawcett Road? Eventually. No thanks to you. Do you know I could have sworn it were round here? <laughs> yeah, well, you did, didn't you? Very convincingly. Oh, go on, then. I'll buy you a drink. Quite <laughs> a bitter. Thanks. Well, pay for the diesel. Hello there. How do you do? Wagon driver. It's a bit shaky, isn't it? They're like sailors, you know, aren't they? <laughs> A woman in every transport cab. Try telling Luby Lou. I mean, if she can't tell the difference between a centre forward and a sub, I think you'd be wasting your breath, Betty. You never told me your name. Charlie Whelan. Oh. You never told me yours. Raquel. 
You're kidding. <laughs> after the film star? Now you're not gonna say out, cheek. I might. After a couple of these. Yeah. Cheers, Raquel. Cheers, Charlie. Hi, Andy. Is he ready? Um, yeah, he's just nipped upstairs. Go through. Hi. Your dad invited me around for the curry. Well, he said you were on your own, so... What, is this awkward? No, 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 not at all. Um, go, go through. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were on your own. Is this awkward? No. No, not for me. Look, if um, you two are waiting to go out, I'm fine. Oh, I'm Vicky. I'm Steve's girlfriend. I see. Oh, sorry. I... Steve! <laughs> Oh, uh, this runs in the family. We recover really quick. Are you coming out with us? Oh, that's brilliant. Hello, Steve. This young lady tells me she's your girlfriend. I uh, thought I heard him stirring, but yeah, yeah, he's probably still in bed. Okay, yeah, I'll tell him. Bye, love. I don't like telling lies. Sorry. So what's going on? Time. Look at it. I'll phone her later. I think it's very um. Oh, what's the word? They're charismatic. Do you? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know what they say about long-distance lorry drivers. A girl in every greasy spoon. No, well, maybe, yeah, but not that exactly. No, you see, it's more to do with sense of adventure. See, I always picture me as big, restless men in check shirts. Men without a home. With a liking for sausage, egg and chips. No, well, no, you see, it's more romantic. Setting off for a different place every day. And ending up in a traffic jam on the M62 with 40,000 others all trying to get to the same place. Oh, well, every job has its downside. You've been watching too many adverts, Cock. Well, I like to me. Now that we're a bit of fun. I told you yesterday. <coughs> it's too old for you. Look, just because I talk to somebody, I don't mean I fancy him. Well, it's just as well, cos I doubt you'll ever see him again. Hello, love. Any luck? No, he's not in yet. Has Kevin not seen him? No. Oh, he'll show up. No doubt Mike's got him running some errand or another. Mm. Well, if he does come in, would you tell him I'm looking for him? Of course I will, love. Thanks. Not now, Des, please. I've got to know, Jack. Know what? Well, what's going on? You know what's going on. He's gone. The Orton's have got him. And to be honest, mate, I have got enough on my plate right now without any hassle from you. It's not hassle, mate. Honest. Yeah. Yeah. I was, well, just getting used to that little lad. You were getting used to him. We brought him up, spent most of his life with us. So why let him go, then? Well, down to us, Des. Terry. Yeah, it's his little lad. He's got the rights. They're flush, I suppose. He thinks we'll get a better life with them, eh? And is Terry with him? I don't know where he is. Well, what about Vera? Vera will be all right. I'll bring her through, don't you worry. She must be gutted. Right. You know, Des, folk round here don't rate me and Vera, especially when it comes to bringing up kids. Well, then again, they do have a point when you look at our Terry. She loves that little lad. And all this is breaking her heart. It's breaking her heart? Just think what it's doing to that little lad. Come in. Have you 
waiting for you all morning. Yeah, well, I just went to church, love you. Why aren't you at work this morning? Oh, hardly seems worth opening up this week. Anyway, it's nice to spend some time with the kids. Yeah, of course, dear Lord. Have you heard anything? No, nothing. Look, why don't you come and spend the day with us, eh? Look. We might be going out this afternoon. Kayla, it's nice of you, but I'd rather be here, love, just in case he rings. OK. If you change your mind. Yeah, yeah, OK. You know, we could all come round here if you like. Kayla, okay, don't take offence. But I'd rather be on my own, love. Thanks. I mean, I know you're trying to help me, but just for the moment, I'd rather be by the phone and be left alone. OK. Can I speak to Shirley, lovey? Yeah. Yeah, tell her it's Jack Duckworth. She'll, she'll remember it. Jack Duckworth, it, it's Terry's dad, yeah. We, we were there on holiday, me and our Vera and, and, and Tommy, yeah. Right. Right. Shirley. Shirley, it's Jack Duckworth. Sorry to trouble you, lovey. I, I was just wondering if you knew where your Doreen and Jeff were, because we've been ringing them and we've been getting no reply, you see. And I thought, well, with you being a sister, you, you might... Yorkshire. All right. You, do, you don't know why, do you? Oh, right, yeah. Well, you're not thinking of going over to Yorkshire to see your mother as well, are you? Thought, well... No, you know, no business, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, right, love, so, sorry... Yeah, I'm, I'm so, sorry to bother you, lovey. All right, right, ta-ra. Everything all right, Jack? Yeah, yeah, great, yeah. How's Vera? Not good, love. Um, I'll, I'll go and finish the cellar work, if it's all right with you. All right, go on. He's a bit down in dumps, isn't he? Aye. Which is more than I can say for you. Did you buy them when my back were turned? What exactly are they, Raquel? The platforms. Well, if I were you, I'd take them back to British Rail before they noticed they've gone. <laughs> Do you know you're witty, Beth? No, not witty, love. I'm worried. I don't want you out for a month with a broken ankle. There's no need to worry. I'm in control. As somebody once said, I tried to keep my head above the ground but below clouds. Well, if I were you, I'd keep ducking. Eh? Well, we're not a million miles away from Ringway, are we? And I'd say at the moment you're a real danger to low-flying aircraft. Any calls? Vicky, twice. Right. Well, are you going to ring her? Uh, well, I'll do it upstairs. Right. How dangerous? Dangerous, dangerous. Trouble dangerous. Well, I hope so, or I've wasted my money. <laughs> well, look, don't just stand there. Come on, let's have a look at it then. I don't know if you're old enough. Oh, yes, we're old enough. Hey, you just speak yourself, you. I was. So you really think you're up to it? Oh, look, come on, will you come okay, on? Will okay, you? okay, okay, okay. <laughs> have you ever seen anything like him? I can't really criticise Tanya. There was a time when I had a pair myself. Aye, but you went fast approaching 30. True. <laughs> what a dead head. And was it a nice meal? Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah, the best part was spending a long time eating and drinking and no time at all cooking and washing up. Oh, there's definitely something to be said for that. I don't know. I think all the Christmas cooking and the washing up and everything is all part of it. It's different if you're on your own, Mavis. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Can yeah, I... That's all right, that's all right. I wasn't on my own. I took Deirdre. Oh. Oh, that, that was nice, wasn't it, Derek? Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> What's up, Dad? Nice oh. Game lunchtime post. Decree, nice sign. Well, does this mean you divorced? All but. Sort of, um, last chance to change my mind. And William. Well, what's the point? <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, this is a scary! <laughs> You've got it! Flaunted! <laughs> I'd agree with that. Very nice. Thank you very much. Raquel? 
Hello. We meet again. How are you? Fine. You got your lorry outside? I have. Must be the best to work. Yeah. So, uh, what is it, Pint? I really came in for some grub. Oh, well, we can offer you that. We've got, um, hot pot, pasta, sandwiches, salad, pies, and, um, dish of the day. Dish of the day, huh? Turkey casserole. Very tasty. Well, it has been said. Oh, maybe I'll have the hot pot. I'll save dish of the day for another time. Right, well, one hot pot it is. Alison Harris, we... Oh, sorry. No, no, I'm looking for Alison Rathbone. Right, Um. What does she say when she... Yeah. Right, Uh. well, do us a favour, will you? If you see her, can you tell her that Steve rang and that I want to see her? Yeah, I rang before, no, but... Right, what's she say? Well, look, Um. if you do see her, can you tell her that it's urgent? All right, cheers. See ya. If it's me you're looking for, I'll save you the trouble. Hiya. Where have you been all the morning? I've been looking for you. Well, I've had a lot on you, know Um, listen, are you hungry? Um, I'm not bothered. Uh, well, I'm starving. Uh, my mum's got a curry on as well, so I can go and grab it. Oh, right, OK. And we'll eat it up here, shall we? Um, you go and grab the forks and I'll bring it up. Right. So she's married, is she? Eh? Your boss. Bet? Oh, yeah, mind her. You don't live here anymore. Oh? No, I went to Southampton. Really cut up about it, sure. Big bloke, was he? Alec? You were like a bad-tempered garden, no? So, um, they're not together? Oh, no, no, no. She's on her own now, is that? Apart from me, that is. Is he bothering you? No, it's nice. You must be the amount of time you're spending with him. Trying to do, make Des jealous. It's not me he's interested in. It's you. What do you mean? He keeps asking me questions. Are you married? Where's your husband? I'll get it. Where's my husband? Oh, he's taking a shine to your bed. You see to Des. I'll look after Charlie the trucker. It's for you, Bet. Who is it? I didn't say. <sighs> Bet Gilroy. Bet? It, uh, it's Don. Don? Yeah, look, I hope you don't mind me calling. Uh, I, I, was, I was just wondering if you'd seen Ivy. Uh, Whether well, she's been in at all. Well, not today, if that's what you mean. You still at your daughter's? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm still at Maggie's. Well, in that case, why don't you ring her yourself? Uh, look, I'll, I'll come clean, look. We've had another round, I've walked out. If I ring her at home, she'll probably put phone down on me. Well, I'd say she'd got cause. What? This isn't about Ivy, is it? Well, uh, how do you mean? I were talking to Denise. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Who else knows? Look, never mind where I am. Who else knows? Bet, please, look, I've got to know. Just tell me where you are and stay there. I'll be around right away. I wondered if you'd still be here. Got nowhere else to go. And whose fault's that? You've got yourself into a right mess this time, haven't you? Please, Bet. It's bad enough as it is. It could have been a damn sight worse. <sighs> you could have driven Denise into doing something really stupid. Or you could have been propping a wall up inside some nick if she'd have decided to turn you in. What did she tell you? Everything. The poor kid was beside herself. I mean, what you've done, it's despicable, Dom. 
It's sick. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I don't want it to be like that, Beth. I love her. No, you, you've got to believe that. Well, then you've got a very funny way of showing it. I had no choice. Choice? Of course, she had a choice. Uh, obviously, she didn't want me in the same way. Well, then you should have been on your bike, not making funny phone calls. Look, I, I know it sounds warped, but I, I thought if she needed me, you know, if, if I was around, well, maybe she'd see someone that she could begin to care for, to love. <laughs> well, at, at least it was a chance. And you were prepared to terrorise her for that? I didn't see it like that. No. I know you didn't, Don. And I must say, I find that a bit alarming. It suggests you're not entirely in control. I'm not. You're right, Ben. I'm not. Then maybe you should be looking for some help. Where? Who's going to help me? I can't go back. Denise hates me, Ivy hates me. By now, everyone will know. No, they don't. Ivy's told everybody that you're staying at your daughter's. And as far as I know, I'm the only person that Denise has told. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, Ben. I don't know what I'm going to do. What do you want to do? I want to go back. Sort it out. So why don't you? How can I face anybody, eh? What am I going to say to Denise? You say nothing to Denise. Stay well away from her. Go home. Go back to Ivy. I know things aren't good between you, Don. But she does love you. If you could see the way she's covering up for you right now. Sort your life out, Don. But stay well away from Denise. And I promise, I won't say a word to another living soul. Have you got somewhere to stay? Bed and breakfast. Right then. Take care, Don. Funny. You know something's over, but when you're faced with it, well, you feel a bit empty. Yeah. All the things you never had, all the things you never did. Me and Steph had had kids. Well, just think how different my life would have been. Maybe Lisa would still have been alive. Maybe little Tommy would still have a mother. I don't like to see you. This You're a good one, Raquel, you know that? Someday you'll make a man very happy. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, you will. I can see lots of little Raquels running around. Well, I don't know about that. You will. I can see it. Anyway, um, thanks for the chat, yeah? You going? Yeah. Well, if you need anybody, any time, you know that. Yeah. Thanks. I'll remember that. Did you enjoy that? Very nice. Can I get you anything else? No, thanks. Best be on my way now. I'm going to be in Stranra in six hours. Mm, busy life, eh? You off now, Charlie? I am. You boss back yet? No, not yet. Say try to her for me, will you? Yeah. Oh, um, tell her I'm sorry I missed her. I will. What's happening there, then? Nothing. Just being friendly. Is this, Vicky, some sort of interrogation or something? No, I just want to find some time that we can spend together on our own. 
I don't know, go away or something? Yeah, well, if you didn't go to that stupid school of yours. Steve, I've got to go to school. Yeah, well, if you say so. Well, it would be kind of stupid to give it up now. I mean, I've worked really hard. All right, so your work's more important than me now, is it? No, you're both important. Look, look Vicky, maybe I'm just getting a little bit too old to be hanging around for school holidays. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, we live two separate lives. I'm here waiting for you, you're there waiting for me. And in the meantime, time's passing by. Well, it won't be forever. Yes, it will. Because then you'll go and join some college or, or university or something. That's more time. Maybe I don't want to go to university. Yes, you will. Maybe I just want to get married. Or maybe I don't. Yeah, well, whatever we decide. Yeah, or maybe I don't want to decide either. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say we should call it a day. That's what I mean. What? I'm, I'm sick of it, Vicky. We're waiting around doing nothing. Well, I suppose I could leave school if it means that much to you. No, oh, no, I, I don't want you to do that. Anyway, it's just that it doesn't... What? I want to finish it. Now. Sorry to interrupt. There's some trifle left. Thought you might fancy it. No, thank you. What's up? Nothing. Nothing? Come on, Steve. I answer the phone when you're out. I want to know. Don't want to bother you, Vera, but uh, Jack said you weren't feeling too well, so... Well, I brought these round. I don't know what for you. I understand what you think of me, Vera, but... Uh... Listen, I don't want your understanding. I don't even want you in my house. So go on, get out and take them with you. Well, you might as well have my brother. Look, I don't want to. Off you. I wish you'd leave me alone. I wish you'd all just leave me alone. Go on, get out. There's anything I can Look, do Look, get out. So what exactly did he say? He said, cetera, and he's sorry he missed you. Sounds to me like you've got an admirer. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. You're asking all about Alec this morning. Yeah, well, maybe I'll give Tanya an answer. You should be flattered. We give over. Listen, I think I'd better look out for this fella myself. Don't get any ideas, mm -hmm. Nadie. See ya. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hey, have you got a cheese sandwich left? You're lucky, just the one. I have been run off my feet today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Did you find him, though? Steve. Oh, yeah. Well, be happy then, eh? Yeah. Vicky, love. I've got lots of work to do before I go back to school. Are you OK? Why shouldn't I be? So it's definitely over then, is it? Yeah, I've told you. She is a lovely girl. And she thinks the world of you. Oh, Mom. Well, she just looks so hurt. No, oh, I didn't enjoy telling you, now. So why did you? Well, I don't know. I'm just sick of being tied down to one person. I want to be free, you know, play the field a bit. Well, it seems such a shame. Well, that's plenty more fishing to say, isn't it? Yeah. And I think one's just swimming. I've been trying to phone you all day. Yeah, I got your messages. Why didn't you ring me back then? I was working. Right, when are you? We can have a drink, can't we? We'll go upstairs, there's no problem. No, I didn't come here to drink, Steve. Right. Well, I guess you're wondering about last night, aren't you? Well, that's why I've been trying to phone you, you know, to, to explain. Oh, there is an explanation then. Yeah, look, you're just a silly little kid with a crush, that's all. But I've sorted it. I've, I've found her. Well, I spoke to her today and I've, uh, I've finished it. So you were going out with her? Well, yeah. Well, no. I mean, it's neither here nor there, really. You know, it's... Uh, well, like I say, you're just a silly little kid with a crush. She's not the only kid around, then, is she, Steve? I'd say you've been acting young enough to qualify for that title. Come on. I've just told you. Uh, now I'm telling you. It's over. So you can stop calling me. I overestimated you, Steve. Won't happen again. Come on, Alison. Leave it. OK, 
okay.